Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. With me, I have Donald and Joe, and we will be playing through Pokemon Emerald. Hell yeah, boys. I can't wait to get this started. I haven't played this game since my WrestleMania days. Barack, what the hell is this? I thought we were playing Pokemon Ruby. I figured we should just go with Emerald instead. After all, it is a clear upgrade from the original Hoenn games. The inclusion of both villain teams makes for a more engaging storyline. The legendary cutscenes are much more badass, and the overall quality of life is better in Emerald when compared to Ruby and Sapphire. Definitely. Don't even get me started on the battle frontier. I remember grinding for perfect natures and EV training my slaking, Latios, and Registeel so I could get gold symbols in each different facility. That shit took me months, but it was probably the most rewarding feeling I have ever had playing a video game. Yeah, but who gives a shit if my beloved Zangoose is unobtainable in this game? Nothing you can say will convince me that Emerald is better than Ruby. I can't believe you would do this to me, Barack. Jesus Christ, Joe, you are honestly one of the most disturbing individuals I know. It didn't take but 30 seconds for you to say the most cringe shit I have ever heard about a Pokemon. Oh, is it cringy, Donald? Is that yes, what it is? Yes, Joe, you think it's, it's cringe. cringe huh? Just like how every American cringes when you try to give a speech to the Oompa nation. Loompa. I'm sick I of can't this believe you're slang. actually okay, trying boys, to I get reelected. Can we settle down for a second? I invited you guys to the call so we can have some fun playing Pokemon, not get into a roast battle. Can you just help me decide on our character's name, please? How about the goat? After all, we're going to be the greatest Pokemon trainers that ever lived after we're done here. Damn, Joe, that's actually a pretty base name choice. Maybe Obama has a point we should chill out a little bit since we're just here to have fun. But honestly, Barack, you couldn't just spell the goat like a normal human being. You had to let out your inner basketball American on this one, didn't you? Donald shut your racist ass up. I had to spell it this way so it could fit without needing to exclude the space between the words. I just wanted there to be some aesthetic to the name. You know what I mean. Whatever, Barack. Let's just get on with the gameplay. I never quite understood this beginning part. What, you mean the fact that we're just standing in the back of a moving truck? I agree, seems a little hazardous. Well, yeah, that. But also the fact that we're here with all of our stuff. Then we get out, but then we never see any of this stuff again. Like, there were 20 boxes full of random crap in there, but our house layout never changes throughout the entirety of the game. Damn, Joe, that's quite the astute observation. How about I rebuttal with the fact that this is a 20-year-old game originally made on a handheld console, and that you're looking way too into things? Okay, fair enough, Donald. I just thought it was weird. Speaking of weird, can someone please tell me what the hell these two Vigoroths are doing right now? This one is just walking back and forth while this one is dry humping our TV. How do you know it's dry, Barack? Because it's a goddamn televo. Okay, you know what? Never mind, Joe. I'm just going to go ahead and grab the potion from the PC and fix the clock so we can progress the story. By the way, I should go ahead and fix the settings here. I'm going to turn on set mode for the added challenge and also fix the border to something cooler. I always like this one in particular. Sounds good, Barack, and holy shit, we have a GameCube in here? We better have melee on this thing. I've been grinding on Slippy, and I'm almost out of gold, finally. Lamau Donald, you're not getting out of gold. You are the epitome of an average Slippy Falco player. Remember when I three stocked you last week in like 60 seconds? Suck my ass, Joe. First off, uh, it was no my thanks. sick, multi-shining, ledge-canceling Falco on Final Destination no versus your campy-ass, chain-grabbing Marth, who you only play, by the way, no because Johns. your catatonic hands can't handle the complexity of a space animal. All you no did Johns. was wait by the edge and shield grab me and back throw me and give Skill me. issue. Whatever, Joe, I'm over this, I would easily destroy you in the Marth ditto. Do either of you play any Brawl? What the Lol, fuck? What? I've been working on my Meta Knight, and I've really seen some improvement over the last few months. I'd like to try it out with someone. Guys? That was a fucking joke, right, Barack? No, we're not playing Brawl with you. And please pick a different character if you're going to actually stick with Brawl for some reason. Otherwise, no one will ever want to play with you. Okay, whatever screw you guys, Brawl is a fun game. Anyway, I'm just fucking around in May's room here, but more importantly, it's about time we decide on our starter. Personally, I'm leaning towards the Trico line. If we were nuzlocking this, I would pick Mudkip, but we're not, and he is incredibly overused. And normally I like to pick the fire starter, but this time I want to change it up. What are you guys thinking? Honestly, I'm impartial here. I think the Huen starters are all incredibly badass. 
We got the original firefighting type in, in Blazy Ken, then the most overpowered starter ever in Swampert. And finally, Trico was fucking sick in the anime. And also, there's like no good grass types in this generation besides him, so I'm okay with that. Okay, well, you guys are clearly mentally insane, Joe. I expect that from you, but honestly, Barack, I'm surprised at this L take. Trico is easily the only non-viable choice here. Swampert sweeps the whole game, and Blaziken provides incredible coverage with its two stabs. Trico is literally only good in the late game, by which point we will be fine. Donald, I'm taking Trico. Trico provides us with a safe victory against the first gym, unlike Torchic. And then it will be our heaviest hitter for the late game from the seventh gym all the way to the champion battle. Also, Joe has a point with no other good grass types in this game besides maybe like Bellossom or Breloom. Skeptile is very fast and gets Leaf Blade, which has one of the coolest animations of Generation 3 Pokemon. I'm sorry, Donald, but Trico wins here. Okay, fine. You guys make some compelling points. I guess I can get behind the reasoning. I agree that Generation 3 did not miss with the starter selections, unlike its predecessor, Generation 2, which missed completely. That gen is ass. Thanks for cooperating, Donald, and real quick, guys, I have an idea for the nickname here. I thought about this one ahead of time. Did you guys ever play Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Sky? Oh, oh hell yeah, Obama, you're spitting. That game is one of the best spin-off games Pokemon ever made. And if you're referencing the anti-heroic Grovile, I'm totally cool with naming it after him. Okay, cool. I think I'm just going to go with Sky then to keep it simple and elegant. Now we just need to go find May and beat her ass real quick so we can start our journey. All right, cool beans, Barack. Do you guys have any suggestions for how we should formulate the rest of our team? There's a couple Pokemon I think would be cool to have, but if we're going to be doing this run together, we might as well find ones we can Holy shit, is that Donald outside the lab? Good one, Joe. Very original. Lol, Joe. Great bait mate. But honestly, Donald, yes, I have some team ideas. But first, I want to state how there is something I wanted to do with this run. Obviously, we aren't doing a Nuzlocke because I don't want to deal with the copious amount of grinding and planning that comes with that. But there are going to be some challenges we should put on ourselves. I already switched the settings to set mode. And I also think we should play without healing in battle while also trying not to overlevel too much, at least purposely. Finally, we should organize a core team of six to bring to battles with us for consistency purposes. Wow, Barack, you really sound like you know what you're talking about for someone who just tried to run off to the left without fighting May 1st. Hop off, Donald. It's been a while since I played through this generation. Can you guys remind me what a timid nature means again? I don't remember the natures at all, honestly. Timid is plus speed and minus attack. Honestly, not good or bad, in my opinion, because Sceptile doesn't need any more speed than it already has, and we won't be touching any physical attacks after, like, this episode. Oh, okay, thanks, Obama. How are you so familiar with the natures? I never really cared about them too much. Well, they aren't too important for in-game purposes, but I like to dabble on Pokemon Showdown a little bit. I also like to watch some of those Showdown YouTubers like PokeAim, Blunder, and Nathan Likes Chicken every now and then. Chimpact's Pokemon Jeopardy can be fun to watch as well. I mainly just play random battles, but building teams to test on the ladder can be fun, and eventually you just start to recognize what different natures do. Timid is a pretty common one for special sweepers like Alakazam or Gengar. Okay, Obama, we get it. You're a complete nerd and possibly a virgin. Can we go back to talking about our potential team, please? I think we should try to use a team composed of entirely Generation 3 Pokemon not just because there are some pretty sick ones introduced here, but also because it will give a cool sense of unity to our team. It also adds a little bit of a challenge, since we can't just sweep through Watson with a Geo dude or pick up an early Gyarados to trivialize the rest of the game. Okay, honestly, boys, since we've started talking about how this run is going to play out, I've been getting really excited about it. Just one thing, though, who the fuck is Watson? Oh, Jesus, Joe, I really hope it won't be your turn to play by the time we have to take on Watson. He's one of the hardest gym leaders in the game, especially since we decided on Trico. Combuskin and Marshtomp can deal with him with ease, but Gravile won't be able to do too much despite being a resistance to electric. Oh, wow. And whose fucking fault is that? That's right, the goddamn Democrats I'm in a call with. You two make these moronic left-leaning decisions so much that you couldn't help but pick the poke ball on the left that just so happened to have Trico in it. I think I figured it out now. 
Donald, I assure you, you could not be more wrong in analyzing our decision-making process. Besides, that's not important right now at all. We have our first rival fight now. I got us up to level six as some insurance, especially because we do have an attack-lowering nature, and that could serve as a disadvantage here. Psh, my goodness, guys, I just got to say something here. Joe, you perverted fuck. I know what you're thinking, but you better not say it. What are you guys it? talking about? May is the hottest pokey girl in Here all of Pokemon. Here we fucking go. I'm sorry it had to be said. Those tight shorts around those legs. Uh, Joe, she's friendly, literally 10 years old. bantering demeanor. I mean, how could you not fall for her, guys? I know you see it, too. Joe, you are literally the president of the United fucking States. You cannot be saying shit like that on the Internet. I heard you just sniff your screen a second ago. Please get help. Yeah, Joe, I know you have a history with this sort of thing, but I'd really prefer if you did your best to not bring it to the playthrough here. I'm sorry, Barack, I just can't help it sometimes. But man, does it feel good to see how impressed she is with us. I hope she remembers this battle for the rest of her life because I know I will. Barack, I'm just gonna do my best to ignore Joe when this sort of thing comes up. Ditto. Joe, I just hope you don't bust a nut every time we see May, because that's gonna happen like 15 more times throughout this playthrough. Do you promise that Donald, uh, oh my God, there she is again. Yes, of course, I will follow you anywhere, my queen. Unforgivable, really. Jesus Christ, okay, guys, we're changing the subject. Donald, back to what you were saying earlier about our team. I am totally cool with that whole native hoe and Pokemon thing. I think that's a cool idea that can give our team members some sort of unity. Do you guys want to plan out our team in advance or just kind of wing it? I'm cool either way, but personally, I think keeping things as a surprise to our viewers could be kind of fun for them. Glad to see you're on board with that, Hussein. Barack Honestly, all of these super early game encounters kind of lick nuts. So I'm not too concerned about it this episode. That being said, I do have a Pokemon I want to pick up that will come up in an episode or two. So I'll make sure to point it out when we get there. That's honestly perfect. I have a Pokemon in mind that is early game as well. So I'll do the same and just make sure we pick it up when we can. Okay, sweet. We can do that then. We can each choose one early game encounter. And then that will leave just two Pokemon left that we need to add. Hopefully we can agree on who we should add based on how our team is looking after we get all of our early game encounters. For now, we need to make our way to the next town, but to do so, we're going to have to fight some trainers on the way. Thank God we finally have the running shoes. I always hated how long it takes to get them in the Generation 3 games, especially Fire Red and Leaf Green. You literally have to beat the first gym after playing for like an hour before they give them to you there. Big facts there, Donald. The later generations just give them to you off the start. But in this game, they are treated as if you physically cannot run without this special pair of shoes. It honestly always kind of baffled me. You never see anyone else running in these games besides the professor at the very beginning. So it makes me wonder if these shoes are like some sort of prized rarity. Can you guys stop talking about shoes, please? It's making me think of feet, which makes me think of May's feet. Fucking and just hell, the Joe. thought of that, ooh, is getting me bricked up. Joe, ooh, my you goodness. are Here an abomination again. to Donald, the human down, race. Please. Do you even realize what the hell you are saying right now? Besides, there's no way your senile ass can even get bricked up. Try me, bitch. Just Honestly, ask Melania. How do you even come up with the things that come out of your mouth? Okay, that is enough, Joe. Donald has a point in that you need to get your ass to therapy because the United States does not need its president to have a foot fetish for adolescent girls. Facts. That being said, Donald, you are way too quick at outbursting at everything Joe says. You really need to control your temper when you're in the call here or things will not go smoothly for the rest of the run. You both are sacrificing the sanctity of this playthrough and honestly the safety for our viewers. You know what, Donald, I think Barack has a point. I think I should just keep some things to myself here despite what I'm thinking because clearly it will be met with animosity even if said animosity is warranted. I realize my way of thinking can be immoral, but it's just who I am. I hope my boys here can forgive me. Honestly, Joe, I agree and I don't think you're the only one in the wrong here. I definitely lash out at you for almost everything you do that I see is wrong. And you don't deserve that all the time. Sure, some things are literally batshit insane, Donald. But in the end, I think you have good personal intentions. That includes your intentions with our country. I hope you two can forgive me as well. Okay, there. I'm glad we got that out of the way. Honestly, boys, I know it can be hard to apologize, so I'm sure our viewers appreciate that as well. Let's move on, shall we?
Our sky here is leveling up quite quickly, so these trainers should be no match for us for the time being. Hey, Barack, I know we've kind of made an implication of how we're going to do this, but how should we handle who gets to play at what times? Honestly, I'm glad you asked Donald. That can be a little nuanced, so we might just have to play it by ear. If we switch every episode, we run the risk of someone battling multiple gym leaders in a row. For fairness, we shouldn't subject ourselves to that. However, if we switch after every gym leader, then there will be some occasions where someone only plays for one episode, but the next person plays for like four episodes. So it's more complicated than it seems. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, we see what you're saying, Barack. I don't really think it's a big deal if someone misses out on a gym leader once or twice, but we can deal with that as it arises. I think it makes sense to switch every episode and go from there, mainly because I'm just itching to play. Okay, Joe. That's cool. If Donald doesn't mind, you can play in our next episode. I think in this one, I'm planning on getting through the Petalburg Woods, and then I'll call it a day from there. I'd like to keep these episodes to around 30 minutes apiece. That seems reasonable for both us and the viewers. Yeah, that's cool with me, Joe. You can have the next episode. If all goes well with Barack today, that means Joe should probably be able to beat the gym leader next episode, and then I'll take it from there. Sounds like a plan, boys. Hey, now that we're pretty much back on good terms with each other, I'd like to revisit something you said earlier, Donald. Sure thing, Joe. What's on your mind? Well, I can't remember exactly how you said it, but it was something along the lines of Generation 2 sucking ass. Did you mean the starters or the generation as a whole? Well, in that context, I was talking about the starters, but really I think it is Pokemon's worst generation. Well, Donald, I don't really see how you can say that considering Crystal is inarguably the best Pokemon game Nintendo Joe, has ever you released. fucking... Donald. Joe, I'm going to have to respectfully disagree with you here. While Crystal did fix a couple things wrong with Gold and Silver, I believe the entirety of the game is flawed in the first place. I barely know where to begin. The vast majority of the new Pokemon are severely underwhelming. The gym leaders barely have any Johto-specific Pokemon. And the levels of the late game are so incredibly all over the place that you barely have a fully evolved team by the Elite Four. Good job, Donald. Okay, Donald, those are some good points. Let me think of what I have to say really quick. Fuck, I meant to dodge this trainer. Lowell, get good Barack. Okay, Donald, I think Crystal just has a special place in my heart out of nostalgia. And I'm kind of just blinded to the abundant flaws the game has. Some things are great about it, but most things make the game pretty underwhelming. I see that. Joe, you just like how it was the first game you got to play as a girl, don't you? Is that true, Joe? I told you I'm going to start keeping my mouth shut about some of these things. All right, anyway, yeah, here's why I didn't want to fight this trainer. Shroomishes can be an absolute pain to deal with if you didn't pick Torchic. They can heal themselves with Absorb, and they can also status you with their ability Effect Spore if you make a contact move. That's why I'm going to start off with a Leer against it, so I don't have to hit it too many times. Honestly, Breloom is such a sick Pokemon design. Grass and fighting is a pretty cool type combination for a Pokemon to have, especially because it resists both ground and rock type moves, which is difficult for a Pokemon to do. It has super high base attack and gets stab priority mock punch on top of plenty of other cool moves. I used to always pair it with my Swampert. Unfortunately, since our starter is grass, it doesn't make much sense for us to go pick one up from the woods. Big facts, Donald. I don't like mixing typings in the party either, and since it is both grass and fighting type, that means I really only pick up a shroomish if I started with Mudkip. That doesn't take anything away from the fact that it is super potent in an emerald playthrough. Anyway, it looks like we finally made it over to the next town. We sure did, Joe. I'm going to go ahead and talk to our dad at the gym here because that's the only thing we really need to do before we can move on here. This game was really all over the place with the father figures for the young travelers here. May's dad clearly likes us more than May. Our dad clearly likes that Wally bitch more than us. And soon we find out how Wally's dad clearly doesn't care for his son and wants us to be looking out for him. Ha ha ha, Donald, I never really noticed that. That's a good point. At least we finally have a father figure in this game. You never really get that in the Pokemon games for some reason. 
Yeah, Barack, I bet it's a strange feeling to actually know your father in this game, isn't it? <laughs> oh, fuck off, Joe. Good one, Joe. Anyway, Joe, if you could please hold on to something, you're about to cream over this wild encounter. Not Arnold. I don't actually care for that slutty Gardevoir line that much. They are incredibly overdone, and only simpletons actually simp over that shit. Well, that's a relief to hear, Joe. I was honestly a little worried as well. Hey, guys, what's going on? Holy shit! Here that's we a fucking Ralt. You better catch that beautiful specimen right it had now. had to be someone. Ben, shut your corny pencil head looking ass up. First off, this isn't an encounter we can get. Second, you are literally stroking it to a male Ralt. Gender is How not the hell identity. did you even get in this call in the first place? Seriously, Ben, this is a private call. You shouldn't be allowed to just hop in like that. Well, seriously, Obama, you should suck my private balls. Holy I am shit. a moderator <laughs> of this Discord, so I can hop in and out of whatever call I want. Okay, fine, Ben, but please have some respect for the fact that me, Donald, and Joe have already planned out how we're going to go through the rest of this game, and it does not include a Ralts. It's a good Pokemon, but we're kind of aiming to go against the grain here, Ben. Whatever, Obama, I have absolutely no reason to stick around then if you guys are playing Emerald without even using a Gardevoir. Literally no point in watching. Enjoy retirement, you imbeciles. My God, I really just have no idea where I stand with that guy. He's got a pretty respectable viewpoint on a lot of major issues in America, and he articulates them well to his audience. But holy shit, is he the most annoying human being on the face of this earth. Honestly, I've hated him for a long time now. But that sucked my private balls comment to Obama. It was pretty fucking funny. We'll have to just agree to disagree on that one, Joe. But more importantly, we're finally getting out of this town. Oh, damn it, I forgot about this guy. Who the hell is this Newman from Seinfeld looking ass bitch? Joe, I know you did not just compare my boy Scott to fucking Wayne Knight. They look nothing like each other. Honestly, Donald, I can see it. I'll have the editor post a side by side of them up here and let the viewers decide on this one. Anyway, Joe, Scott is the founder of the Battle Frontier Island. It makes sense you don't recognize him because you don't see him in Ruby or Sapphire. He only makes an appearance here in Emerald. We will encounter him a handful of times throughout the journey here before he invites us to the island. Sounds pretty sketchy to me. What's so cool about this Battle Frontier, anyway? Oh, only like every single fucking thing about it, Joe. First off, right when you get there, you can start up at the Battle Factory to get a feel for things. You can rent out competitively trained Pokemon to go against other random trainers and even trade with them after you beat them. After you build up a win streak, you get to fight the Frontier Brain at each of the seven different facilities. And they will, in turn, reward you with a silver badge the first time you beat them, and then a gold badge the next time. Ooh, shit, I remember now from the anime. That's where Charizard beats the Articuno, I think. Also, that banger theme song. It's a battle, win or lose, it's the friends you make, it's the road you choose. Jesus, Joe, that's not how the theme goes at all. What can I say, Barack? I am an AI-generated model, not Ariana Grande. Barack, what the hell is this demented old fuck talking about? I wish I knew Donald. Anyway, I agree with you in that the Battle Frontier is based as fuck and definitely an upgrade from the Battle Tower from the previous games. Hell, even the Battle Tower at the Frontier is better than the ones we had before. That all said, I never actually went through and beat the whole thing. It was way too difficult, considering you essentially had to create a competitive team and get insanely lucky throughout each facility run. I just really like the Battle Factory. That's understandable, Barack. It is for sure a commitment. You would have had to be a true Pokemon master like me to actually go through and get each medal. Fuck off, Donald. I am a Pokemon master. I like how you called me a virgin earlier for knowing what each nature does, but you actually went through and got every damn Battle Frontier medal. Something that only like 0.1% of Pokemon players have Ooh, actually done. Make sure to battle this pretty lady. She's got stacks for days and we can rob her in broad daylight. Thanks for interrupting me, Joe, but yes, you have a point. These trainers are always worth battling. Unfortunately, they also have full restores that they tend to use, which is pretty damn annoying to deal with this early. Yeah, and equally, unfortunately, our Trico here does pitiful damage in the early game. Still not regretting the decision to skip over Mudkip, guys? Honestly, Donald, Mudkip is just so overdone in YouTube playthroughs. Facts. I feel like Trico doesn't get much love, despite how sleek his character Facts. design is. Also, I think the mid-stage evolutions of starters are often underwhelming. Marshtomp fails to compare to both Mudkip and Swampert, facts. and Combusken has come in its name and literally looks like a dick and balls. Holy shit, facts. Gravile is inarguably the coolest mid-stage starter. Keep cooking, But Barack. I could be biased 
because of how much I liked the Mystery Dungeon series. Are you done riding Barack's meat yet, Joe? I admit Grovile is pretty sick in theory, but he is literal trash in a playthrough of Pokemon Emerald. Trico is good for Roxanne, although not better than Mudkip, and he doesn't get Leaf Blade until, like, level 30. And up until that point, we're literally relying on Absorb and maybe Bullet Seed, two terrible moves. Jesus Christ, Donald, we aren't doing a deathless, hardcore Nuzlocke of Emerald Kaizo here. It's just a playthrough of Vanilla Emerald for the purpose of our entertainment. And guess what? Trico calls for entertaining gameplay, having our starter fall off in the mid-game, but then come back to clutch up for us in the final stretch is just a fitting concept for a story anyway. I don't see why you're so pissy over this. Whatever fuck both of you, I just like being optimal. And holy shit, who does this guy think he is coming at us with a bunch of level three wormples? Doesn't he know you can level up your Pokemon? You can literally catch wild wormples in the first route of the game at a higher level than this guy's. I'll admit, Donald, I would have much rather had this guy just own a Cascoon and a Silcoon or something instead of all these weak-ass bugs. It's times like these that make me want to use the speed up button, but I'm not sure about whether we should be allowed to do that. Besides, if I do that, it's going to mess up the background audio of the game. So I honestly don't really know. That one is up to you guys. Honestly, guys, I'm cool with allowing each other to use the speed up button in certain situations. I think it makes sense for pointless battles like this, as well as any time we need to grind up or something. We should probably just mute the game when we do it as to not jeopardize the audio quality of the video. That works for me, boys. From now on, we can use the speed up button for battles irrelevant to the story if the trainers have bullshit like this that we have seen before. That being said, we should hold off on using it in the overworld. The speed up button is a goddamn addictive drug, and you ought to be using it in moderation. All right, I'm glad you two could come to agree on that one. I'm almost done with this episode, so I'll just continue to play through it normally for now. Goddamn, we really need to get another member on the team. I'm getting a little tired of seeing Trico just pound all these little trainers. What the hell? Joe, for the love of God, just think about how the words you're about to say will sound when you say them out loud. But ignoring that, my encounter is coming up soon. Joe, you should be able to grab it early on in the next episode. I'm really curious as to what encounters you guys have in mind, and I'm excited to team build around them based on what's left in the region. The mid to late game has some super sick Pokemon we can use like Absol, Dusclops, Walrein, and Melodic, just to name a few. Donald, I hate to burst your bubble, but there is no way in hell we are fishing up a Feeboss just so we can use a Milotic for half the game. That shit literally takes like three hours to catch, and then we even have to grind up its beauty stat in those Pokemon contest places. And even doing that is not easy on an emulator because of how janky it is making Poke blocks in this game. Hey, can we talk about what just happened here? This random dude comes into the forest looking for a shroomish which makes you think he's a trainer with his own Pokemon to defend himself with. But then as soon as this grunt shows up, he cowers behind a 10-year-old boy. Yeah, no, this guy's a D1 pussy for sure, Joe. The worst part of it is this isn't even the only time we're going to have to protect his bitch ass. Yeah, well, at least he gives us stuff each time we save him, so I don't really mind. Also, this is our first encounter here with Team Aqua. What do you guys think of the evil teams in this game? To me, they're kind of mid, honestly. Honestly, Aqua and Magma are probably the dumbest fucking evil teams in Pokemon. I really just don't understand anyone's motivation. The other games have evil teams that want to take over the world, liberate all Pokemon, all that sort of shit that makes sense. But these teams want to do what? Expand the sea? Like, who gives a fuck? Joe, I agree their motivation is a little bit hazy, but they aren't the worst villains in Pokemon. Team Magma believes that by expanding the land mass, they can create more room for humanity and Pokemon to coincide, while Team Aqua are seemingly more radical in their intentions. They aim to expand the sea so they can wipe out humanity and allow the world to return to its origins. There's actually a lot more lore than you're giving it credit for. Obama, I hate to do this to you, but I'm going to have to agree with Joe on this one. Despite the fact that the box legendaries have the coolest natural feud in Pokemon, being land, sea, and sky, the evil teams really just don't do them justice. They also have the most idiotic set of leaders I can think of. Maxi on top of Mount Chimney. Oops, we're actually blowing up the wrong mountain or some shit. 
Archie, when catching the blue sea monster, I think I'll use the red orb. Oops, now he's pissed off. Like, what the fuck are they thinking? Nothing but facts, big D. Don't fucking call me that, Joe. That being said, all the turmoil that happens in the late game with the evil teams does lead to a pretty insane cut scene with Rayquaza flying down from the heavens. That's the one part of Emerald that I wish Ruby had. Well, at least we can agree on that part. That cutscene was revolutionary for Pokemon oh, back for in the sure. day. Permanently ingrained in my mind. Hey, Barack, since you're about to finish up here, I want to take a minute to thank you for setting this up today. You stormed through this first episode. I just hope Joe is going to be able to keep up the pace in the next one. Oh, blow me, Donald. I have a grass-type Pokemon, and I am going up against a bunch of Geodudes in the next episode. How hard can that be? Well, Joe, it doesn't matter even if you have a fucking Mewtwo on your team if you fall asleep while playing. <laughs> Make sure to just take your medicine before you hop on the Discord call. Oh, I'll be taking my medicine, all right. Um, Melania is on her way over right now, so I just popped a pill a few minutes ago, if you know what I'm getting at. Joe, don't you fucking joke about my wife like that she is an incredible human being, the best human being, and I know a lot of human beings. She is the best. Oh, she's the best, all right. Joe. All right, boys, please. We almost made it to the end of the episode on a good note. Donald, back to what you were saying. I'm happy to set this up for my friends. I'm glad we're doing this together, despite the constant bickering between you two. I'm gonna go ahead and teach Bullet Seed to Sky here and then cut it off. Joe, I will make sure to send you the save file so you can start this up next time. Sounds good to me, Barack. Donald, I hope you know I'm just messing around with you all in good fun. Yeah, yeah, Joe, I'm aware. I'm looking forward to doing this again with you guys next time. Good, me too, guys. Hi everyone, welcome back to our Pokemon series where Barack, Donald, and I will be playing poppin', through Emerald boys? up to the champion battle. In this episode, I will be taking us through Rustboro City and taking on the gym leader there. It should be a good episode. Great intro, Joe. I would also like to start off here by reading out a quick note from the editor. So first off, you will notice that our avatars are a little different from last time. That's purely for the convenience of editing and overall aesthetic improvement. Secondly, the editor will be utilizing some transitions to cut around insignificant gameplay, mainly so we can keep a high pace of relevant gameplay for the viewers. It should make for a more overall enjoyable experience here. Joe, did you actually just walk back into the woods and think we wouldn't notice? Did you forget to take your Aricep this morning? Buzz off, Donald. I'm just getting used to the controls. Oh, that's cap. I haven't played this file yet, remember? Don't worry about him, Joe. Just keep pushing forward. Make sure to check for hidden items back here and then go into that house for the water pail. Way ahead of you, Barack. There is no way I'm passing up on that flower shop. I can just imagine how many pretty young ladies are waiting for their protagonist in there. Jesus, Joe, is this going to be a reoccurring trend? Do you really have to make everyone physically uncomfortable in the first minute of gameplay each episode? Donald, I think we should let this one slide. The flower shop girls are employed meaning they are at least of legal age, and that means Joe is making progress as a human being. Damn straight, Barack. Thanks for having my back. Oh, why, hello to you too, my dear. Oh, for the love of God. It's fine, Donald. Oh, I agree. Goat is a nice name. Thank you, love. Oh, hell no. I don't want to learn about berries. I know what this is. They use their charm to lure you in by complimenting your name, and then they want you to buy their shitty product. No thanks, honey. Not falling for that one again. Okay, Joe, I really, really hate to get into the rabbit hole with you, but I just have to know. What product were you conned into last time to make you need to say, not falling for that one again? All right, well, just last week, I was just minding my business in the Oval Office when I got a call from the Girl Scouts of America oh God, Joe. to endorse their new chocolate chip ice cream line. And as you guys know, I love, love, Love me some chocolate chip ice uh, cream. Joe, please think carefully about how you're going to finish this story. So anyway, they send up two of their finest ambassadors, both with huge wagons Joe! of chocolate chip ice cream. Oh, never mind. And so in my head, I'm like, holy shit, I absolutely must be dreaming somebody pinched me. But I kept my cool as the situation required me at the top of my game. Joe, I cannot believe you are our president. But that's exactly when things started going downhill. Oh, right, that's when it started. One got closer to my desk and said in her sweet, angelic voice, Mr. President, sir, would you be interested in buying 1,000 gallons of this luscious, savory, irresistible chocolate chocolate chip ice cream? This is going on my Twitter for sure. 
And so, of course, I said no to that ridiculous request. Oh, thank God, Joe. I was worried for and a so minute. And so I told them I would settle for nothing less than 10,000 gallons of that delicious Holy chocolate, shit, chocolate chip ice cream to be stored across Washington, D.C. at my liking. Please let that be captured. I needed to let them know that I am, in fact, large and in charge. Oh, and you certainly succeeded with that one. But then here's the worst part of the whole story. I highly doubt it. The ice cream wasn't even good. It was actually terrible. And so now I'm stuck here with 10,000 gallons of ice cream. What in the world am I supposed to do with it all? Yeah, so Joe, you're getting impeached. Joe, that story was an absolute train wreck from the beginning to the end. I really did not know how it just kept getting worse as it continued. If this whole presidency thing doesn't pan out, maybe pursue a career in literature, because that was honestly a page turner. Yeah, maybe like a horror novelist or something about dystopian societies. I'm sure you could push out some great content of that nature. Thanks, guys. I love having such supportive friends in my life. You know, these are hard times, so I like being able to open up to you guys. Jesus, what an absolute joke. Hey, editor, can you cut ahead past this goddamn shroomish fight? It's going to take like two minutes, and hopefully by then we will have forgotten about this stupid ice cream debacle and start focusing on the gameplay. Good looks, Donald. All right, glad that's out of the way. We should be pretty much at Rustboro City now after this fight. Technically, there is usually a mandatory double battle right ahead of us, but since we only have one Pokemon in our party, they won't engage in a battle with us unless we talk to them. Okay, Barack, I won't talk to them just yet then, considering Donald said we should be getting our next encounter. So, oh my what God. Now, Joe? He, it's them, the Girl Scouts. I can't do it, Barack. Get just them off my screen forward, now. Joe. Jesus Christ, Joe, get a hold of yourself. Okay, look, there's Jill over in the corner. Just talk to her so she can calm you down and bring you back home. You're going to get through this, okay, Joe, I promise. We're going to have to go back down through those trainers eventually. I promise we'll all get through this together, okay? Donald's right, Joe. Jill even gave you a Chesto Berry to wake you up if you accidentally fall asleep on us. Jill is here for you, I'm here for you, and even Donald is here for you. We're all one big team now, Joe. And considering we're about to go up against the first gym together, we're going to need to act like a team, okay? Oh, oh, okay, guys, I'm sorry for freaking out. I think I'll be okay. I just gotta start running around to keep my mind off of those things. There's plenty to do in this city, so hopefully I can keep myself distracted. That's the spirit, Joe. How about you hop into the Poke Mart real quick so we can adjust our inventory? That's a good idea, Barack. Good shit keeping things moving at a steady pace. Also, this NPC here makes a good point. It might be worthwhile to buy a couple super potions. Okay, uh, poke balls. No, I think we'll be fine on those. Uh, okay, here you said super potions. Does this work? No. Joe, no, we don't need to waste all of our money on them. Just buy a few and make sure we have a couple of each status healing items, a couple repels, and an escape rope or two also. That should be plenty for now. Okay, okay, uh, three antidotes. There we go. Uh, two more paralyzed heals. Uh, don't need any of these X thingies. Uh, escape rope and repels. Okay, there we go. Perfect. I'm guessing I actually have some stuff I could sell also, so might as well take care of that while we're here. Let's see, X defend for sure, and uh, that's actually it. Okay, let's get out of here, boys. boy Joe, easy does it. Now there's a couple of great items around the city, so let's make sure to go find those while- uh... All right, that's enough, Joe. If you cannot handle talking to these 16-bit NPCs without climaxing, then you will no longer be allowed access to the save file. I've had yeah, enough. seriously, Dilzan, you're overplaying this joke. Guys, I think this Pikachu is retarded or something. Joe, you can't say that. Okay, Donald, I get it. I'll do my best. Here, watch this. Let's see what you got, Sleepy Joe. Why, hello there, little girl whom I have never met. Uh, lovely fuck? weather we are having today, isn't it? Have a nice day. Okay, anyone else, and that would have just been borderline creepy. But since it's you, Joe, you pass with flying colors. Try to keep that energy next time we're in that position. Remember, that double battle will be happening whether you like it or not. Okay, guys, that's fine. I'll be okay by then, I promise. Let's go ahead and search for those items you were talking about, Barack. 
Wait, what's this? Oh, the Cutter's house. Now, nah, fuck that noise. Yo, stop. Go back and go into the Cutter's house. That's where we get the cut HM, which we need to progress the story. Actually, technically, Donald, we don't ever need to use the cut HM in this playthrough to beat Emerald. You need it in fire red and leaf green, but it just allows you to get some extra items, battles, and encounters in this game. That in mind, yes, we obviously should pick it up. Ooh, okay. That's not at all what I had in mind. You know, they really should not have a sign outside their door that just says, Cutter's House. That is incredibly ominous and threatening, especially if you're actually just giving away free stuff. Wait, what the hell is this guy doing in here? Isn't this the Battle Knight guy? Joe, you mean Scott, the Battle Frontier guy that you mistakenly referred to as Wayne Knight last episode? But yeah, what is he doing here? That's pretty creepy. Well, he's actually just scouting out for talented trainers, which is pretty cool, honestly, because it foreshadows that he has something planned in the future for expert trainers. What's actually creepy is this guy in front of the classroom here. Wait, where's he going? Oh, wait, I remember now. This is the dude who abuses his students, isn't it? Yeah, this guy literally says that students who are slacking in class get shanked by his quick claw. I have no idea how they got away with this one. That's that Japanese disciplinary Holy action shit, right the there. Well, I couldn't care less because he just gave us a great item. Anyway, Joe, do me a favor and skip the gym for the time being and go north. My encounter is finally coming up. All right, Donald. I'm excited. I know the grass is all the way to the right here, but I'm going to explore up north real quick. Uh, if I remember, there should be an item or a hidden item or something this way. Yeah, sweet, a super potion. Okay, editor, do your thing, please. All right, Donald, I'm excited too. It's about time we added a new member to the team. I have a couple ideas of who it could be. All right, come on, baby, come on, baby, come on, baby. Ah, fuck, get this thing out of my face, Joe. Jesus, that is not a Pokemon. That is literally just a cicada. Why is it here? Okay, now hold on, Joe. I think you should actually go ahead and catch this guy to be our cut user in battle. Cut is a bad move, and we can't delete it off a move set until like the sixth gym. So we should put it on a Pokemon we don't care about, like this little guy. Oh shit, okay, that's actually a 200 IQ called Barack. I will go ahead and do that. Okay, but does our HM slave have to be this piece of shit though? Technically, we could go back and catch a Zigzagoon. That way we can have a cut user with the pickup ability so we can actually get some items on the side. That's a good point, Donald. That would have been smart but Ninkata can actually have a useful ability for us, too, with compound eyes. You see, outside of battle, if we have a compound eyes Pokemon leading the party and run into a wild Pokemon, and if that wild Pokemon has a chance to hold an item, then that chance increases drastically thanks to the ability. It could be very helpful if we want to farm for some type boosting items or rare berries or something. Damn, Barack, you just ain't missing today, are you? I never do. All right, Donald, let's see if we can't get your actual encounter. Come on, baby, come on, baby. Oh, shit, what the hell is this thing? Oh, Donald, no, oh, look how cute it is. Yeah, Joe, no, gonna have to side with Donald here. This thing absolutely blows Wiener. Please run away. Oh, fine. Wismer is the type of Pokemon you really just need to give a chance, though. If not Wismer or Ninkata, then what the hell are you looking for, Donald? I'm looking for this baby right here. Oh my God, what is wrong Ooh, with this game? Oh, Donald, so you did want the Wismer. Good for no, you. No, Joe, I don't want the fucking Wismer. Editor, can you please help us out here? Two hours later. And so that is why, Joe, Akame Gakil is the coolest anime of all time. No question. Holy shit. Thank Christ it's finally here. That literally took like 20 uh, encounters. Donald, we could have gotten a Talo back in the woods or the route next to Are you to fucking joke? Oh, never mind. I don't care. It's here and it's now, Joe. Thank you for your patience. Please catch this beautiful creature. Jesus, Donald, anything to get Brock's weeb ass to shut the hell up about anime. I said one thing about how I'm going to miss Ash and the Pokemon anime, and he just won't stop talking about cums, gay Akame kill, Doctor. or some shit. Anyway, Donald, why do you want a Talo so badly? Anyway, it's just a starter bird. A starter bird? Like Barack, this is a finisher bird. A bird of the gods. The gods, I Jesus, say. Jesus, calm down, Dennis. Yo, don't you fucking run from it. Catch him in our great ball, for he is a great Pokemon. Joe, please, okay, just stop your trolling. Taylor and Swellow rock the red, white, and blue baby. The great ball rocks the red, white, and blue baby. And I, who makes America great, rock the red, white, and blue baby. And that's not even all.
This bird reminds me of Falco, the greatest melee character there is. And you know who plays Falco? Mango, who is literally the embodiment of America. If you can think of a better catch, just fucking tell me already. Okay, so let me guess. I'm naming this guy Mango. You're damn right you're naming him Mango. All right, Donald, I can't lie that speech was patriotic as hell. It's giving me goosebumps. The fact that it's the week of the 4th of July makes it all the better. God bless the U.S. of fucking A, baby. And mango, I guess. All right, let's check this birdie out, shall we? Quirky, haha, -ha, I love that. Quirky mango. What does that do, Barack? Quirky is a neutral nature. No stat changes. Can't be mad about that. Dope. All right, Joe, go ahead and let our goat take on this pussy bug trainer over here. We probably don't even need to show the gameplay. It's just going to be a massacre. All right, we'll do Donald. Mango here is healed up and ready to go. Let me just move him to the front of the party and let's see the damage this guy can put on. I have high expectations, Donald. This bird is about to hit like a 2015 West Balls with a full refill of Adderall. Okay, that sounds incredibly potent, but I have no idea what it actually means. Are you sure the viewers will? Barack, I don't give a shit about what the viewers do or do not know. Look at your screen. It's literally a bird versus a worm right now. Peck this garbage to pieces, Joe. Say less, Big D. This battle was over I told before you to it stop started. Telling me that, Joe. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and finish up this trainer and the couple around us to get some experience. We'll meet you guys back at the Pokemon Center. All right, boys. I think I'm ready now. Hell yeah, Joe. You're about to clown on this gym. I can feel it. Donald, I don't give a shit about the gym. I'm talking about the actual looming threat that must be overcome. I'm talking about the Girl Scouts. Joe, there aren't any fucking Donald, Girl Scouts. Please. Jesus Christ. I mean, you're right, Joe. Let's go take on the Girl Scouts. I'm proud of you for embarking on this brave journey to defeat one of your many irrational enemies. And so am I, Joe. Remember, this is a double battle, so the order of your party is important here. Make sure Talo and Trico are the two front Pokemon. And Inkata should be last in line. OK, right. Thank you for reminding me, Barack. All right, Papa Joe, you can do this. They're just a couple Pokemon trainers, nothing more, nothing less. Steady breaths. And just click A like 10 times, because it's a fucking Pokemon game. You'll be OK. Are you feeling better about yourself now, Joe, after that gross pep talk? Or how about now that you see two level six grass types and you have a mango on your side? See, Joe, absolutely nothing to worry about here. OK, well, honestly, now I can just see Trico shooting a seed out of his dick while hitting a T-pose. I literally cannot unsee it now. And I have forgotten everything else that was important about this Joe, battle. what the actual hell is wrong with your brain? All right, that's amazing. That sounds like best case scenario for everyone here, Joe. Now that you've taken care of all the trainers here, I think it's finally time we go take on that gym. What do you say, Joseph? Hell yeah, Barack. Sounds like a plan to me. Check this transition. Whoa, how did we get here? Hee <laughs> Oh, that was clever, Joe. I didn't think you were capable of that. All right, so all these bitches just have a bunch of Geo dudes. Can we do this one fight and then just skip ahead to the gym battle? Yeah, that works for me. We're still just going to be switching Taylor in and out here to share the experience, and we aren't actually risking anything because I don't believe any of these Geo dudes actually have any rock moves. Perfect. We'll just see you all up by the gym leader then. All right, it's finally here, boys. This is a long-anticipated fight. It should be pretty easy, Joe, if you just play smart. We would have to get pretty unlucky for things to go poorly here, but it's happened to many others before us, so stay cautious. With which Pokemon? Uh, yeah. I'm gonna switch into Trico and sweep your whole team, bitch. Ooh, now hold on just Joe, a minute. Joe, we must remain focused. Focus on the pile of rocks in front of you, okay? Oh, Jesus. Okay, uh, let's see. I have, uh, Peck, uh... Wait, no, I need to get the fuck out of here, yeah? Yes, Joe, good shit. Switch into the guy that wins the game by looking at them. That's my president right there, so goddamn smart. Whoa there, Obama. Whatever happened to playing like a team, huh? No need to be so passive-aggressive okay. about okay, I it. definitely want to heal some of that back. That did more damage than I thought. Absorb. Let's go. Hell Boom, yeah, bitch. Joe. That's what I'm fucking talking about right there. Keep that up and we'll be through here in no time. Okay, you're right, Donald Joe. You might be the only one really playing right now, but all three of our hearts are in this one. I believe in you, Joe. You're doing great. Just keep your composure, Joe. Hell yeah, Donnie. I'm about to suck this rock hard Geo dude dry and no one's oh gonna Oh my god, stop Joe, me. please. For once I'm gonna ignore it. Only one Pokemon left, Joe. Let's bring it home, baby. Come on, Trico. 
All right, I highly doubt we're gonna be able to one-shot this guy unless we get like five hits with bullet seed. All right, who is it gonna be, huh? Who wants it, huh? Holy shit, what the hell is that? Is that its fucking nose on its head? Yes, Joe, what gave it away? Okay, well, Barack, you said five hits of bullet seed, say less. Let's just wrap this up, Sky. Moment of truth, boys, hold your breath. There's two. There's three. There's four, no way. Come on, Sky, one more. That's five. Holy Let's go, shit, Sky. Boys, we did it. Shit, oh, fuck no that. way it lived that. Uh oh, boys. It's all right, boys, we'll live this. Hold, Sky. Come on, baby, come on, baby. Fuck yeah. Oh no, our speed. It's okay, Joe, we're still faster. Now, even after this, Barry, I'm sure she'll heal here, but not to full. So this time, five hits will surely knock it out. All right, sure enough, there's the potion. Oh, but Barack's right, we can win it right here, right now, if luck is on our side. Now, fuck luck, we have Sky, that's two hits. Okay, here's three. And that's four, just one more. One more, come on. Oh, no. Shit. Okay, guys, I'm not sure if she has another potion or not. But either way, we click bullet seed again, but now we just need four. Exactly, okay, yeah, four hits will win it for us, or even just three with a crit, come on, we're due for a crit, right? Okay, here's two. And that's three. One more and it's all over. No. Oh my God, what a fucking tease. Oh, wait a second, Joe. I have an idea. Switch into Mango. What? No, Donald, why? We can win right now. Just trust me on this one, guys. Please, you gotta trust me. Oh, geez, I don't know about the, this one. Donald, it's just gonna die on the switch. He'll be fine. Never doubt the kid, Joe. Never Holy doubt the shit, kid. It missed. Joking. I knew it all along. Now end this battle with a quick attack. So long, Nosehead. Oh, shit, no, it's mango. alive. See, Donald, now we lose Mango. He missed again. He's invincible. You gotta be shitting me. Donald, you are the greatest Pokemon man, trainer go, of all time. Mango! 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 That was like infinitely man, harder go. than it needed to be. I Why didn't we just keep Trico out? Harder than I need to be. Hop off Barack! We might as well deposit Trico and just have this bird fly us to the Elite Four right now. <laughs> facts, facts, facts. This Talo has plot armor for days. Well, I can't lie. That was probably the most hype gym battle I've ever seen. It's gonna be hard to top that one. That's a great way to end off the episode. What do you say, boys? Works for me, Obama. Do we have that outro song yet, or is the editor still working on the copyright? No, we still have to wait for that one, Joe, but no big deal. Go ahead and upload that save file to the Google Drive so I can start us off next time. Welcome back, right. everybody, to our Pokemon Everybody wants to be a uh, master. Joe, Jesus, Joe, why are you wants singing? To show their Joe, skills. what the hell we're recording? I'm starting the intro. Oh, come on. I'm sure the viewers were getting into it with me. Honestly, Joe, I was kind of about to myself. Johto Journeys is like a top three Pokemon uh, that's intro crazy. song. I don't remember asking. Okay, dude. Anyway, yeah, welcome back, guys. This is episode three of Presidents Play Pokemon, where me, Joe, and Barack will be playing through Pokemon Emerald. Last time, Joe stumbled around Rustboro. You mean beat the gym? This time, yours truly will be getting us out of here and moving on to the next town. Well, before any of that, Donald, you're going to have to take care of some of this Team Aqua nonsense. Oh, damn it, Barack. Yeah, you're right. I forgot this inadequate employee gets robbed again right after we beat the gym. Maybe show some sympathy, Donald. He's not asking to get robbed of his goods every time we see him. Sympathy, schmimpathy. Good one. Maybe do your job better so you don't cost the corporation resources. Honestly, Joe, this is why I am the businessman here and you are Mr. Pitiful President. Oh, yeah, Mr. Businessman with the small loan yes, of a million dollars. A huh? businessman, you something really went your from decrepit rags old to ass wouldn't just understand. The American Hop dream off while I lead us to Aren't the you, next Donald? Okay, quit. okay, okay. Donald, I don't know who's shitting your Cheerios this morning, but take a step back and relax. It took us a couple days to find a time where we can all get on a call together, so let's not ruin it with bad attitudes towards each other. Exactly. As for you, Joe, why must you instigate Donald at every opportunity you can? Let's just try to have a good time. Last episode was especially exciting. No need to ruin it with personal attacks. Fine, Barack. Last episode was hype as shit, I gotta admit. And it wouldn't have happened had Donald not picked up the Talo for us. Fair enough, and Joe, you did handle that gym well. Plus, I do appreciate you listening to me during the battle and switching into Mango in the first place. Glad to hear it, Donnie. Speaking of Mango, how sick is the wing attack animation in this game? Okay, now that that's out of the way, I want to address something important for our viewers. And what's that, Barack? I know what I'm planning on catching, and Joe, I assume you know what you're planning on catching? And we both should be able to give nicknames to those Pokemon. Okay, and? 
That being said, that still leaves us with two Pokemon that we don't know about, and consequently, we don't know what we're gonna name them. That's where the viewers can come in. Oh, Barack, I like what you're cooking here. So if you're watching this, go ahead and leave a comment with a nickname you would like to have for the Pokemon. In fact, go ahead and also name the Pokemon you think it will be alongside that nickname. We will have the editor put all the nicknames in the comment section on a wheel, and we will spin the wheel when it is time to give a name to our new team member. If you're right about which Pokemon it is, we will put that possible nickname on the wheel multiple times to reward you. Barack, that is absolute fucking heat. Maybe that's our secret to beating that piece of shit YouTube algorithm that boned us in episode two. Okay, but we won't get this encounter for them for like four or five more episodes probably, right? How should we handle that? We can remind them each episode. We'll let them do one nickname per episode and they can do the same one or a different one. It's just per each comment. That way, we can also reward people who comment consistently. They deserve it, you know? Okay, Barack, yeah, that's a top-notch idea, good shit. Also, I just deleted Lear for Pursuit. I'm guessing no one has any problems with that. Yeah, Donald, that's fine. And yeah, Barack, great idea, I'm excited. Can we leave a comment too? What, no, Joe, you cannot leave a nickname comment that's cheating. Oh, man, that's lame. Cry about it, Joe, anyway. Everyone shut the hell up. Trico is evolving. I'm turning this shit up, this is hype. Hey guys, what are we playing here? Oh my God, George, shut your trap for five George, seconds. George, what the please. actual hell is that profile picture? You better change that shit. Oh, this you mad, Barack? Minute. You mad, Michelle? Thinks oh my I'm more God, of a man than you'll up. ever be? That's Cap, and you know it, George. Bitch, I'm George uh, like George Washington. I don't tell Cap. Was so damn sexy. Holy shit! You all ruined the best part of the episode. Hey, Donald, how about you cry about it, huh? Fuck off, Joe. But whatever. I'm teaching Fury Cutter over Quick Attack since we're already faster than everything. Uh, anyway, pussies, I'm only here because I wanted to make sure Joe got that package I left for him in the White House last week. Package? What are you talking about, George? You know, the uh, package of the stuff, uh, I left it by the Situation Room. Holy shit, George, that was you? That's like really bad, dude. Yeah. Obama, this is why Michelle thinks you're a little bitch. You're literally hanging yourself. Hey, wait a minute. Are you guys recording this? Nope, definitely not, George. Donald, please, yes, George, we are recording this. Oh, shit. Uh, Joe, you care to explain that one? Yeah, Joe, I didn't know you were into that sort of stuff. You're a cooler cat than I've been giving you credit for. Well, guys, considering I'm the President of the United States, no, I would prefer not to get into the details of that one. George is a goddamn idiot, that's all I can say. I think I'm gonna have to have a talk with Michelle when we're done here, boys. Okay, guys, to be honest, I couldn't give less of a shit about whatever's going on in your personal lives at this moment. We just ruined Trico's evolution for the viewers, and more importantly, for me. I gotta admit, as sick as Grovile's design is, his back sprite in battle gives me the heebie-jeebies a little bit. Yeah, why is that vine hanging from his head so saggy? It looks like straightened, flowy hair. Yeah, it looks more like some vegan dinosaur or some shit than a lizard ninja like it's supposed to be. Yeah, and its color scheme is all off from this angle. But oh, well, he's still sick as shit. Big facts. Okay, there's that damn whiz tunnel. I'm gonna go ahead and beat up this aqua shithead so we can finally get a move on to the next town. I'm gonna let Mango take care of it, though, to get some experience. Good call, Donald, but remember, Taylor is gonna be our guy to sweep through all of the next gym, so no need to over-level him too much. Oh yeah, I forgot this Mr. Whiny guy also got jumped by the Aqua Dude. We're really just doing everyone's dirty work around here. Okay, this part was always weird to me. Why does he tell us to come get some and then take a step back? Like, is there some sort of significance of him doing that from a game coder perspective or something? I don't really know Donald, but I always kind of thought of it as character background kind of thing. Like, this is the first grunt we ever talked to and all he has is a super low-leveled Puccina during the couple times we see him. I like to think he's a newbie and kind of a coward because of it, so he's putting on this big front, but is actually scared. That's why he talks a big game, but then retreats as we start to approach him. Jesus Barack, in the first episode, you explained the entire lore of Aqua and Magma, and now you're giving an in-depth character analysis of this dumbass Aqua grunt, is there something you're not telling us? Are you a Nintendo developer or something? No, Donald, I'm not a Nintendo developer. I just pay attention to the details. Something you probably could have done better as a president during, oh, I don't know, a global pandemic, maybe? Ooh, shit, he got you there, Donnie. 
Oh, hop off, both of you. I had like half a year to get it under control before the next election. Neither of you would have done any better than I did at that time. Donald, I don't want to get into this during a goddamn Pokemon Let's Play. Hop okay, out. so sure, whatever you say. Good on you, Joe. Anyway, so we saved this guy's wing gull. Now we just need to talk to the Devon Corporation people and we can finally get out of here. Oh, Donald, guess who it is? Don't even do it. It's your favorite Pokemon Wismer. Jesus Christ, no, I fucking hate this piece of garbage. Editor, pick us up somewhere important, please. All right, take your damn goods back, please. Now, don't make us help you again, you Nimrod. Hate to break it to you, Donald, but this isn't the end of this quest for us. You're trolling. He makes us deliver them to Slateport because he thinks they'll be safest with us. Holy shit, is a 10-year-old really the only competent human being in this region? Donald, watch your language when you're in my office. Your office? Joe, have you lost your mind? What the hell are you saying? <laughs> yeah, Donald, you're in the president's office. Best come, correct, fool. Seriously, they take us to the goddamn CEO because no one else can do their job? Is this like idiocracy or something? Are all the adults just mentally disabled? Careful, Donald. Remember, we're not trying to get canceled here. Jesus Christ, even the president is making us run an errand for us. This is ridiculous. I don't remember this shit at all. Ah, yes, a great president, you say. Me and Mr. Stone here seem to have a lot in common. Now, Donald, there's a lot of benefit to these quests. We get the Poconav now, which will allow us to do some rematches against the gym leaders and other important trainers to steal some held items. And when we deliver the letter, we can come back to get the experience share. That will be incredibly useful for us to train up whatever new encounters we get. Okay, fine, whatever, but uh, Mr. Stone, sir, please fire this man. I refuse, he is one of the Not hardest you, workers Joe. in this family. Anyway, now get the hell out of my office, you peasant boy. Hey, 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 get wrecked, Donald Biden, 2024. Oh my God, what are you going to make me do this time? Please just let me leave, I'm begging you. Donald, I promise just bear with us for the next 20 seconds and then we're out of here. Yeah, Donald, quit, you're bitching. It's the early game of a Pokemon game. Of course, it's going to be slow paced. Now go ahead and give daddy a call on your cell phone here. Honestly, Joe, that old ass Mr. Stone clearly just sleeps all day in his office and is keeping relations with an adolescent boy. So maybe you two do have a lot in common. Hello, hello, can you hear me? It's me, the president. Oh my God. Yes, you look very happy. And may I say you look very handsome as well down there, my boy. Okay, Joe, I'm literally losing the will to play this game as we speak. I just want to progress the story, not appease your grooming ass. All right, there we go, Donald. Done with all that Devon stuff for the time being. You can go ahead and make our way to Duford. I'm especially excited because I have something planned for when we get there. All right, Obama works for me. Ooh, shit. Oh, boy. Wait, what, guys? What's going on? Joe, I have to inform you that there may or may not be an upcoming battle that could awaken something inside you. And I humbly request that you restrain yourself from expressing any sort of inappropriate emotions. Jesus, Donald, just tell me already. I'm not a goddamn child. Ooh! Uh, Joe, calm your tits. It's me. Why didn't you guys warn me? I warned you in Joe, excessive detail. Did you not read the comments on the last two episodes? You seriously have to rewire your brain and just get over this May obsession. Holy shit, let's go, Donald. You got her number. You are the Riz King. My guy, send that shit over to me when you can. Joe, I am about to order Taylor to peck her face to a bloody pulp. Don't you dare. And grow vile to absorb the life force out of her soul. That's a bit just grotesque. Just so she though. will never show up in this goddamn playthrough again. That way we don't have to worry about her well-being whenever you're the one interacting with her. Jesus, Donald, all right, I'm just messing around with you anyway. I'm not actually attracted to a damn character sprite on a Game Boy Advance game. Cap. Wait, are you serious, Joe? Have you actually just been trolling us this whole time? That being said, May from the Anime is a completely different story. Oh, there it is. I knew something was off. Jesus, Joe, that's even worse. She's like clearly an adolescent in the anime. Guys, we absolutely have to change the subject. We are borderline canceling ourselves right now. Okay, good looks. Why are you using Sky right now? Mango could easily one-shot this low tad and then probably take care of her next Pokemon too. Well, I wanted to test out our new Fury Cutter move. It increases in power every time it's used. So if we build up power on this Lotad, we could potentially take care of the Torchic in one or two hits. But even at 95% accuracy, we still miss the very first attack, so it's not going as well as I thought it would in my head. Yeah, I like the idea, but one or two hits is certainly a bit ambitious, Donald. It's, it's still not very effective, and we have an attack lowering nature as a primarily special attacker. 
Oh, fuck. He's in blaze with a focus energy right now. Oh, shit. Get wrecked. Watch it, pervert. Donald, congratulations on being the first one to have somebody faint. You're really the Pokemon master you thought you were, aren't you? Joe, I am 20 times the Pokemon master you'll ever be. The only thing you're the master of is running this country into the ground. Oh, yeah, because a true Pokemon master keeps his grass-type Pokemon in against a fire-type. And even worse, just uses a weak-ass bug move against it over and over again. I'm not going to explain myself again, Joe. The strategy I was implementing would go over your feeble-minded head anyway. Razor, bitch. I won the battle, and that's all that matters. Exactly, that's all that matters. Joe, this isn't a Nuzlocke or anything, so I don't mind Donald just testing out new strategies as he sees them. That's how you get more knowledgeable about damage rolls and general stats in the first place. Good on you, Big D. I'll ignore that Goodbye, last my part. Queen. Thanks, Barack. All right, so thankfully, May is out of the picture for a couple episodes, oh. probably. Now, let's get back to that Wingle fucker's boat so he can take us to Duford. Make sure to use Cut to go through the right side of the woods and talk to the girl at the beginning. She gives us a great item. Oh, right, it's the Miracle Seed, isn't it? That's pretty huge for Sky, considering how shit his grass-type moves are going to be over the next couple of episodes. Wait, are you saying that there's just a girl trapped in the woods behind these cut trees? Is she being chased by a hypno or something? Jesus, I'm using a rappel. I'm not trying to get stalked by a hypno. That's probably the scariest thing that can happen to someone in Pokemon. Facts. This looks like a hidden item to me. Yep, elite gameplay from me. Guys, she's not being chased by a hypno. She's just chilling in the woods. Although that is a pretty clever callback to fire red and leaf green with the girl lost in the woods when a hypno attacks. That is pretty scary stuff, honestly. All right, Sky has the miracle seed. Let's go ahead and cut to the boat, please, editor. Oh, I love this part. I get to just join in in their little game of tag here, hey? Okay, while Donald's wasting time here, can someone please explain what a miraculous seed does? It's the miracle seed, you buffoon, and it gives a 20% boost to grass-type attacks. Actually, Donald, you are the buffoon here because it's 20% only starting in Generation 4. In this game, it's only a 10% increase. Ooh, Donald, the Pokemon master stumbled again, it seems. Lick my nuts, Joe. I can't be perfect all the time. 10% seems a little underwhelming, but still good to have for sure. If we had that on Trico during the Roxanne fight, we would have won off the first bullet seed. This is so sick, I feel like I'm literally on a boat gliding past all of these pathetic trainers out in the ocean. What the hell? How in the hell is a phone call stopping an entire boat and its tracks from moving? Yeah, we shouldn't have reception right now. This is incredibly unrealistic, and I hate it. Jesus, are you two seriously complaining about realism in a Pokemon game? About cellular connection of all things? Not the fact that the entire premise of the game is enslaving magical creatures to fight for us? Yep, mm -hmm, sounds about right. All right, whatever weirdos. I know there's a couple good items here. I'm going to find them real quick and then take care of the cave stuff, then probably call it a day. Ooh, a fisherman not actually fishing. You know what that means. Yep, he's a lazy non-contributor to society. No, Donald, it means he's going to give you his old rod that you can put your hands on and whip around and get wet. Jesus Christ. Joe, please never describe the sport as fishing, as getting someone's rod wet ever again that was disturbing. Yeah, Barack, I've realized over the course of this Let's Play, we're going to be ignoring a whole lot of sus shit, Joe says. Because clearly there's no hope in him just controlling himself for the 20 minutes we're all together. Donald, you orange prick, I can control myself just fine. It wouldn't be a session with the boys if someone isn't cracking sus jokes. Clearly, you're new to this whole concept of Discord humor. Ooh, nice, the silk scarf. We just got two great stab-boosting items for the two Pokemon in our party right now. I'm guessing this is only 10% in this game, too? Yes, Donald, but again, nice to have at least. OK, fair enough. Can't argue with that. All right, so we got that. Let's see what else is going on in this old town. Ooh, Duford Hall seems important. Uh, all right, fuck this. Too many people in all here. All right, fuck me, I guess. We'll want to stop by again after we beat Norman to pick up a good TM, but until then, yeah, nothing too important in there. Jesus, this guy says, what if my rod hooks a big one while I'm in the washroom? Barack, all these fishermen are sus as shit. Remember that one in the SSN that says he likes feisty boys? They're really on some Joe shit, honestly. Donald, I know what you're talking about. I think that was a sailor, but I see what you're getting at. I feel like in these early Pokemon games, whoever is doing the translating to English likes to throw in some trolls every now and then just to have fun with it. I can't really blame them. Our editor probably does the same to us, honestly. 
Wait, what do you mean hey by Hey, guys, that I had a question for you both here. Of course, what's up, Joe? And this goes for the viewers, too, I guess. But I wanted to ask you guys in particular, what's your favorite overall generation of Pokemon? Oh, geez, that's a pretty loaded question. Hard to choose just one, but I think I would have to go with Gen 5. The story is immaculate. The evil team's intentions and inner struggles are executed incredibly well. And they really went all out to only have new Pokemon introduced in the series, which is cool because it's based on New York, which is all the way around the world from every other region we had up until that point. So it makes sense to have entirely new species. Lame answer, Barack. All right, well then, Donald, what's your favorite generation, huh? Not just my favorite, but objectively, the best generation has to be Generation 4. They have so many sick new Pokemon, including new evolutions of previous Pokemon that desperately needed it, like Weavile and Gliscor. The physical special split saved like half the Pokemon in existence. And the alternate dimension world in Platinum is one of the coolest areas in the Pokemon series. Ooh, Donald, hate to cut you off, but no need to repel here. Ooh, are you getting your encounter, Brock? I sure am, Joe. This is that surprise I said I had for you guys back in Rustboro at the beginning of this episode. Uh, Donald, I'll let you continue on Generation 4 after we take care of the encounter as we're traversing through the rest of the tunnel. Sounds good to me. Ooh, uh, Makuhita, is this your encounter? Holy shit, Brock? it's Donald in Pokemon form. Oh, uh, no, you can run from this, Donald, not my encounter. That thing sucks more wiener than Joey Chestnut. All right, first of all, Rude, Joey Chestnut is the goat of all goats. And secondly, Hariyama is actually really damn good. Its HP is massive, and it gets guts fighting attacks, which is really good in Huen, considering there's like a billion dark types. Barack, your encounter better not be a frickin' Sableye. Those things creep me the fuck out. Sableye is actually really good in this generation. It can solo Brawly all by itself without even needing to train it. Dark Ghost is a phenomenal typing with no weaknesses until Fairy in Generation 6. But no, that's not my encounter, Joe. All right, well, that really doesn't leave too many Gen 3 Pokemon left. I'm guessing it has to be the tanky little there guy. There Ooh, of course it's Aaron. Great choice, Barack. This will fill a much-needed defensive presence. We are severely lacking right now. My thoughts, exactly. This will completely trivialize any of those pesky, normal, or flying types we come across in the game. It's also not a bad counter to the dark types, because Steel still resists dark in this game. It has uber-high defenses and can also hit pretty hard on the physical side. Also, Agron is a literal beast. Even if you don't know anything about Pokemon, you would think Agron is a goddamn legendary. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Pokemon Master Donald, you gonna catch this son of a bitch or what? Joe, shut your ancient mouth up, please. I'm just weakening it safely. I don't wanna accidentally kill it, but fine, I'll just start throwing balls at it to make you happy. Barack, you want this in a poke ball or a great ball? Just a poke ball, Donald, thanks for asking. I prefer the OG design of the regular one. All right, they call me One Ball DT. Watch this shit. Flag on ripoff. Boom, baby. That's Easy what money. I'm talking about. This guy's going to be such a beast for us, and he's so goddamn cute right now. Yeah, Steel is pretty broken in these early generations. Yeah, as long as we don't have him in against fighting or ground types, we're fine. All right, Barack, what are you naming this guy? All right, well, what I have is a very fitting name for an Agron in general, but it's also something of a tribute to a certain group of five individuals that lost their life recently. I want to name this guy Titan. Oh boy, Barack, I'm not sure if our viewers are mature enough for that one. Might be a little too soon, and the memes still hit pretty hard. Donald, if you actually laugh at Titan memes, you are a despicable human being. Those were real people with families, Donald. What can I say, Joe? The internet is an undefeated place. Let's see his nature. Naive. Ooh. Yeah, I hate to say it, but the jokes just write themselves on this one, boys. Naive is plus speed and minus special defense. Might as well be neutral. We don't really care about either of those stats. Now, Donald, I'm serious. You're going to have to cool it with joking about the Titan. That's too far. Oh, off. Joe, don't give me that. You love that the media focused on the Titan at that time, considering the impeachment vote for you went right over everyone's head. No one even fucking knew about Shut that. Shut your trap, Donald. That's not even true. What is true is that you're going to jail soon, so you better hurry up and get through this cave before it's too Joe, late. Joe, you know damn well I'm not going to jail anytime soon. I'd never allow that. Oh, but that. you should be, bitch. All right, boys, let's continue this off screen. Donald, just get your way through this cave. Can you finish up what you were saying about Generation 4, please? 
Saved by Barack yet again, Joe. Bite me. Anyway, sure, Barack, as I said, new evolutions, physical special split, and the distortion world are all a good enough argument itself. But throw in the best champion of all time, Cynthia, and you just have an absolute beast of a generation. Also, Cyrus is actually a competent villain with a heinous mindset. His team is actually good, unlike every iteration of Giovanni with Team Rocket. Also, fuck this Everstone. I'm throwing this shit away well, right why now. Why, Donald, just hold it. We can sell it. Mm, nah, fuck that. No one should have to hold on to this garbage ever unless you're cheating with rare candies and need to level something up a bunch to get a move before evolving. Other than that, inexcusable. Donald, you are incredulous. Anyway, you guys make some good points for generations four and five, but for me, generation two will always have my heart. Viewers, let us know in the comments what your favorite generation is and why. Well, Barack, the fact that Joe actually likes Generation 2 makes me respect your opinion on Generation 5 a little bit more. Anyway, here we are with this crack rock addict guy. Donald, I know you know that's Stephen Stone. Also, what the hell are you doing? Just talk to him already. Hop off. I was checking for hidden items. Anyway, here's your letter. Thanks for waiting for me in the deepest part of the cave, dickhead. <laughs> If only this were Omega Ruby, where he's just right at the beginning for us. What a goddamn easy game that was. I can't believe they just gave you a Mega Latios for no reason. Fax Generation 6 was a goddamn joke. Broken experience share and a free Mega Lucario in X and Y, and then a free Mega Lati in Oris. Viewers, if that was your favorite generation, better have a damn good reason. All right, I think I'm gonna end off the video here in front of the gym. We'll pick it up next time by beating Broly and then probably taking care of the Slayport business. What's up, everyone? We're back at it with episode four. Last time, Donald got us to Duford and talked to Stephen in Granite Cave. This time, I'm going to go ahead and take on the gym. I should also have time to take care of some things in Slateport. Should be a good one today. Hell yeah, it'll be a good one. We're about to wipe the floor with Brawley. We styled on Roxanne. This one should be no different. Sounds like we're feeling it today, boys. You got to love to see it. How could we not be feeling it? Did you see how many frickin' comments we got in the last episode that was sick? Big facts, DT, real quick, before the gym, I gotta take care of something. Yeah, so since we delivered that letter to Steven, we can go ahead and grab the experience share from Joe over here. Ooh, ooh, I'm glad you guys are finally respecting the authority that is my presidency. I'm not even gonna warrant that with a response because hopefully we never see this guy again. Just take us back to Duford, please, Obama. Sure thing, Donald. All right, experience share on Titan. We'll meet back with you guys in just a second. A heart so true! Joe, kindly fuck Our off. courage will pull us through. Jesus, all right, seriously, Joe, we're back on camera. You can stop singing now, please. Oh, chill out, boys. I know you liked it. No, Joe, I did not like it at all. I just had to take a boat from Petalburg all the way to Duford while listening to your raspy-ass, geriatric-ass, ugly-ass, yeah, liberal-ass sing the Pokemon theme song the whole way. And? That was about to be my goddamn 13th reason. Donald, chill. Donald, why can't you just live in the moment? Why do you always have to be a buzzkill? Joe, you giving me tinnitus is not equivalent to me living in the moment, you blockhead. All right, all right. It's honestly getting old that I have to mediate between you two every time we get on together. But I'm certainly not surprised. I think everyone remembers the so-called debates you two had together on TV. Oh, come on, Obama. Stop taking everything so seriously and just focus on killing the meta titties in front of you. Meta titties? Joe, you dyslexic fuck. Those are metatites, not metatitties. Metatites, metatitties, garlic face, who cares? Just keep it up, Barack. Uh, whatever, Joe. By the way, real quick, we're not gonna need it this gym, but I'm gonna teach our TMs to our Pokemon here. Taylor can have Steel Wing, and Aaron deserves Rock Tomb. Steel Wing is a great move for Taylor to have since it covers his rock weakness, and Rock Tomb is solid early game stab for Aaron. Good thinking, Obama. Sometimes it's good to hold on to TMs, but I can't argue with getting these ones on immediately. Makes sense to me. Okay, so Obama, you're gonna storm through this gym with Mango, I imagine. Is that your plan for Brawly too? Well, I'll see how far Mango can take us in the actual gym battle fight. He probably won't be able to one-shot everyone, so we'll just have to see. I imagine Sky can handle his own against any one of his team members too. I'm oh shit, there's the metal garlic titties again. Joe, if you say the phrase meta titties against the gym leader, I'm leaving the call. Somehow you're getting on my nerves more than usual today. Okay, okay, Joe, I expect you to handle yourself. When we see Brawly's meta tight, anyway, let's just change the subject. Did you guys know that despite how abundant these little guys are, they're actually unobtainable in Emerald for some reason? 
I don't believe that, Barack. That doesn't make any sense. Wait, well, yeah, me neither, Obama. I swear, we see these guys like everywhere from now up to Victory Road. We certainly do, Donald, but never in the wild. There's tons of trainers with these guys, but I have no idea where they got them. They're available in Ruby and Sapphire in Mount Pyre, but can't be found anywhere in this game, I promise. Damn, that's actually wild that they would do that. That's not the only one they decided to just take away in Emerald 2. I know Zangoos is unavailable, probably some others. Joe, of course, your furry ass would know that Zangoos is unavailable. Screw you, Donald. Zangoose is fun as hell and has the coolest shiny of all Pokemon. Honestly, that's pretty based. But Joe. yeah, Emerald took away a handful of Pokemon for no good reason. Zangoose met a tight, apparently, and then Rosalia is a big one, too. Like, why the hell can't you get a Rosalia? Yeah, Rosalia doesn't make any sense either. I think Lunatone can't be found either. Nintendo kind of screwed us over in Emerald and Crystal by having these so-called upgrades, but actually just taking away a handful of favorite Pokemon. Crystal especially always pissed me off because the one staple on everyone's Gen 2 team, Ampharos, was just removed from the game. Are you serious? You can't even get an Ampharos and Crystal? Jesus, Gen 2 just keeps getting worse and worse the more I learn about it. Both of you, especially you, Donald, need to stop shitting on Generation 2. Crystal has some actually sick Pokemon introduced like Crobat, Scizor, Tyranitar, Houndoom, and so many more. It's also the only generation where you can actually go through multiple regions, adding that much more gameplay for you. And then to top it off, it has the sickest final boss of all Pokemon, with the protagonist from the original game waiting for you at the top of a mountain peak. Clearly, you two didn't bother to read all the comments on our last video. Not a bad take, Joe. I'm impressed. Okay, truthfully, Joe, I've never actually even played through Generation 2. I just know it's shit. Donald, are you joking? And so I project by expressing my opinion on the objectively bad parts about okay, it. Okay, that's unacceptable, Donald. You've been shitting on Generation 2 ever since Episode 1, and you even made me admit on its faults, and you've never even actually played it. What the hell, man? Honestly, maybe that's a good thing Donald hasn't played it. Maybe that will be the next game we play if we get to it, but... Let's talk about that later. It's gym battle time, boys. I'm gonna give Aaron the quick claw, just, just in case we need him for any reason he can come in and get a hit off, maybe. Okay, good thinking, Barack. Let's do this shit. All right, fine. We're addressing this Generation 2 thing again, the future, though, boys. Good luck, Barack. All right, so if I remember correctly, he's gonna lead with a matchup who we can just beat with wing attack. We might be in trouble if he lives and crits the karate chop in return, though. Don't speak it into existence, Barack. There's no need to worry. Mango is our Lord and Savior, and he will prove it to us here like he did against ah, the Roxanne. Dumbass just went for bulk up. That's an easy kill. It sure is, Joe. Next should be the Metatite, which we can probably just do the same kind of thing for. So far, this is looking like an easy sweep, boys. I have a feeling we may even be able to get our other team members in here to grab some experience. Maybe Donald, but let's just deal with what's in front of us here. Oh, Jesus, what is he doing? He's warming up a slow focus punch. This guy is actually a non-threat. Ooh, as as so close, Mango. He's going to heal now. Maybe the next one will be a higher roll. As I was saying, this guy can't actually touch us as long as we use an attacking move. The only threat this guy has is his ace. Okay, come on, Mango. Ah, so close. Shit, is he just going to heal him again? Yep, another heal incoming, which is fine, because now he's wasted both of his super potions. Okay, 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 I have an idea then, Barack. Don't attack with Mango. Wait, what? The Metatite is in range to die from a headbutt from Aaron, who should be able to switch in just fine thanks to his ability. Donald, I feel like you're overcomplicating things again. We can just stay in and kill him here, no problem. What do you mean again, Obama? If I remember correctly, last time was the sickest gym battle of all time. Truth. You better believe this one's gonna be even cooler when our underleveled four times weak to fighting little Titan takes out the meta type. All right, fine, but if he dies, it's your fault. Hey guys, how's the run going so far? Who the hell is this Discord Holy shit, moderator? Pokemon challenges, what are you doing here? Wait, what the fuck? Why are you switching out on meta type? Into an Aaron. Who is playing Janet, right now? Chill the fuck out. We will live on one and kill it back. Oh, really, Donald? No, Titan! What the hell? I thought it had Sturdy. Jesus Christ! Trump, you damn mouth breather! Jesus, calm down. Sturdy doesn't fucking work like that in Generation 3. Okay, Jan, honestly, I should have known better than to listen to Trump. We should have just stayed in with Mango. Well, if you ask me, it was a good plan. Thank Aaron you, was Joe. even holding the Quick Claw so it could live and outspeed and kill the Oh meditators. my god, oh, okay, yeah, the Quick Claw that would have fucking done what it. What the hell is your problem, man? And on top of all that,
You know you could have just pre-poisoned this Talo and swept the whole thing with its guts ability, right? Oh shit, I totally forgot about guts. Honestly, you guys are all idiots, and there's no way you are going to beat this game. Hey, fuck you, My man. name is Pokemon Challenges. I'm probably the best ball shaver in the world. Excuse me, what? Sub to my channel. Fuck all of you. Who the hell does that guy think he is joining the call and just going off like that? That was Pokemon Challenges. Well, yeah, I heard that. A YouTuber part. who's made a name for himself doing incredibly difficult Nuzlocke runs of Pokemon games. Well, and shaving his balls, apparently. Nowadays, he just kind of feeds off other people's content by reacting to them and pawning it off as him spreading his I wisdom. I used to like him, but now he seems like a complete tool. Oh, shit, tool. we're in trouble, boys. Also, viewers, that was not me Holy shitting shit, on the president. Holy shit, get out of here, bozo. Um, oh, yeah, It was right, simply yeah. me educating you all on what not to do in your Pokemon runs. Jesus Christ, okay, I'm sorry guys that I threw with that whole sturdy thing. I didn't know it didn't work like that in this game, won't happen again. It's fine, Donald, I understand your intention was to just spread the experience. Thanks, Obama. Thankfully, Sky was able to come in before it was too late to clean up the mess. Uh, guys, would it be a bad time to tell you all that Aaron doesn't even have sturdy? Ours has Rockhead. Oh, Jesus, thank God Jan isn't here to hear that. Okay, well, Rockhead is a better ability in this game anyway, so let's not worry about it. Regardless of what just happened over the past couple minutes, things could have been worse. We beat Brawly on our first try, and that's all I care about. Damn straight, Barack. Good shit getting us through that. But also about that whole guts Talo thing. That was another big reason why I picked up Mango in the first place. But when we first caught it, I got so carried away in my patriotism and love for this country and Super Smash Brothers Melee, of Damn course, straight. that I totally forgot about it. We will definitely be using it in the future, though. That sounds good to me, Donald. And yeah, good stuff, Obama. You handled that gym well despite the mishaps. At least it was entertaining. It's a good start to the episode, if you ask me. Thanks, boys. I appreciate the support. It seems like we've kind of created a bond out of all mutually hating Pokemon challenges for coming in here and shitting on us. All right, party is healed. Let's move on, shall we? Sounds good to me, boys. Now, can we get the hell out of this barren-ass town? They don't even have a Pokemart, and the lighting in their gym is atrocious. It makes me feel poor. For once, I'm going to agree with you, Donald. Well, for the most part, at least. I'm getting tired of this place, and I actually have my own surprise waiting for you guys when we get to sleep. Oh, hell yeah, Joe. Are you getting your encounter already? Joe, you better not be getting what I think you're getting. <laughs> well, boys, you'll just have to see. Oh, Jesus Christ, Joe. Uh, okay, well, I have no clue what you are referencing, Donald, but Joe, I know there are a couple decent possibilities in the upcoming routes. I can only hope you go with one of those. Anyway, the experience share is going back on Aaron for now, and I'm gonna grab the soft sand item here real quick. Okay, so you're telling me you just go up to this child and she gives you a handful of sand from the beach we're literally standing on right now? Yeah, Barack, that makes no sense. Why don't you just pick up some sand for yourself? Hop off, you two. I didn't make the game. The soft sand is a very good item as it boosts the damage done by ground type attacks by 10%. That could be very helpful against our next gym battle as that will be an especially difficult one. Anyway, I'm gonna take care of some stuff in the Poke Mart real quick. Ooh, Brock, can you make sure to buy 10 Poke Balls so we can get a Premier Ball? I want my encounter in the Premier Ball for it is a Premier Pokemon. Damn it, Joe, you're so wasteful of resources. Not that I didn't already know that, of course. I can do that for you, Joe. I feel like you are entitled to that much, at least. I also need to make sure to grab a Harbor Mail, as we will need it for something when we get up to Mauville. Oh, shit, good thinking, Barack. I never remember to grab the Harbor Mail. Okay, great, now that that's taken care of, go ahead and go up to the grass above us, Barack. It's encounter time, baby. Joe, I swear to God, if you actually grab the shit Pokemon just for the memes associated with it, I'm gonna flip. Donald, just quit your bitching. It's my encounter and I'm gonna get whatever I wanna get, okay? Okay, guys, I can't take it anymore. Can one of you please just tell me what you're talking about and why you're so apprehensive for it, Donald? Aha, gulping these nuts, Barack. Oh my God. I fucking knew it, Joe, you child. All right, calm down, calm down. It's not actually my encounter. You can run, Barack. Oh, thank Shout God. out to this dude for being the only one to suggest this beast of an encounter, though. Okay, well, I think I know what you're looking for then, Joe. Yeah, I'm sure it's obvious now. And, ooh, hell yeah, there she is, boys. Nice, good choice, Joe. An electric type is great to have in this game. For sure is, Donald. The late game is absolutely inundated with water type trainers, so having both an electric type and a grass type is a smart move. How inundated good one, Obama. My thoughts exactly, Barack. Okay, so Joe, do you know what you're planning on nicknaming her? 
Well, yes, I do, Donald. You guys know how Ruby is one of my favorite Pokemon Oh, games, come right? on, that's so basic, Joe. Hold on, Donald, it's his Pokemon, be fair. Yeah, little D, just give me a second. Fine, just don't call me that. Okay, so on top of Ruby being one of my favorite Pokemon games, there was also this very loving dog in my life that I've known for the past six or seven years. She had an absolutely electric personality, so it makes sense to name this electric after her. Her name was Ruby, and she sadly passed away just a few weeks ago. Oh, Joe, I'm so sorry to hear that. My condolences to you and other loved ones of Ruby. This is an excellent tribute to her, Joe. Yeah, Joe, I apologize as well, mainly for calling the name basic. Oh, seven's in the chat for Ruby, guys. We can have the editor post a picture of Ruby here to commemorate her if you'd like, Joe. Yeah, let's do that. Just a quick little tribute to her would be nice. That sounds good. I would like that. Good idea, Donald. Thank you both for your kind words. I'm sure Electric here will do her justice. But honestly, we can move on from that for now. I'd rather not get too tied up in that right now. Let's just go ahead and take a look at her stats, Obama. Okay, Joe, let's do that. Do you think any nature would be a best fit for her off the top of your head? Hmm, of all the natures, I would guess either hardy or gentle. All right, well, let's see if you're right, Joe. Timid. If I remember correctly, that's the same as Skies, right? Plus speed and minus attack? That's correct. Similar story, where it might as well be neutral because Manectric is already just a fast special attacker. Well, I wouldn't exactly classify Ruby as timid, but that's not a bad nature stat-wise for her. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and just heal the team up real quick and then go take care of this Devon Goods and Team Aqua Museum invasion stuff. That should carry me through to the end of the episode, I imagine. Sounds like a plan, and more importantly, guys, we just filled out the first four Pokemon of our team. You know what that means, right? Damn straight, Donald. It's time for us to figure out who else is going to be making the cut. God, I absolutely hate when we just get random calls from people I simply do not care about. Shut up, Barack. She probably just thought I was playing, not you. But don't worry, I'll call her back next episode when it's my turn. Jesus, all right, you cringe lords, yes. It's time for us to figure out how we are going to round out the team. There's a very clear hole that needs to be filled right now, if you ask me. And that is the fact that we are missing a water type. That's a good point, Donald. We definitely want to have a water type that can service our team. Any suggestions, guys? Melodic. Whizcash. Joe, you derpy ass would want a Whizcash. Oh, bite me. There's no way we're getting a Melodic, Donald. Okay, well, I was thinking Sharpedo or Whale Lord would be nice. So let's talk about it, I guess. For now, this is that one grunt we've beat up a couple times. If I talk to him now, he'll give me the Thief TM. Pair that with a lead Nincada with compound eyes, and we can get some pretty neat held items off wild Pokemon in the future. Guys, it sounds like we all have different ideas for a possible water type to add all to right. the team. All right, fuck me, I guess. There's Melodic Whizcash, Whale Lord Sharpedo, and even some other possibilities down the line, like Walrein or the underwater ones. Yeah, either way, we can't actually get any Generation 3 water types until after the fifth gym when we get access to Surf and the Good Rod? Well, technically, there's Mudkip and Wingull, but Wingull sucks ass. I don't want to use it. Fair enough, Obama. Let's just all think about it more and come back next episode with some ideas. How about we all pick our top two or three choices and reconvene next episode? Maybe we will all have one in common, and we can just go with that. Fine by me, Joe. That's actually a pretty fair idea. Maybe we can even have some people in the comments express their opinion on which water type we should use and why. You boys are cooking. Let's all come back next episode with some idea. And viewers, go ahead and comment what water type you think we should pick up. Maybe that will help us get an informed decision on which one to get. Remember, some Pokemon are available way too late in the game, and we will probably steer away from them. For now, let's see if Titan can't finish off this guy here. He shouldn't have any water moves yet. Sick, yeah, let's get back to the gameplay. That's a good idea, Barack. Now that we only recently added two new guys to our team, clearly they need some additional training. Oh, God damn it! of course he flinched me turn one. Yeah, Titan and Ruby are severely under-leveled as of now. I think we should train them up off screen as to not bore our viewers too much. Yeah, that's fine. Just upload the save file when we're done here, Barack, and I'll take care of it. I will record the gameplay of me training them up down by the beach and in that soda pop shack. Then we can just show that in super speed in the beginning of the next episode or something. Ooh, that's smart, Joe. We can even just overlay it in the corner of the screen at like eight times speed or something while we go through the story towards Mauville. 
Speaking of going towards Mallville, Joe, you're probably going to be ending off next episode with the Watson fight, something none of us wanted to see happen. Well, first of all, fuck you, Donald. Okay, and secondly, the past couple gym battles have pretty much been a complete team effort anyway. I'm sure that's not going to change, especially if this battle is going to be as difficult as you guys say it will be. I'll make sure to just take it slow and talk it through with you guys. All right, well, we'll just have to see what happens. Also, hell yeah, Ruby, let's see what you got. No electric moves yet, but tackle should do it just fine. Oh, come on, Ooh, girl. maybe not. Yikes, first time in battle, and she misses a 95% accurate move and then gets confused by like a 50% accurate move. Feels bad, man. Yeah, really blowing it in her debut appearance here. Yeah, well, she still clutched up for us after all, so she's still goaded. Jesus, that's like no experience. Barack, do you know when she's going to get an electric type attack we can use? I believe she gets spark at level 20, which is actually really good for how early it is. Then we can get Thunderbolt for free right after we beat the fifth gym. All right, that's not too bad. In fact, that's the same time we can go and get Ice Beam for free, too. So if we have our water type decided by then, we can have super powerful surfs, thunderbolts, and ice beams on our Pokemon really early. So sick our team is already really starting to shape up, especially by the start of next episode when everything's gonna be higher level. Okay, so that's the last fight for the day. I'm gonna just get us back outside the museum here so I can save at a reasonable location. I think we get to meet Archie for the first time right now too though. Yep, like clockwork, there he is. Okay, is it just me, or does it look like his whole chest is exposed right now? Nope, I see it too. And look at this shit, he calls his grunts a couple of simps. I never noticed this before. All right, I've seen more than enough. This guy is a total weirdo on par with Sleepy Joe over here. I bet he sings sea shanties at the same pitch that Joe sings his shitty Pokemon theme songs. Donald ain't no way your uncultured ass just called the original Pokemon theme song a shitty theme song. You are unfathomable. Okay, Joe, I'm sorry. Oh, didn't expect that. Donald, apology accepted, I guess. That you are completely delirious. Okay, here the we go. The first Pokemon theme song offers nothing but nostalgia. Nothing but nostalgia? Are you insane? It isn't catchy. It isn't, isn't unique catchy? to its region. And it's just a bunch of screaming over and over again. If it came out today, no one would bat an eye. It isn't a good song. Donald, you are glazing harder than a Krispy Kreme on a Sunday morning. Oh, you can glaze on these nuts, Joe, you goddamn quack oh, sire. Oh, sure, Donnie, whatever you say, your words can't hurt me. Especially since you'll be locked up in a prison cell by next week, you whatever, scoundrel. Whatever, Joe, you know that's not true. Better believe it, Don Dozo. Oh, wow, I had no idea. Joe, honestly, I feel bad for you. You admitted to being 103 years old a couple weeks ago, and the feds Ooh, recently found coke and the devil's lettuce in the White House. Clearly, you're going through a lot, so oh, well, I I'm just going to let your stupidity slide for the rest of this episode, OK? Whatever, Donald, I'm glad you got all that glazing off your chest. Gross, Joe. And holy Fuck shit, you. what does the night man want from us this time? I don't know, and I don't care. I'm not even going to ask you two to apologize to each other this time. I'm just going to end the goddamn episode. Joe, I hope you train up the team before we hop on together next time. I will. And Donald, I hope you will be appreciative of it. I'll try to be. Both of you just make sure to think about multiple different water types you might want to add to the team. All right, fine. All right, fine. That out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and call it a day. All right, hold on, let's get this sheet. Top of the moaning, top uh, of the Joe? moaning, top of the moaning, top of the moaning, top of the moaning. Joe, can you please just let a normal intro happen for once? Uh, hey, Donald, guess what? What, Joe? Top of the moaning, top of the moaning, top of the moaning. Jesus, okay, fine, I'll do the intro for you then, Joe. Thank you, Barack. Welcome, everyone, to episode five of the President's Play Pokemon Emerald series. Last time, we beat Brawly and took care of the Team Aqua stuff in Slateport. This time, we will be making our way to Mauville City. Unfortunately, I highly doubt we will get all the way to the Watson fight. He's a bit further down the line than anticipated, but I'm guessing we will be able to start off next episode by battling him. Joe, can you explain what you did off screen, please? Yeah, so I went down and battled all the trainers on the beach and in that soda shack. Then I came up here and battled all the people in this route to our left. That's it. Nice. Thank you for doing that, Joe. Our team desperately needed some levels. So I'm guessing we can just go right ahead into this house then? I don't know, guys. The sign says the wondrous trick house. That seems super sketch to me. Well, let's just see what it is, Joe. All right, well, fuck that. I'm out of here. Pussy. No, Joe, go back in there. Yeah, come on, Joe. It looked interesting. It literally said, I'm being watched. Donald, that is not interesting at all. That is scary. You have zero survival instincts. 
Joe, for God's sake, it's a freaking children's game. I think we will be okay. Okay, fine, but what the hell do I do then? Holy shit! I have no survival instincts. Joe, you are literally blind. It should be obvious to any six-year-old what you need to do right now. Joe, just click on that coffee mug. Oh, wow, how did you know to do that, Barack? Jesus, yeah, I hate to say it, guys, but there's no way Joe is getting us all the way to the gym battle. Pop off. But that's actually a blessing in disguise, because that just means I get to fight him myself. Holy shit, did you guys see that? Yeah, Joe, they decided to just give this guy the power of teleportation. It's not worth asking questions about it. Also, Donald, I know you're clearly just being an ass about it, but I agree it's probably a good thing if you take on the gym next episode, because you haven't gotten a chance to battle one yet. So I'll just do everything we can do before fighting it. Wow, Joe, you went ahead and trained up our team before this episode, and now you're going to spend the majority of this episode just training it up more in preparation for next time. That's pretty noble of you. What can I say? This is a team effort, especially if we're planning on taking this through to the end. Good on you, Joe. Speaking of team effort, did you guys do any more thinking about a possible water type we should add to the team down the line? Yeah, so first off, thank you, viewers, for inputting your opinions about who we should add. My first option is still the melodic. Oh, here we go. It is undeniably the best water type in this game with insane bulk, but also very good special attack, which is exactly what we need, as it will be spamming Surf and Ice Beam. It also gets access to recovery moves, which is huge since we are doing a no items in battle run. Donald, if you want to get a damn Feebass off screen on your own time, I won't stop you. But I certainly will not be suffering on the call with you. One other thing that one genius viewer pointed out is how we can enter Feebass in a beauty contest in Lily Cove City. How fucking hype would it be if we can get our beloved Feebass to win a beauty contest? Okay, Donald, I can't lie, that would be hilarious. And it would certainly cause for some entertainment because I sure as hell don't know how the contest halls work. And I know for sure you guys don't either. But besides melodic, do you have a backup as your next best option? Well, if not melodic, then I would probably have to go with Sharpedo. Good choice. Its stat spread isn't ideal for a Generation 3 water type, but it has very respectable special attack with great speed. It also has super high attack, although most of his moves will have to be special. It also has the dark typing, which we are missing, and is very useful throughout the late game. All great points, Donald. I'm glad you clearly thought this one through. I have my opinions as well, but Joe, would you like to go first? Sure, yeah. It looks like I'm just spamming A for the next minute anyway, so I still think Wiz Cash is our best option. The water ground typing is phenomenal, as illustrated by how broken of a Pokemon Swampert is. It, it also never gets any love. I have personally never used him in a Pokemon run, but come on, look how sweet he is. We also had a lot of great nickname ideas for him in the comments, and I would love to honor those people who respect young Wizzy. Joe, Wizcash is shit. We're not using No, one. you are shit, Donald. Wizcash gets Earthquake naturally at a decently early level and also can be our Surf and Ice Beam Pokemon. Oh, yeah, that base, like, 75 attack, and special attack is really going to just plow through anyone in our way. Isn't okay, 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 guys. Wizcash is underwhelming in terms of attack power, I agree, but it makes up for it with its above-average bulk and incredible typing. Joe, anyone else you have in mind besides Wizzy? Well, personally, I really like using Walrein. It hits really hard and is super tanky. The Ice type is also super powerful and can be our best option against the Dragon Dude in the Elite Four. That being said, I think Walrein has a similar problem as Milotic in terms of overall practicality. It's just available way too late in the game. Okay, well, let me just say I'm very glad with the options you guys have chosen as your two preferred water types. They match up well with my two. I agree that Milotic and Walrein are not the most practical to use in this playthrough, but the other two are both good options. My two preferred Pokemon are Wiz Cash and Sharpedo. Oh, geez. Well, how are we going to decide between those two then? Because obviously I want the Sharpedo and Joe wants the Wiz Cash. To be completely honest, Donald, I'm not entirely sure. What the hell is this? I need a secret code to open a door? Yeah, just look around for a minute. You'll find it on the floor. Yeah, I think I see it. Anyway, yeah, I really don't want to be the one to decide on it. Plus, I don't really care. I'm cool with either. I think they both fill great roles on our team. We'll come back to it because it should take us like three or four more episodes before we can get one anyway. All right, that's fine with me. Joe, we're gonna have to come back to it, but I'm warning you, I'm gonna be pretty stubborn about this because Wiz Cash licks ass. Bars. Whatever, Donald, also, I'm guessing this is your mail, so I won't open it. I'll just <laughs> leave it in the bag. Good one, Joe. I'm orange, very clever. 
Have you figured out how to get past level one of the puzzle game in this children's game yet? I'm sure the viewers are on their toes waiting to see if you can do it. Yeah, I didn't know I was looking for an actual script here. All right, well, that shit took like four minutes. I hope the editor didn't make the viewers watch that. Nah, we got too much shit to get through today, Joe. Viewers, we're gonna be editing through a good handful of battles today just to make sure we can progress the story decently. Let us know in the comments if you are okay with that or if you would prefer if we would slow things down in the future. All right, creep. We made it through your trick house now. Please disband this corrupt facility or I will personally call in the special forces to take it down. Ooh, a piece of candy. Never mind, good sir. You have a nice day and best of luck with your business. Joe, you ADHD fuck. Just get us out of the trick house already. We haven't made any actual progress in the story today. Okay, Donald. First of all, I spent like 20 minutes training up our team before you guys got on the call today. And I'm the only one here that didn't want to go into the trick house in the first place. So don't give me that shit. All right, all right. You know what, Joe? For once you have a point, my bad. It's all good, DT. All right, the team is healed up. Time to continue on. Looks like we got a quick trainer battle to take care of here. I got to say, for such a tiny little Pokemon, Titan is really handing it to these guys. Yeah, well, he undeniably has the best moveset of everyone on our team with decent stab moves as well as ground coverage and a strong normal type attack. Also, a steel type with high defense is incredibly broken early game. A lot of the Pokemon we come across are still just spamming physical normal moves. It would be great if that ground coverage you're talking about was actually a decent move though. Mud slap is like the worst ground move in the game. Yeah, even a four times weak crit couldn't kill. That's crazy. I also even put the soft sand on him back in the Pokemon Center. A four times super effective held item boosted critical hit failed to kill. I don't think we will ever see that one again in our lives, boys. Regardless, it will be nice to have against Watson's Magneton, who I would argue is his most threatening Pokemon. Okay, you guys keep talking about Watson. Why exactly are we so scared of him? I remember the third gym actually being pretty easy in Ruby. What am I missing here? Well, Joe, many would claim that Watson is a bit of a pushover if you have the right Pokemon, but a complete wall if you don't. If you pick Torchic or Mudkip, it would be a breeze. But because we don't have anything like that or anyone that can do a lot of damage, his Pokemon can downright mollywop us. Okay, gross. Why would you say it like that? All that is true, but also, Joe, Watson's team is much different in Emerald than it is in Ruby and Sapphire. In Ruby and Sapphire, he only has three Pokemon with his only threat being the Magneton. But in Emerald, he has four, including both his Magneton and Manectric being able to do a lot of damage. He also has an exploding Voltorb that can take out a key member of the team if we aren't careful. Hmm, all right. I guess it was easy in the past because I usually had a Marsh Tomp or a Cumbuskin to deal with the Magneton pretty easily. So I guess that makes sense. Yeah, all that being said, we need not to worry because I will be handling him myself. Uh, Donald, you got your ass torn apart last episode by Pokemon challenges because of your apparent lack of Pokemon knowledge. Against one of the easiest gym leaders, might I add. Oh, lick my nuts, Barack. I only no. had you switch to Titan so we could get some experience. If this were at all serious, obviously, I would never have done that in the first place. Oh, Donald, just have some humility for once and lose your pride. You totally goofed on how sturdy works. I tried defending you during the time because that Janet guy seemed like a prick, but now I don't care about being on your side. Oh, whatever, Joe. It's a good thing you healed up our Pokemon because I know for a fact you're gonna cream your pants in like two seconds. What do you mean by the, uh, uh, Joe, just calm down? Uh, I fucking told you. Why was there no warning? You aren't supposed to need a warning for a 10-year-old girl, Joe. Oh, boys, I don't think I can do it. Just walk up to her, Joe. What are you fucking Italian now, Joe? Just put it in your pants and pretend it's a normal Pokemon battle, for God's sake. Uh, easier said than done, Donald. No, it's really not. Oh, mama mia. No way you just said All that. All right, Joe, I don't really know what to say anymore, but I feel like this is one of those sort of situations where if I just kind of start to ignore it, maybe it'll slowly dissipate over time. I may be flustered, but at the end of the day, I'm still a goddamn Pokemon master. Oh, okay, never mind, I guess. This battle shouldn't be too difficult, all things considered. Halo is absolutely crucial, though, so don't hard switch into it if you don't have to. Isn't this supposed to be like one of the hardest fights in the game by some metric Barack? Yeah, well, technically, in the speed runs of Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald, this fight is arguably the hardest fight in the game. What the hell? Why? It's a wingo. Well, in the speed run, you always choose Mudkip. So you have to lead with your Marsh Stomp here and set it up with X items. 
If the wing gull confuses you or growls you during your multiple turn setup, you pretty much have to restart. And then the grovile can still mess you up. It's just an unforgiving fight all around. The popular speedrunner Worcester calls it the hardest fight in any Pokemon speedrun. Okay, Barack, calm down. You're seriously boring the viewers. But don't worry, I'll get the retention rate back up with this sick gameplay. Watch this shit. Damn, Joe, you're really just gonna sack off Ruby like that? That's cold as shit. Bitch, who said anything about sacking? This is what I call a pro gamer move. Suck on this, Pokemon challenge. Oh shit, that's No hype. way, Joe, that was actually so five head of you. All right, and now I'll switch into Mango and kill it with oh, Wing and What? The no, throw. Joe, that was a terrible mistake. Calm down, calm down, Mango will be fine. See, what did I say? Jesus, Joe, no, that was incredibly lucky. If it broke through and got a double kick off, it could have easily killed us since we are so incredibly frail and we have no one else that can do much damage to oh this Oh my thing. God, Mango is so busted. You guys keep talking about speed run this, speed run that. This fight is so hard, wah, wah, wah. But if I remember correctly, Donald, you lost a Pokemon to May last time, and I am coming out here flawless. Joe, you got unbelievably That's lucky. That's why May will only ever like me, as I am the only true Pokemon master in this call. Joe, I can't believe that you actually just turned a fight of you getting insanely lucky and utilizing undeniable plot armor from Mango into an argument of how May will choose to like you more than she will like us. You are an idiot. Damn, Joe, it really be your own people. How does that make you feel? I don't know, Donald, as I wouldn't exactly call Barack one of my own people. Joe, you mother. Ooh. All right, you know what? That's fine. I went off on you. Aw. And in return, I can tolerate a possibly racist comment this time around. Good job defeating May, Joseph. Can't say I'm not disappointed, Barack. I was about to go tell Melania to heat up some popcorn and turn on the speakers. Ooh, a gift for me. You shouldn't have May. I'm sorry I'm empty-handed, love. I never actually use the item finder that much. It's cool in like Gen 4 and stuff when you can just have it on perpetually on the bottom screen, but in Gen 3, I hate having to pull it out and actually trace the steps mm, and all that shit. Now. Joe, do not. Never seems worth it for like a great ball or whatever is hidden. I may I miss you. That's it, where's my gun? I swear, sometimes I feel like I'm just talking to a brick wall. Honestly, that was super helpful. We need to find the, uh... Wait, hold on, I forgot. Oh my God, Joe, the rock smash, dude. We need to find the rock smash, dude. Speaking of rocks, what is going on with some of the contacts in here? Hard as rock? Yeah, these are dumb as hell. Why is dad the reliable one? He literally disappeared from town and didn't even help his wife and 10-year-old child move into a new home. Joe, please just hang up the phone with the crack addict, please. Nothing good will come out of that. We need to just move on with the story. We have a lot of training ahead of us. Honestly, he also gave some good information about the different bikes and stuff. Yeah, except Joe, we know all of that. And so do like 99% of the viewers. So we don't need to call every person in our contact list for the smallest tidbit of information that we already know between the three of us. All right, well, Barack, fine. I won't call people anymore, but I have a feeling this is gonna be like the Johto games where someone is gonna be calling us all the time. Yet another downfall of generation two, the constant spamming on the phone. Like, I don't need Hiker Anthony calling me every 45 seconds to tell me that there's a bunch of Dunsparce fucking in a tunnel somewhere. Okay, well, first of all, Donald, I don't see how you won't appreciate that information. I'm sure you don't. But secondly, and more importantly, people calling you is the only way to get some important items like evolution stones. Anyway, yeah, that's a cool little way of rewarding players for utilizing the new mechanics in the game. Yeah, but Joe, oh, God damn it. Anyway, yeah, but Joe, you only get stuff like one in every 100 phone calls. It's not even worth it. It's more of a nuisance than anything else. All right, boys, you're just going to have to agree to disagree on this one. Anyway, good job getting us to Mauville City, Joe. There's a few things in this city to take care of real quick. Just make sure to go into every house here. All right, there's the coin case. Thank you very much, kind lady. A whole coin case for a piece of mail seems like a ripoff. This lady would never survive in capitalist America. Good thing she doesn't have to, Donald. We're gonna get a lot of mileage off that coin case. We can buy coins from the game corner, which we can turn into some of the most useful items in the game for us. Ooh, you mean like the Mudkip doll and stuff? I agree, Barack, we need those. Hey, Joe, look, it's the dude smashing May. How do you feel about that? Fuck off, Donald, he's not smashing May. Please don't talk like that about my queen. First of all, gross Donald. Secondly, no, Joe, we are not using our coins to buy dolls. The coins can be used to buy the best TMs in the game, namely Thunderbolt, Ice Beam, Flamethrower, and Psychic, if I remember correctly. 
It's always a little different between the Pokemon games. Okay, but we're still gonna buy the dolls for our base. I'm making one in the future for sure. Okay, you have fun with that. I won't be joining you. I don't give a shit about the base. Also, what the hell is wrong with that dude in the corner? Why does he look like that? Okay, this chick is freaked out by him too. Let's see what he's all about. Ooh, the storyteller, I'm intrigued. Same. Oh, what the hell, that's so misleading. Yeah, this is like talking to the homeless dude outside 7-Eleven. Oh, wait, yeah, actually, I got a story for Jesus, you. Jesus, Joe, come on, we got shit to do and only like 10 minutes left in the episode. All right, I'll keep it brief. This one time I was watching TV when all of a sudden I heard a loud bang on my front door. So I went to check on it and there was no one at the door, just an envelope on the doormat. So I brought the envelope back in and opened it up. Inside, there was a letter signed off by a Joe Biden. Okay, that's actually a little freaky. Yeah, what did it say, Joe? It said, Joseph, my boy, one day you will be the president of the United States, and you will be one of the best presidents the world has ever seen. I'll allow it. But you will make one grave mistake, and I have traveled back to my old self to prevent that from happening. Even if that changes the future as I know it, even if it means the death of this version of me. Joe, for God's sake, what was that mistake? I need to know. Seriously, Joe, I'm on the edge of my seat. It said, whatever you do, do not, and I repeat, do not, do not what? buy the chocolate chocolate chip ice cream from the Girl Scouts. Oh, fuck you, Joe. Really? And so that's when I realized it was clearly just a prank. There's no way me buying ice cream from Girl Scouts was going to have such an impact on my life that I need to travel back in time to stop myself from doing so. So I threw away the letter and continued watching TV. All right, that's it. I'm officially ending it all today. Joe, that is honestly pretty insane. Did that actually happen? Yep, pretty crazy story for sure. It seems like this guy agrees. All right, well, what the fuck? Never mind, I guess. I think he missed the point of the story. Yeah, well, that's what you get for telling a story to a homeless guy, Joe. Or he just really didn't care and wants to forget all about it, similar to me right now. All right, well, fuck you guys too then. What's up with this place? This is the bike shop. And this guy will give you either the mock bike or the acro bike. I suggest the acro bike for a smoother ride, and you can even do tricks and Joe, shit on it. pick the mock bike if you're not a pussy. You can go like a bajillion miles per hour on that no, thing. No, pick the acro bike. It's so silky and agile. Mock bike. Acro bike. Mock bike. Acro. Uh, uh, okay, I'm taking the mock bike. Suck it, Obama. But only because that Steven guy told me to, not because of you, Donald. Whatever, I didn't even actually care. I just said that one because Barack wanted the acro bike. Donald, you are a D1 hater. I hope you know that. Get good, Barack. I bet your husband Michael would pick the Mack bike instead of some sparkly little acro bike. My wife Michelle would get on the back of my acro bike and be impressed by the tricks I can do. Something Melania Yay. would never be able to experience with uh, your fat ass. Oh, what the thing. fuck? Okay, sorry, Obama. I'm sure whatever you said was hilarious, whatever. But Joe, what the hell was that? Sorry guys, I got carried away by using the speed up button with the Mac bike that was a sensory overload. Anyway, look, it's the Make-A-Wish kid. Joe, what makes you think he's a Make-A-Wish kid? Well, isn't the lore like he has some grave disease or something? And his very first encounter as a Ralts, I thought that was him, like having his wish come true or something. Nah, it's a good thought, Joe, really. But this kid has too much hair to be a Make-A-Wish kid. Ooh, good point, DT. Holy shit, you two are unbelievable. My make a wish is that somebody changes the topic right What's now. What's up, fuckers? Still trudging a lot? Oh my god, that's Another not Ralts. what I meant. Please catch this one, you guys. Oh, great. You see what you did, Obama? Ben, once again, get your corrupted ass out of this call. This is literally the same Ralts you creamed over last time, and we cannot catch it. Okay, well, let's say, hypothetically speaking, I send over the Catch Enemy Trainer action replay code. Would you then hypothetically catch this Ralts? No. No. No, Ben, now fuck out of here. Jesus, you guys are so lame. I guarantee you approximately 93% of your viewers want you to use a Gardevoir. Well, the viewers can lick my nuts, Ben. Now, if you're so smart, what is the country of Italy shaped like? Uh, well, Donald, the millions of years of tectonic plate movement has caused the Republic of Italy to mold into a boot-shaped peninsula. Ah, ha, ha, got ah, his ass. Mao, get fucked, Ben. Good shit, Donald, pulling out the old PlayStation 3 boots. Very cultured of you. Thanks, boys. Yeah, there's a time and place for everything. Joe, what's the plan now that the gym is available to us? Well, I'm going to finish up talking to our stalker here, and then I think I'm going to go take on all the trainers to the left of us and clear out that whole area. I just want to make sure we have enough training to safely take on the gym next episode without having to cut out too much from our viewers. This also gives some time to tell the viewers about the new nickname thing we were talking about today. Oh, right. Day. Good point, Joe. I'll go ahead and tell them. Okay, so basically, guys, we've gotten so many good nicknames from you guys that we've decided to adjust how we're doing the whole viewer submitted nickname, our Pokemon thing, 
basically Joe Donald and I are still gonna decide on which Pokemon to add to our team, but we are going to make it so if you guys guess which Pokemon that is correctly, we will throw that nickname onto the wheel to spin when we get it. So if you guess we are getting a wall rain and you name it Blubber, then we will throw Blubber on the wheel only if we actually go and catch a Sfeel. So keep guessing specific Pokemon. That way we don't just throw every nickname on a wheel. It wouldn't make sense if the nickname Whiskers, which was originally meant for a whiz cash, gets thrown onto the wheel for a Flygon or something. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, great job, Barack. That was well said. So guys, if there's a Pokemon you really want to see, and you're literally the only person to suggest it, and with a nickname of your choice, it will have to be named that. The editor reads every single comment and tries to respond to all of them, as you guys know. So keep commenting. And that leads us to our next point. We've decided to pick a somewhat underappreciated Pokemon for our other remaining team member besides the water type. There's a lot of fun Pokemon that never really get used, but can certainly be useful. Let us know in the comments what your favorite underutilized Pokemon is in any Pokemon playthrough. Mine has to be the Zangoose and Seviper lines in Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. They both can hit so hard when given the right move set, and they are both so frickin' cool in design. Not a bad choice, Joe, but I think I have to go with Ampibomb on this one. Its design is sick, and it is much needed evolution from a terribly underwhelming Generation 2 Pokemon. It also gets really cool competitive sets like Fake Out plus Last Resort, something I love using. Just All right, fun. Donald, Donald, I'ma let you finish, but Hypno is the best underutilized Pokemon in the history of Pokemon. Ain't no way you just said that, Barack. Yeah, Barack, I never really pinned you as a Hypno lover. That's kind of freaky, my guy. Now, hold on, you creeps. I mean, in the Kanto region, both in generations one and three, Hypno is criminally underused for how good he is. The psychic type is broken in Kanto, and given how hard it can be in a Nuz lock to get an Abra and how you can only get a Mr. Mime if you get one, Hypno is arguably the best psychic type in the region, behind maybe Starmie or Slowbro. All right, well, it seems like we all have some pretty well-educated points on some of our favorite Pokemon. I didn't say it's my favorite, just objectively underused. Yeah, whatever, creep. Anyway, look what we finally got on Ruby here. Oh, hell, yeah, she can finally be useful in battle for us. Uh, did you forget that May fight Donald? because I certainly haven't. Jesus Christ, Joe over here is obsessed with a pixelated 10-year-old girl. Barack's favorite Pokemon is a goddamn hypnotist. Again, not and my Ben favorite. Shapiro always joins the Discord to cream over a Ralts. Is there anyone else that wants to join the call right now and scare away the four female viewers that have ever tuned in to this series? No? Probably not, Donald. Dilzan has been getting pretty lazy with these. Well, good, maybe next time then. Anyway, guys, to backtrack a little bit, I think we all have pretty solid opinions on underutilized Pokemon in the Pokemon games. Viewers, let us know what your favorite underappreciated Pokemon is. If it's available for us to catch in this playthrough, let us know and give it a nickname. Maybe we will use it. We're still trying to figure out which one we want to add to the team. Yeah, just make sure it is something that was actually introduced in Generation 3 and that it doesn't already share a typing with one of the Pokemon we have already. That's kind of how we're doing this run right now. All right, so it looks like we made our way over to uh, Verdant, uh, Verdant Turd Town. What the fuck, who named Verdant this? Verdant Turd Town, you smooth brain. Yeah, I mean, I'll admit it is a pretty forgettable name and even more forgettable of a town. The only redeeming qualities it has is being where Wally's family lives, which who gives a fuck? And some Pokemon contest hall thing, which again, who gives a fuck? Okay, hold on a second. Are you guys listening to this song though? Oh, you guys gotta admit that slaps. Nope, still ass, Joe. Literally nothing redeeming about this town. Donald, you're just a hater now. You better apologize before I sell off your mail here. There could be important information about your tax evasion strategies. You ought to be careful. Do it, I dare you. No, I'm just playing. That's your business, not mine. I have something called respect. Now I'm guessing we will need a bunch of paralyzed heels for the upcoming gym, so let me stock up on those. Good thinking, Joe. We will definitely need those. How many repels we got? Okay, never mind. I think we are good. 
Oh, wait a second. What did I see there at the oh, end? Oh, I was hoping you missed it. Oh, a fluffy tail. It's so cute. Joe, come on. We have no need for that. And we had no need for Donald in office for four years, but that still happened. Wait, what the fuck did I do? Joe, do not buy 24 fluffy tails. All right, calm down. Calm down. I'm just messing with you. Let's get out of here. Okay, so if I remember correctly, we can go into this tunnel real quick and get some stuff. All right, this is the other side of the Wismer Tunnel. I always forget this extends out here. I think they did this because technically you can accidentally end up all the way over in Rustboro before you even beat the fourth gym. So they made it so you can backtrack over here so you don't have to go all the way around Duford and Slateport again. Joe, thank you for repelling. So I don't have to see any of those disgusting creatures that is Wismer. Absolutely repulsive. Part of me wants to catch one just to spite you, Donald. If you do, Joe, I am releasing it immediately. Hmm, is that so, Donald? And yes, Joe, I don't know what evil Wismer schemes you have planned, but I'm releasing anyone that you catch. All right, well, we will just get to that later. What does this dude want? Okay, so this is probably the dumbest thing in Pokemon Emerald, if you ask me. This dude, who is clearly wearing a pair of glasses, claims to have lost his glasses and needs help finding them. Okay, well, fair enough, Obama. That's dumb as hell. Where are they then? Oh, well, never mind. That was easy. Yeah, no, Joe. It gets better. You find a pair of glasses about three steps away from the guy who lost his glasses that are not the ones he's wearing right now, but then he claims that those glasses we found aren't actually his glasses. And then he walks away, and we never see him again. Okay, yeah, Obama, I might have to agree. That is just the most forced plot line of all time. But hey, the black glasses is a good item. And here I was thinking I didn't have to see a whiz mirror. Nope, you were never safe, Donald. Only the viewers were. Well, thanks, Sleepy Joe. But with that out of the way, I think I can safely say it is time for us to call it an end of the episode. I'm going to park us right outside the gym and call it there. Viewers, if you made it all the way to the end of the episode here, you're a real one. This episode was a bit of a filler because of the events of the story. What's up, clear... Scrubs? Be nice, Donald. We're back at it with episode six, and your boy DT is taking us through the long-awaited Mauville gym this time. Donald, you're about to get smacked into next week. Well, that's fine with me, Joe. Maybe Dilzan will actually upload on schedule by then. <laughs> well, that's partially our fault, too, Donald, since we're doing Pokemon Showdown now in addition to this playthrough. Yeah, fair enough. I'm just messing around with him. Anyway, yeah, last time Joe started in Slateport and took care of a bunch of training for us to prep the team for this gym. So, Joe, despite your previous comment, thank you for that. Wow, Donald, I'm glad you're so appreciative of that. I thought the episode was going to be on the boring side, but the viewers seem to really like it. Maybe we should start a podcast or something. Boys. Maybe we should, Joe. But regardless, I'm glad you guys are starting the episode off on a good note with each other for once. I feel like I rarely get to see that, and it's honestly very pleasant. Oh, don't worry, Barack. I'm sure somewhere down the line in this episode, Joe will do something that throws me off. It could be in 20 seconds or it could be in 20 minutes. We'll just have to wait. Oh, give see. me some credit here, Donald. I know we have our differences, but I would never just go out of my way to irritate you. You make me sound like some internet troll. OK, fair enough. Well, maybe today will be different than Joe. Actually, I kind of doubt it. Wait, when the hell did we get six Pokemon? Oh, weird. I have no idea. Uh, maybe that's just a glitch. What the fuck? Ed Sheeran and Ice Spice. Joe! Yeah, Donald? What in the actual hell is this? All right, I, th I was hoping for 20 minutes, but I guess it was 20 seconds. That's what she said, Obama. Holy shit. Joe, <laughs> are you fucking joking me right now? What the hell is this team? Surprise, Donald. I have gifted you with six talented whizmers of varying musical categories. I was hoping this array of brilliant individuals would allow you to appreciate them more as Pokemon. Joe, not only did this troll of yours elevate my blood pressure through the roof, but it also just makes me hate Wismer even more than I did last Ed week. Ed Sheeran, no. Donald, no. How could you let that happen to poor Ed Sheeran? Rock, what the hell? You know that every single one of these Wismers is fainting right now. Oh, shit, Drake Wismer. Can you do something for me? Hey, you'll get it, Barry. Now you're feeling it. Oh, you thought I was feeling you? Oh, my God. Someone please stab me in the throat. Donald, I believe in your ability to win this battle. The power of Wismer compels you. Joe, I can promise you these level seven Wismers will not be doing anything of value besides permanently going into the box in like two minutes. In fact, I won't even release them because they simply are not worth my time. Yeah, Joe, I have to admit this was pretty funny, but we have a whole lot of shit to do today. Uh, this gym is probably going to take us most of the episode, if I'm being completely honest. All right, well, let me just say one last thing then. Fine, okay, whatever it was a funny prank. Ha <laughs> ha. What is it, Joe? Donald, I would simply like to congratulate you on not only being the first person to let a team member faint all the way back in episode three, 
but also being the first person to lose a battle and white out. Watch it sleep. You're really impressing your fans this playthrough. Careful, Joe, you're poking the bear right now. Yeah, Joe, you're walking on thin fucking ice. I guess this would be a bad time to tell you I released all of our other Pokemon too. You're lying. Yeah, I know that's Cap, you're a troll, but I know you're attached to our team too. Wait, hold on, Donald. You should bring one of them along with us as a sack if we need it. Might as well fill up the party. God damn it, you're probably right, Barack. It could be useful to get a safe switch since we're playing on set mode. All right, Ice Spice, get on the team. Ooh, are you a munchkin, Donald? What the fuck, a munchkin? Oh, come on, Donald, you admitted on air that you liked the song. I know you know what this I mean. This is true, Donald. You admitted on a podcast that you're a fan, so that would classify you as a munchkin. Okay, well, I honestly don't remember that at all, but ask me if I'm still a fan after I throw Ice Spice in on the exploding Voltorb in like 10 minutes, okay? Oh, you wouldn't fucking dare to do that, Donald. First of all, I would, Joe. And second of all, can we move on past this idiotic whiz mer nonsense? Editor, the viewers already saw these guys. Team, skip past this shit, please. All right, so Titan seems to be our man, but honestly, we might still be a little underleveled for this gym, guys. Do you think I should go do some more training before taking on Watson? That depends. Are you a pussy? Good point, Joe. I'll just go for it. Well, I mean, you could, Donald, but hey, look, it's just a zigzagoon. What's the worst that thing can do? Okay, yeah, I mean, holy shit, why does that thing have Thunderbolt? Goddamn, yeah, that is a bit much. Jesus, that oh damage. Oh my God, and he crits me with it, too. Whatever Titan is still the goat, he'll just kill him on the next headbutt. Well, yeah, if he doesn't get crit again. Obama, why the hell would you say that? Damn, Donald, you suck. All right, I have had it up to here with you two, I swear to God. When I completely shit on Watson in a few minutes, you guys aren't ever allowed to fuck with me or question my Pokemon knowledge for the rest of this playthrough. Got it? Okay, honestly, Donald, we are going into Watson without the Marsh Stomp or Combusken where only four of our Pokemon are actually prepared to battle. And he has a Magneton and a Manectric that are both higher leveled than all of our team. If you actually manage to beat Watson using the restrictions we have already set, then I will back off. Jesus, okay, when you put it that way, Barack, yeah, maybe you should go do some extra training. Donald, there should still be a few trainers above us and then also to the right of Mavra. Yeah, we can go on the bike path now too. Nah, fuck that. I'm going to go heal and come right back. All right, Donald, if you really think you can do it, then all the power to you. I'm just saying, viewers, don't be surprised when we end up spending the entire episode in this damn gym. Jesus, guys, maybe have a little faith in your boy here. Uh, Joe, remember when I actually cheered you on and helped you against Roxanne with that brilliant mango play? Oh, yeah, I do. That was a good one. And Barack, remember when I, uh, well, uh, well, I guess I mainly just fucked us over against Brawly, didn't I? No, yeah, you definitely did, Donald. But it didn't actually matter in the end. Ultimately, I guess you're right, Donald. If it's gonna be a difficult gym battle regardless, then as your teammates, we owe you all the support we can give. Joe, you already pranked him once today. I think he deserves your blessings here. All right, fair enough, Barack. Yeah, Donald, you were surprisingly supportive during my gym battle. I guess you deserve the same treatment. Let's get it done, big dog. All right, thank you, boys. That's all I ask for. Now, I got Watson's team composition with their movesets pulled up on my phone here, and I agree it certainly looks menacing. I think I definitely want to give the team some of those cherry berries because all of these guys are going to try to paralyze the team. Yeah, that's a good idea, Donald. And actually, do me a favor and check if Talo is close to leveling up. I think it evolves next level, no fucking so way. you Does may be really... able to just give it the experience share right now. Oh shit, good looks, Barack. Yeah, Mango might not be the most useful for this battle, but we could have said the same thing about Roxanne. Oh hell yeah, this last battle should be just enough to get him to evolve. Thanks, Obama. Happy to help, and Joe, that's exactly what I'm thinking too. Might as well have the Swellow for that stat boost. Maybe it'll allow us to barely get a kill or survive an electric attack or something like that. Okay, but I have one request, and that is that you guys don't ruin this evolution like you did for Tricos. Swellow is one of my favorite Generation 3 Pokemon, and the old school evolution music and animation gets me absolutely bricked up whenever Jesus it Christ. Donald, as disgusting as that is, if I were to call you out for it, then I would simply be a hypocrite. 
All right, that settles it. America has never been in a worse situation. I cannot believe you two pervs are still the front runners for our next election. Oh, Barack, I know your hypno-loving ass isn't calling me a perv for loving the beauty of Pokemon evolution. Yeah, Obama, the only screen time your favorite Pokemon gets is when it is abducting children, but yeah, Preach. go ahead and call us the freaks. Yeah, Obama, you got no room to talk here. Again, it's not my goddamn favorite Pokemon, okay? The theme of the last episode was to state the best underappreciated Pokemon, and I simply gave the objectively best answer in saying that Hypno is criminally underrated in the Generation oh, 1 criminal, and 3 games right. with the Kanto region. Those games have no dark types, and very few steel types, as well as not a single threatening bug type the entire time. Psychic types are broken. And Hypno is the ah, only one you can get crazy. in some reliable Barack, fashion. Barack, whatever you can cream over Hypno again later. Everyone shut up for now. Fine. What's up, losers? No, nope, fuck off. Got him. Uh -huh. Nothing is ruining this moment for the viewers. Uh -huh. Same Donnie. The hell is wrong with you two? It's literally a bird. Like, that could easily just be an actual real-life bird you see in nature. Stop glazing, Obama. If you were a true American, you would embrace the godsend that is Swello. My life is nearly complete now. A quirky yet gutsy Swello named Mango in a great ball. Goddamn. Yeah, to think there were comments requesting us to replace the Swello down the line when it falls off. I would never. Mango is the only thing keeping this run alive, if you ask me. Okay, whatever, it's finally time for the gym battle. Donald, I'm sure you've done your share of prep for this fight. What's the plan? Okay, well, Barack, to start things off, I'm gonna let Sky lead off for us. I need to make sure Titan is at full health for the heavy hitters in the back. He's gonna be our only way of weakening the Magneton. All right, smart, I see you, DT. And secondly, he's gonna have the quick claw on him because he shouldn't be out speeding a single guy on their team. The soft sand is nice, but just a 10% boost only takes it from 20 base power mud slap to 22 base power. That's just not worth it right now. All right, Donald, I can get behind that. And I see you're also prepping everyone else with those cherry berries. Yeah, everyone else is getting one because Watson likes to spam Thunder Wave and Spark. And I'm giving one to Ruby, too, because electric types can actually get paralyzed in this game. Had to say that because someone in the comments would have tried to correct me otherwise. All right, well, the time is here and the time is now. Let's see what you got, Big D. Fuck off, Joe. I know you're just trying to tilt me, but it's not going to work. I got my drink, I got my music, I would share it, but today I'm yelling, bitch, don't kill my vibe. Sheesh, Bars Donald, shout out to my boy, K. Dot. Glad you appreciated some Kendrick there, Barack. Anyway, just gonna throw off a bullet seed to start things off. Jesus Christ, I cannot wait until we get Leaf Blade on this thing. For real, Joe Bullet Seed is ass. It's doing barely any damage to a Voltorb of all things. All right, that's fine. That isn't gonna change my strategy at all. I'm gonna go for one more, put it to low health, then watch my genius plan unfold. All right, I'm curious, what the hell is your genius plan, Donald? Oof, only two hits. No, no, that's perfect. In the yellow, but not in heal range, exactly where I want him. All right, Donald, just tell us what the hell you're cooking already. It better be good. So the Voltorb is not in green health anymore, so the Emerald AI sees that as close to death, not so low to heal, but not so high to feel safe. Donald, So that no. means one thing when it comes to these Voltorbs. Ooh, genius plan, Donald. Say goodbye to your Wismur, Joseph. Hey! Jesus Christ, chill out, Joseph. Donald, how could you do that to Ice Spice? I thought you were a fellow munchkin. Fellow. First of all, I'm not a goddamn munchkin. Second of all, gross that you admit to being one yourself. And third of all, this is what you get for pulling that prank on me at the beginning of the episode. We are even now. Asshole. Anyway, he should send in his own Electrike next. I think Sky can come back in and handle it. All right, time to throw off some more weak-ass bullet seeds then? Yeah, I mean, I don't think I really have a better option if I'm being honest. Well, I mean, one pursuit would do more than a bullet seed that only gets two hits. Absorb is also better because it would get health back. And Fury Cutter would gain power over time to make it the best move after a couple uses. Joe, what the hell is your point in saying all that? Well, I mean, you just said you don't have any other options. But in fact, every move you have has potential to be a better option. Honestly, he's kind of got you there, Donald. OK, you know what, Joe? I'm proud of you. That was probably the most intellectual thing you have said this entire playthrough, and I'm here for it. Now do me a favor and shut your wrinkly ass up and let me do my thing. Rude, but whatever. There was a compliment in there, I guess. All right, so I'm going for the absorb here to bring him to the red to bait Watson into wasting a super potion. 
I'd rather not have to deal with that on the magneton or the manectric. Nice, Donald. You're going crazy right now. The Voltorb is down, and Sky should still be able to take care of this electrike with no significant deaths so far. I hate both of you with a fiery passion. Lick my nuts, Joe. Anyway, yeah, thanks, Obama. This electrike has gotten a couple howls off, but him getting us this low is actually good because it puts us in overgrow range, so our absorbs do more damage. Exactly what I was thinking, Donald. So what's the plan on if either the magneton or manectric come out next? Uh, it should be the magneton because that's who is next in his party. Neither that or the Manectric have a super effective move on Grovile, so he's just going to send them out in party order. Jesus, Donald, did, did you research into the coding mechanics of 2005 Pokemon AI since the last time we played or something? As a matter of fact, Joe, I did. And you should be glad I did, because if it were you fighting this guy right now, it would take you four different episodes and three different legendaries to beat him without our help. Now, hop off and let Daddy cook. So you're just going to sack off Sky now? Yeah, I mean, I'm still in overgrow, and I want to get this magneton down as much as possible without getting him into heal range. And Sky can do that decently if we get some good rolls with Bullet Seed. Ooh, nice. He's wasting his time with Thunder Wave. Good planning. Giving them the cherry berries, Donald. Yeah, that Bullet Seed did less than I'm guessing you hoped for. But it sounds like you're prepared for that DT. Honestly, at this point, I feel comfortable just sitting back and enjoying the battle. This must be what it feels like to be one of our viewers. Yeah, I mean, everything I've said so far has just been met with a, Joe, shut your old ass up, or something of those lines. So I think I'm kind of forced to just kind of watch Grovile do nothing against these magnets. To be honest, I did not think that an overgrow boosted bullet seed would do negative damage to this guy. But whatever, I guess that's what I get for being underleveled. Anyway, he should see the kill now, so Sky is going to have to go down, but not without putting a significant dent in Watson's team. It's time to commence the next part of my plan. The next part of your plan? Calm down, Doofenshmirtz. Oh, just you watch, Bozo. All right, enlighten us, Donald. Okay, so basically, if I send in Titan to try to mud slap him, I'll probably just get outsped and die to a shockwave, ending our chances of victory. However, if I send in Ruby first to get off a thunder wave, then I wouldn't have to rely on the Quick Claw, and Titan can just get off a Mud Slap for free, because he would then outspeed. Jesus Christ, Donald, with the way you are cooking right now, you might as well be a goddamn Michelin star chef. Yeah, this battle is clearly living up to the expectations we put on it, considering the lengths you have to go through right now to set yourself up for success. That being said, Donald, I agree, you're going crazy right now. I told you boys I did my goddamn research. It might take a little bit of luck, but in case you haven't noticed, I'm setting up an endgame for Mango against the Manectric. It's going to be the fucking fight of the century. Donald, I think you should actually switch to the Nincada for now. That Leer could be huge for Titan, but Ruby's ability to paralyze the Manectric might be our key to victory. You know what, Barack? That's actually a good point. Ice Spice and Nincada are actually playing a huge role this battle, and I totally did not expect it. Oh, true, this gives you a safe switch into Titan while also keeping Ruby somewhat healthy. Is smart thinking, Barack. Jesus, what the fuck was that, Joe? Are you okay? Uh, I think he's still mad that you sacrificed one of his Wismers to Voltorb. Joe just tried to see the bigger picture here. Ice Spice ended up being a critical part of the plan as two sacrifices clearly needed to be made to keep the rest of the team healthy. You know what? You're right, Donald. All right, glad that's over, because this is huge. We need this to kill. Come on, Titan, do it for Ice Spice. Uh -oh. Oof, that was weak Holy as shit, hell. not even close. Accuracy drop doesn't matter with Shockwave. Yeah, I think we need the parrot. Hell Let's yeah. Let's fucking go, Titan. No way, is this really going to happen? Damn, that's crazy. Sky's damage with the bullet seeds, plus Ruby's paralysis and leer, was the only thing that could make this happen. Any more damage, and he would have healed any less, and we wouldn't have killed. This team is so fucking based right now. An extra level for both Titan and Ruby, too. Who knows, maybe those extra stats will be what gives us the dub today. All right, here we go. Jesus Christ, level 24. If we manage to win this battle, all you viewers better press that subscribe button. All right, Donald, what's your plan now? Honestly, Obama, I did not think for a second I was going to get this far. OK, Donald, I have a plan. Might require a little luck, though. Better than nothing. What you got, JB? OK, so stay in with Titan and hit him with a rock tomb. If we can lower his speed, we can get off a thunder wave with Ruby. That may give us some time to stack some damage on Come it. Come on, clutch up, boy. Hell yeah, let's go. Holy shit, through the paralysis and through the 80% accuracy. 
Again, barely like any damage, but honestly, that speed lowering might be all we need to set us up for a ruby and mango win. Hopefully, because I'm sure this takes out Titan here. Nah, come on, I believe in you, Titan. Holy shit. Now land the hit. Boom, bitch. Unbelievable. Joe, you are a god of gods. That was insanely clutch. Oh, it's not over. Check this quick claw proc into critical hit. If that happens, Joe, I'm voting for you in 2024. One more for the fans. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, damn, okay, I thought so god. too, Barack. Well, Titan, you made a hell of a run. But it's time for the dog and the bird to take this one home for us. I'm going to paralyze him with Ruby and then set up some leers so Mango can finish him off. Oh, sevens for Titan. That was absolutely bonkers. Vax. All right, so Thunder Wave now. We should outspeed thanks nice. to Titan's heroic rock tomb. Okay, what's he gonna do? Ooh, hell yeah, Cherry Berry's coming in clutch again, Donald. Joe, you demented fuck. We already used it against the magnets. Oh, oops. But that's fine. Since we are both paralyzed, we still outspeed. I just need to get a bunch of leers off Hell now. yes, keep it up, fuck Ruby. Fuck yeah. Honestly, if he just stays fully paralyzed one or two more times, and then maybe once against Mango, I think we win this for sure. Goddamn, Ruby is clutching up big time right now. Live this hit, Ruby. Come on, girl, hold. Oh my God, my butthole is so tight right Joe, now. Joe, shut the fuck up. Hell yes, let's go. Oh my God, Ruby, you beast. Okay, so technically he sees a kill on us with priority quick attack, so he will always go for that. So I need to damage him with my own quick Fully attack paralyzed first. again, let's go. Oof, good plan on the face of oh, a Donald. Oh shit, the citrus But berry. this berry is gonna put him into much higher health than he was before. Holy shit, that's like a built-in super potion. No way that's fair. We'll be fine, Joe. Just trust in Ruby. No way two full pairs in a row. I'm just going to keep getting damage, I think. Holy shit, what is Three this? Three in a row. Are you joking me? This is the intimidating power of Ruby. Damn straight, this is Holy crazy, shit, Donald. Holy four in a row. Lear now so he doesn't heal. Insane Donald. Holy shit, Ruby, Jesus you Christ, are the okay, goat. Donald, I can't help but think you are hacking. Uh-oh, boys. Uh-oh. Donald, what? We're about to win. Uh... Jesus, what the hell, Donald? I'm freaking out right now, guys. I did not think this would actually work. Pull yourself together, Donald. Look at all our fallen soldiers. Finish this the same way we did against Roxanne. Now end this battle with a quick attack. Oh my God, my heart. Ooh, okay, here we go. Can Mango do it? You bet Ooh, your it's fucking bitch. ass Let's Mango go, can do it. That was insane, Donald. That was one for the ages, boys. All you motherfuckers watching who doubted me. Oh well, yeah, go do that, I guess. Thanks, still, Zan, I was getting there. Donald, I really, really hate to boost your ego, but even I have to admit, you went into that gym with a game plan and you came out victorious in the bleakest of situations. I don't think I can question your Pokemon mastery again after that one. Well, to be fair, you hacked the Manectric like six turns in a row. Oh, to be fair, Barack, you can hack on this dick. All right. Fortune favors only those who put themselves in its path. And boys, today we put a territorial stake right in the middle of that goddamn path. That was beautiful, Donald. Thank you, Joe. And boys, let me just say one more thing. I know I went into that battle with a solid plan in mind, but Barack, you're the one who told me to bring Ice Spice. You're also the one who told me about switching into Ninkata. And Joe, you had the game plan of keeping Titan in to slow down the Manectric with the Rock Tomb. Had we not done that, we would have never been able to outspeed with Ruby, and the RNG would have been completely different. I owe much of that battle to you two, and God damn it, I respect the hell out of you two right now. Donald, thank you, but there is no real MVP here. Sky started the battle off strong and even weakened the Magneton. Ruby severely crippled both major threats. Titan was our only answer to the Magneton, and he performed his job flawlessly. And Mango came in in glorious fashion to finish it off. Even our two party fillers were crucial. What a glorious battle all around. You're bringing tears to my eyes, boys. Real quick, someone has to learn Rock Smash right now. I'm just gonna throw it on Titan because I never wanna look at that shitty mud slap ever again. Besides, even if we see another Magneton, Rock Smash is fine for Fair it. enough, Donald. Obviously it sucks that our party Pokemon are going to have to learn HMs, but it's not the end of the world. That's generation three Pokemon after all. Exactly, now speaking of HMs, let's go get strength. All right, here you go, lady. That's how a real man smashes a rock. Want to see how else I can smash? Sheesh, Donald, she must have a migraine because you'd be handing out that Riza Tripton, my guy. All right, calm down. No one knows what that is. Oh, blow me, Obama. That was funny. A little forced, but clever nonetheless. All right, quick little double battle here. Guys, that gym took us forever, so we're going to be skipping through some of these random trainers we got left here. Yeah, can't blame Dil Zan if he skips these. The episode is long enough as it is. Viewers, how about you watch this advertisement instead?
Good one, Joe. I hope a mid-roll ad actually came on for once. YouTube is so inconsistent with that. All right, yeah, that battle actually took a toll on the team, had to go heal up. We'll probably skip through these guys, too, and just see you all at this house over here. All right, once again, healed up and ready to battle. Yeah, hey, Barack, to revisit an older topic, and just because I can't get that frickin' gym battle out of my head, you made a good point about how there was no true MVP of that fight. Everyone did their role spectacularly. I agree, Donald. That being said, Barack, oh, I can't help go. but point out how if we did not have Mango evolve and have the priority stab quick attack, all of the initial setup would have been for nothing. He was also the only Pokemon alive at the end of the battle and did so at full health nonetheless, similar to the Roxanne situation. He will just always be clutch for us. I feel like he deserves his praise here. All right, Donald, that is an absolute L take. Titan was by far the biggest reason we won that battle. Oh, that's Cap Obama. No other Pokemon of ours could have done a single thing to that Magneton. Sky would have been our next best choice. And you took like two minutes to take out like 25% of his health with him. Titan also got the crucial rock tombs off on the Manectric. There is no way Titan is not the MVP of that fight. Obama, you are just blinded because Titan was your pick as the addition no, to Donald, the No, Donald, you are blinded by your patriotism. Mango was not too important that Fine, battle. you know what, Barry? I hate that it has to come to this, but Joe, who was more important in that fight? Oh, do I get to have an opinion on this one? Yeah, Joe, tell him how Titan was the key to our success there. Are you sure? Joe, for God's sake, just spit it out. All right, you Nimrods, there is, without a shadow of a doubt in my mind, that Ruby was the most objectively impactful member of our party during that Oh my battle. God, Joe, you would. Not only that, but that battle could not have been more beautiful from a storyteller's perspective. That weirdo in the Pokemon Center will be talking about this one for years Joe, to come. Joe, could you please elaborate on what the hell you mean by that? Oh, well, I'd be happy to, Barack. Ruby stepped in against the Magneton to allow Titan to prosper. Titan would simply have died to a shockwave if not for the Thunder Wave. So hold that L, Barack. Ha, 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 told you, Obama. As for you, Donald, your take is even more heinous. Any decently leveled Pokemon could have taken over Mango's job of that battle. You take that back right now, Now, please allow me to explain the beautiful lore that unfolded during that battle that you bozos clearly failed to comprehend. All right, get on with it, Joe. Three heroes embark on a journey Jesus through Christ. a tumultuous region filled with powerful creatures known as Pokemon, all of whom possess mystical powers of varying elements. We don't have time for this, The Joe. heroes are accompanied by an animal with a specialty in harnessing the power of lightning. Wait. Is this After two difficult gym battles, including one specializing in rock-hard defenses, the heroes find themselves up against their toughest opponent yet, the veteran electric trainer. Okay, Joe, we get it. We beat Watson. The most threatening part of it all is that this gym leader's ace is none other than the evolved form of the beloved hero's own electric partner. Donald, do you not see what is After happening? After a lengthy and casualty-stricken battle, the heroes prevail through sheer determination and grit. No, Barack, I'm lost. This was only possible through capitalizing the power of speed over brute force. This was a battle that will never be forgotten and has ingrained itself in the brain of Pokemon lovers for decades to come. Joe, that was fucking immaculate. I'm sold. Barack, he literally just told a synopsis of our past five and a half episodes. What the hell are you talking about? Viewers, if you understood this before Donald, let us know. Come on, Donald. Really? The three heroes? The electric animal? The first two gyms, including a rock leader? The veteran electric trainer? An ace that is the evolved form of the electric partner? The heroes relying on manipulating the speed to win? A battle for Pokemon lovers for decades to come? Yeah, uh, Barack, I heard it the first time. I still don't know what the holy shit! Is that the fucking plot of season one of the anime? Ding, ding, ding. Not only is that the plot to the first season of the anime, but that's also the exact same thing that we have been doing the past couple weeks. Uh, I had no idea that we were following in those steps so closely. That was very impressive from you, Joseph. So my point of all of this is, Ruby so closely paralleled the events to that gym battle that Ash had with Lieutenant Surge that it would be absolutely criminal to give the battle MVP to anyone other than her. After all, that was the best gym battle of any Pokemon episode that has ever been created. All right. Well, after that story, I'm okay with the Ruby MVP part, but I'm going to have to disagree with the next statement about the best gym battle in the Pokemon anime. That title would certainly have to go with Ash's double battle against Olympia in the X and Y series. 
The high pace of action throughout the entire battle, while also the looming threat of the future site closing in while things seem bleak, all cultivate to create an incredible climax to the penultimate gym of the region. Not to mention the pivotal role that Pikachu gets to play from the sidelines, which was unique and fun to see. All right, I can respect that, Donald. What do you think? Well, honestly, it's hard to pick a gym battle. I think the two you mentioned were both fantastic, and there were plenty of great battles throughout the rest of the series as well. The best battles, though, for sure, came during Ash's many Pokemon League tournaments. I think the most recent Masters 8 is a clear example of that, but even before that, I think there were better battles. For me, it's uh, between Ash's battle against Drake in the Orange Islands or his battle against Paul in the Sinnoh League. I think I would have to lean towards the Paul battle because of how sick the battle was, but also the overall significance of Ash finally beating him. And to do it all with the Infernape he adopted from him in the first place. But again, Hard to choose. Sheesh, all right, you both make some pretty insane arguments there. I still just like the meaning behind the battle against Lieutenant Surge and how Pikachu learned to overcome his weaknesses and capitalize on his strengths. Honestly, I can't blame you for that. Viewers, let us know what your favorite battle from the Pokemon anime was and why. The battles against Cynthia and Leon in the Masters 8 are probably pretty easy ones to go with here, but remember, Ash's run lasted like 25 years. Try to get a good one. It doesn't even have to be a tournament battle or a gym battle, or even including Ash in the first place. Let us know in the comments and let's talk about it. Great segue, Barack. But maybe it's finally time to get back to the gameplay. What do you think of that one, boys? Yeah, fair enough, Joe. We took care of that house pretty quickly and we got the Macho Brace, which is a great item to train a competitive team but I'm not really gonna care to put it on anyone. Yeah, me neither, but it could be good for training a battle frontier team. Maybe we could do that down the line if the viewers want us to. Yeah, we can talk about that later. I think I have to answer these guys' stupid interview questions for now. These two are actually pretty significant trainers for us down the line, Donald. Yeah, yeah, whatever, Obama. But hey, Donald, would you mind describing how that battle was for you to the camera here? Maybe like your emotions during the battle, directly after the battle, something like that. Oh, of course, Joe, I would love to, uh, uh, let's see here, uh, adjectives, uh, uh, Take your time, Donald. Okay, I was literally lolling at how ridiculously easy that battle was. All right, good on you for keeping that one PG, Donald. Yeah, I'm disappointed. Anyway, yeah, there's several reasons as to why those two are going to be arguably the most important trainers for us down the line, if we want to play optimally. Oh, shit, Barack, you know your boy is all about being optimal. I'm a Falco main, after all. Hit me. It's because she has a Wismur, Donald. Okay, no, Joe. It's not because of the Wismur. It's actually because they are an easy source for a free, repeatable battle without having to figure out the match call system. After we beat them here, then once more in a few episodes, then once more an episode or two after that, then they come back to the same spot. Then they just continue moving around to their three locations after we beat them. And they are always willing to battle us. And eventually, their team maxes out at a respectable enough level for us to train against with an Explode and a Magneton. We also get the Amulet Coin after the fifth gym, so they are a great way for easy money and experience. Super helpful if we want to get those TMs from the game corner. Damn, Barack, I had no idea that was a mechanic in this game. I always thought it was lame that the versus Seeker was replaced with the much less convenient match call system in this game especially because of how readily available the Versus Seeker is in Fire Red and Leaf Green. Yeah, Fire Red and Leaf Green made the money and experience grind so convenient thanks to the Versus Seeker and some trainers that just give you hella cash in those games. But yeah, Obama, I did not know the reporters can be battled over and over again like that either. Have you been watching some grumpy Gengar or something? Damn straight, I've been watching some grumpy Gengar. I'm surprised you know that name, Donald. What the hell are you two talking about? Not surprised your noob ass doesn't know Joe? Fuck off, Donald. Grumpy Gengar is another relatively small YouTuber whose biggest content is informative videos on Pokemon Emerald, Ruby, and Sapphire. Definitely worth checking out if you want to learn new things about this game, even if you're already experienced. Well said, Barack. Anyway, I'm definitely teaching Screech to Sky here. As we saw against Watson, these defense-lowering moves could be absolutely crucial in winning difficult battles. 
And seeing how we have some difficult fire trainers coming up, Sky's most important role could be using Screech, especially against Flannery's Torkoal. Makes sense to me, Don. Anyway, Donald, how much further are you planning on going today? We've already been recording for like an hour. Oh shit, have we really? Okay, yeah, I'll just do this last trainer over here and then call it a day. We can blame the lengthy recording on Joe's little Wismer prank. All right, sounds good. Viewers, the editor wanted to apologize about the outro of episodes three through five. The studio we got the song from ended up getting greedy and stole 100% of the monetization rights because we used that song, so he had to edit over the outro with some loud ass song right from YouTube studio editing. It sounds pretty bad. Okay, right, Barack, I forgot about that. I'll take care of the rest here. Viewers, thanks for making it to the end of the video. We're thrilled that you are enjoying the series enough to support us throughout our journey. If you aren't subscribed, make sure to just click that button super quick. Hi, You're everyone. Ready? Welcome back to our Pokemon Emerald playthrough. Let's get it, boys. Last time, Donald had an immaculate gym battle against Watson. Make sure to go check that out if you missed it. This is true. This episode, I'm going to be progressing the story and training the team to the best of my ability. Hell yeah, sounds like a blast, Barry. Let's do this thing. George, no offense, but why in the world are you here right now? Oh, Joe, you didn't tell them? Joe, what the hell is this Nimrod talking about? Oh, right, my bad boys. I, I invited George to play along with us this time. Joe, we have like thousands of people that watch this gameplay. You didn't think to ask us before letting someone else join in? Jesus, what's the big deal, Donald? I just wanted to play some Digimon with you guys. Holy shit, do you see what you've done, Joe? Okay, first of all, we are playing Pokemon, George. What the fuck is Pokemon? Oh, my God. And then second of all, I don't have a problem with you joining, but I do have one condition. Okay, fine. What is it? You have to change that goddamn profile picture right now before I ban you from this server. Jesus, okay, okay, I'll fix it. I'll be back in a minute. Guys, are we seriously going to let him play with us? Oh, chill out, Donald. You sound like a goddamn middle schooler. It's not a big deal. Yeah, I don't see a problem either. What's wrong with it, Don? What's wrong with it? Well, let's see. His shit microphone sounds like it's from when he was still president. His idiocy is only matched by Joe when he's off his meds. And he literally just said, and I quote, what the fuck is Pokemon? Am I the only sane one here? All right, Donald, his mic is not that bad. I can barely notice any sort of quality difference between yours and his. Also, in my opinion, he's earned the right to join this playthrough if he wants as a former president. The series title is Presidents Play Pokemon, after all. Yeah, and he literally thought it was Digimon. The man has no clue what we're even playing. He will be a liability. Come on, Donald, he's our friend. Just calm your tits and let him play. Besides, the viewers wanted Bush to be a part of this. Joe, literally one person wanted Bush to be a part of this back at like the start of the series over a month ago. And even that was kind of a strange interaction, but fine, whatever, guys. I guess I could afford to be a little more hospitable. If he wants to learn the ropes of Pokemon, then who am I to stop him? Exactly, Donald. Maybe he feels like he's been missing out or something. I think above all else, he's probably just excited to play with us. We shouldn't rob him of that. All right, Oblama, is this better? <laughs> oh my God, George, all right, you are an asshole. I don't want you playing with us anymore. Whoa, 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 Barack, whatever happened to him, having the right to play with us if he wants to. That was when he only disrespected my relationship with my wife with one joke. Now he is just purposely pissing me off. All right, seriously, George, I told you to ease into it here, and you aren't doing that at all. We all just talked about how we're going to help you learn the game, so just put on a normal picture of yourself, please. Oh, okay, thanks, guys. Here, this is my default picture. Is this okay? Jesus, yeah, that took you like two seconds. George, was that so hard to do from the start? Haha, <laughs> good one, Obama. Anyway, who wants to explain Pokemon to Whatever, me? Whatever, fuck me, I guess. Ooh, I got you, George. Oh, this ought to be good. Okay, so basically a Pokemon is a mystical creature that can like shoot flames out of its ass or summon trees or punch real hard or bend spoons or some shit like that. Great start, Joe. And so as the hero, our job is to enslave these magical creatures. Careful, Joe. And use them to rob other people. But our main goal is to collect eight bottle caps so we can take on the grand champion of Pokemon enslavement at the end of the game. All right, well, that sounds retarded, but whatever, I'm George, in. George, don't say that. We are posting these on YouTube. Well, he's not wrong. That was the dumbest explanation of a Pokemon game I've ever heard. George, we catch and train a team of Pokemon so that we can progress the story and defeat a variety of trainers and evil villains who are trying to do their rendition of taking over the world. That being said, Joe is right in that we beat the game by defeating the current champion of the region and claiming that title for ourselves. All right, seems like a pretty basic plot to an RPG to me. Well, that's because it is. 
Yeah, anyway, George, it really is a basic storyline, but that's just because Pokemon kind of revolutionized the RPG plot in the first place. This game is almost 20 years old after all. Oh, that's the secret base guy. Talk to him, Obama. This guy's an absolute creeper. He's asking a 10-year-old boy if he wants to go make a treehouse with him, and of course, Joe sees nothing wrong with it. What the hell, why do you guys enjoy this? Yeah, the secret base thing was honestly a pretty cool idea to me when this game first came out, especially because there's like a 100 different possible locations for them in the game, but once you go in there, it's kind of underwhelming. Oh, come on, don't say that. You can decorate it with different collectibles you get throughout the game, and it can be a cool mark of progress throughout your story. Damn it, Barack, please just teach secret power to someone and go back in there. Okay, you know what, secret power is probably a good move to have on Swellow for the time being. I think that would technically be our hardest hitting move at the moment. That's a good point. We don't need any of that focus energy shit. Secret power is 70 base power with 100% accuracy and a possibility for a secondary effect based on the terrain. Pretty cool move, all things considered. Okay, and apparently it also lets you make tree houses. And I'm invested in that now that we won't stop talking about it. Go let that bird make a treehouse for us, Barack. Jesus, okay, fine, guys. Hell yeah, George, I knew I was right to bring you along today. Okay, honestly, I'd be lying if I said I never got invested uh, the in the whole secret base thing. I pretty much always made mine down in that water underneath the bike path where it says Team Aqua made their secret base. I just like the idea of taking over theirs and making it my own. That's a pretty good one, Donald. Personally, I like the ones tucked away in that Phoebus route because you need like surf and cut and the acro bike just to get over there. It made it really feel tucked away and secluded as a secret base should be. What about you, Joe? Oh, I could never remember where I made mine, so I always just stuck to the one right here. Shocker. It's easy to remember where you get the secret power TM. So I always just made it easy on myself. That's understandable, Joe. Viewers, let us know in the comments where you did your secret base in these games and what made you choose that spot. Anyway, look, it's Donald's interview on television. Wow, Donald, you really seem to make a fan club for yourself. These guys love you. What can I say, George? I am a man of the people. The trainer replied, lolling. Donald, they asked you to battle and you just laughed in their face after you beat them. How is that being a man of the people? Don't pretend like you know what they're talking about, George. They had a whizmer on their team, so I had to beat them senseless for it. The fuck is a whizmer? Oh, I'm glad you asked, George. It quite simply is Donald's favorite Pokemon. Joe, you shut your mouth this instant. I hate whizmer with a fiery passion. Okay, okay, okay. We don't need to talk about it. George, it's just a fairly forgettable Pokemon. You're a fairly forgettable and President I think we Obama. should keep it that way for now. I think I ought to switch the topic and talk about my plans for the bulk of this episode here. Thank you, Barack. Yeah, I agree. That's probably a good idea. How far do you plan on progressing today? Okay, well, honestly, my main objective is to get some good training on the team. As cool as our last gym battle was, it did require a decent amount of luck with paralysis. So with that in mind, I definitely want to make sure we get some good levels on our party here. Specifically, I would like it if Ruby got to level 26 because that is when she will evolve into Manectric. A Manectric with Spark would hit incredibly hard in this early to mid game. Oh, hell yeah, Obama. I would love to see Ruby evolve this episode. What about Titan, does he evolve soon too? Unfortunately, no Joe, Titan won't evolve until level 32, and then again at 42. So that isn't super late if you ask me, but he is stuck as an Aaron for longer than you'd hope for. Oh hell yeah, Mango got burned. Keep that on him for now, Obama. We can finally see the power of Guts swell up for a little while. But besides that, yeah, I agree it sucks. Titan won't evolve for a couple more episodes. But honestly, his role as a defensive tank can be filled well, just as he is now. I gotta say, this mango bird is a goddamn beast. Look how Damn sick straight, that thing George. is. It looks like America in Pokemon Damn form. Damn straight, George. Jesus. Okay, yeah, we get it. You two love America anyway, Barack. So we know your main goal is to level up the team. But where do you think you'll be able to go in terms of overall story progression today? Well, let's see, Joe. I have to get through this volcanic ash route real quick. Pass through Fowlerbore Town. Beat all the trainers leading up to Meteor Falls, do the Team Aqua and Magma stuff there, and then beat some trainers on the other side of the mountain there. By that point, we will probably be pushing the recording time limit, so I might have to just cut it off then. Which means next episode, Joe, you will be doing a lot of significant battling between the Team Magma stuff and the Fire Gym. Oh, hell yeah, that's what I like to hear, Barack. You training up the team a whole bunch just so 
I get to do the cool battles next time. This is my reward for training up the team for Donald last week. Yeah, except I actually went through and planned out my whole battle against Watson. Using our under-leveled team, I highly doubt you'll be able to pull off the same thing against Flannery. So you're probably going to have to do a little bit of team training off screen again before you play. Oh, don't let him talk to you like that, Joe. You don't need to train shit. You're the Pokemon master. Don't blow up his ego, George. He is not the Pokemon master in the slightest. Yeah, if anyone is the Pokemon master here, it's me. Based on his reaction to May every single episode, Joe is more like the Pedomon master. Oh, screw both of you. I admit Watson was a difficult battle, but that was because our team was weak as hell at the time. This time around, Ruby will be powerful, and Swellow can actually hit with decently effective stab moves. Plus, Grovile can help with Screech, and Titan has super effective attacks as well. And if I bring a couple sacks, especially against the overheats, then it should be easy peasy. Yeah, see, I don't know what the hell any of that means, but I'm sure you guys do. Yeah, okay, Joe, that was actually somewhat impressive. I did not expect that. Yeah, I'm just gonna ignore the fact that this lady told us to slide under her umbrella with her, but yeah, Joe, it sounds like you actually have a bit of a game plan for yourself. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Yeah, thanks, guys. And I know I mentioned of sacking Pokemon, but don't you think we should start talking about adding a party member to our team soon? Anyone have any suggestions? That's a good point, Joe, good segue. I'm still convinced that we should use someone a little bit underappreciated for these Hoenn games. There's a lot of Pokemon that don't get much love and we certainly should be sticking ourselves out from any other playthroughs. Ooh, what if you guys use one of these things? They look fun. Hell to the no, George. I would rather use a goddamn Wizmer before I use a Spinda. And just so I'm clear, I would rather commit seppuku before I use a Wizmer. Oh, come on, just catch it, Obama, and think about it. Okay, well, George, I can't catch this one because it belongs to another trainer. But there are a bunch of spindas on this road. That being said, guys, what if we let George have a say on what we catch for our sixth member? After all, we can't do anything about our potential water type for another couple episodes. What if we let George decide on it? Could be kind of fun. Hmm. I mean, honestly, I know we have all played through this game a whole bunch. Maybe since George has no experience with it, then that can kind of pose a challenge for us. That being said, I'm not using a goddamn Exploud or a Spinda. Oh, those two are off the table for me. Okay, that's honestly cool with me too. George, how about you Google the Emerald Pokedex real quick and come up with one you think we should use? Oh, hell yeah, this is exciting as hell. Thanks, boys, I'll pick a good one. All right, I'm kind of nervous for it now. Okay, well, in the meantime, can someone tell me what the hell is going on in this house? Is this like a smoke shop or something? Yeah, this dude is literally taking a rip after every sentence. That's metal as shit. Please do not condone smoking to our viewers, Donald. Oh, shit, yeah, my bad. Uh, yeah, drugs are bad, kids don't do them. Or else you'll end up blowing this dude's flute or something like this child is doing. Jesus Christ, okay, I'm getting out of here ASAP. Are you sure you don't want to go run around and get cancer in this place so that dude can blow you a flute? He'll even make you a table for the secret base if you collect like 10,000 piles of ash or some shit like that. Uh, no, Joe. Tempting offer, but I don't want to waste 20 minutes giving the hero emphysema so some stranger can blow us a flute. Thank you, though. Ooh, oh, oh, bomb. Better be careful here. You know what these coughings can do. I'm sure Ruby will be okay. Look at our level advantage. Ooh, shit. Oh no, Ruby! Calm down, Joe. It's just a fucking video Donald? go, right? Uh, my deepest condolences, Joe. She did her best here. It's okay, Obama. It wasn't your fault. Actually, it was entirely his Shut fault. Shut up, Donald. Anyway, uh, George, any progress on who you want us to use? Uh, yeah, actually, Obama, perfect timing. How about you use this guy, uh, Ray Q. Aza? Hell yeah, that's what I'm talking about, George. Jesus, no guys, we are not using the goddamn box legendary on our team. Besides, that's way too late in the game for my liking. I want something that can be on the team for a while. Uh, Barack, I'm pretty sure we can get Rayquaza before we even have to beat all the gyms in this game. No way that's so broken, are you serious? Yeah, no, you can take a level 70 Rayquaza to the eighth gym leader in Elite Four. It's pretty damn stupid. And we definitely are not doing it. If we want to go out and catch the legendaries as a side quest, that's one thing. But definitely not as part of the team. Pick someone else, George. Yeah, and actually, George, send it in the Discord general channel without saying its name. I think we should still be able to keep it discreet from the viewers as a surprise factor. Oh, good catch, Joe. Yeah, we should still let them ponder over it, even if we all know who it's going to be. Viewers, you still get to do that whole naming the Pokemon, if you're right about it thing. So drop a nickname and who you think it will be in the comments. If you're right, 
We will put all the correct nicknames on a wheel and spin it to get the nickname. That goes for the water type we're going to get soon, too. Ooh, this thing's close enough. All right, I got the picture of the Pokemon I want you guys to use. Here, check it out. Oh, Christ, are you Ooh, joking me? Choice. Is that thing really even a Pokemon? Now, hold on, Donald. I think that kind of fits the bill here. We wanted an underappreciated, underrated Pokemon. And George is kind of delivering here. Jesus, okay, fine. Has anyone even suggested that as an encounter? Like, do we have nicknames for it yet? Donald, there's literally like over 1,000 comments on our past few episodes combined. I'm sure there were at least a few. Besides, the viewers still have a chance to guess what it is for the time being. Okay, regardless, I think we should move on for now. We're probably giving away too much information just by talking about it. We ought to switch the topic. Okay, well, good point, Obama. I had something I wanted to talk about. I know we still have a long way to go, but... Do any of you guys have an idea on what game we should play after we beat Emerald here? I'm having a ton of fun with this, and I feel like there's a lot of potential for other games we could play. Ooh. Are you guys going to stick to Pokemon, do you think, or do you want to branch out a little bit? I would destroy you all in a Mario Kart circuit or in Smash Ultimate. Okay, first of all, George, if we are playing Smash, we will be playing Melee as any civilized gamer Big should. Big facts. And secondly, I'm open to the idea of other Nintendo games, but we should be careful because we've invested pretty heavily into the Pokemon audience. And that's what our viewers want. For now, let's just talk about which mainline Pokemon game we would do next, if any. Fair enough, Donald. That's at least a good starting point. Obviously, I'm a little biased towards Generation 5, so I think Pokemon Black or White would be good for us to do. Gen 5 is pretty hit or miss among Pokemon fans, but to me, it's got the most engaging storyline and some sick Pokemon for us to choose from. It's also reasonably difficult and should make for some exciting gameplay. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily mind a Generation 5 game, but considering we are doing Generation 3 right now, I think we should take it one step at a time and move on to Generation 4 next. Oh, you fucking would say that, Donald, you sinno lover. Don't act like you're saying all that because of Generation Order. You just love Gen 4 mechanics. First of all, Joe, you are absolutely correct in saying I love Generation 4 mechanics, but I was also willing to appease your love for Generation 2 and say we can do Heart Gold or Soul Silver instead of the Sinnoh games. Who is this bitch hogging the computer? Tell her to hurry up, Barack. I don't like it when NPCs become self-aware and gain autonomy like this. It reminds me too much of iRobot. Calm your paranoid ass down, George. It's just Lynette. She invented the PC system here in the Hoenn region. I don't know if it's just me, but having this chick in this game is completely unnecessary. They already had Bill in the first couple of games, and now they are just completely recycling the material with this chick. And she never even shows up again after this. Actually, we can go visit her in her house down in the next road, and she'll give us a doll for our secret base or some shit, if I remember correctly. Oh, hell yeah. Definitely stop and grab that doll, Barack. I'm trying to get as many decorations for the base as I can. Yeah, no, I definitely will not be doing that, Joe. I'm sure your ass will have forgotten by the time we get there anyway. Uh -huh. So I don't really feel bad about it. Whatever, man. Fuck you. I'll get them all myself sometime. Viewers, prepare for a Joe Biden special episode down the line where I make the sickest goddamn secret base like no one ever was. Just you wait. Did you just say like no one ever was to describe yeah, a treehouse, Joe? Oh, my God. Literally all of you blow my nuts. Anyway, Donald, yeah, I'm cool with Heart Gold or Soul Silver. That would be acceptable considering... They are slightly worse remakes of my favorite generation. Okay, well, Joe, yeah. wait, what the Brock, hell? what in the cringe? Yeah, Brock, please, never meow on camera ever again, you freak show. Anyway, yeah, Joe, I would prefer, honestly, to play Platinum, but I can settle for the Joe Toe remakes as well. Okay, I'm all right with that then. Wait, hidden item here, I think. Holy shit, did a chicken nugget make that crater hole oh that's insane? God, no, George, you knucklehead, it's a nugget of gold, not a chicken nugget. But now that you say it, maybe it's there because it fell from space and created that crater. I've never thought of that before. Good accidental catch, George. I got you a Blama Llama. That was that fatty that will teach us moves if we give him a heart scale. Could be useful down the line. Yeah, I'm sure we will be coming back in the future to at least see what moves we can get on our team. Also, this kid gives us the Dig TM and the Tunnel Maniac or Fossil Maniac or whatever is further down. But he is literally useless in this game. Ooh, you see, Barack, this is where my superior knowledge of Pokemon Emerald comes into play. I hope Grumpy Gengar appreciates this one. So in only Pokemon Emerald, not in Ruby or Sapphire, the player can return here after they beat the champion, and there will be a secret underground passage that takes us all the way back to the desert route. 
At the end of the little path, you can find whatever fossil you didn't pick up in the Mirage Tower. It's a cool call back to how the Mirage Tower collapsed and the leftover fossils sunk into the ground. Get bodied, Obama. Yeah, get absolutely what? shit on Barack. Wait, why the hell does it have to be me getting bodied? I, for one, appreciate the tidbit of knowledge. I did not know that at all. Thank you, Donald. Yeah, you're welcome, Obama, for shitting on you. All right, you. never mind. <laughs> Screw you, Lil D. Anyway, I'm not going to teach anyone that. dig just yet. It will probably be useful for Flannery, but I want to make sure we give it to the right Pokemon, and I don't know if we want that on Sky or Titan. Also, I'm definitely not using Roar. That one will probably get pawned off eventually. Yeah, Roar sucks balls. Definitely sell that shit. Also, Ruby never learns Thunderbolt through level up, so we're going to want to get the TM for her. I know we can get it from Watson after we beat the fifth gym, but we can also buy it from the game corner. That might be worth it. Considering it's such a good move, we might want it on another party member, too. That's a good point, Joe. At some point, we are going to have to spend a lot of money on game corner TMs. That being said, we do get the amulet coin after beating Norman, and there are a lot of trainers that give us a bunch of money. And considering you never really need that much money in Pokemon games after a certain point, I think we will be fine. Hey, Joe, wasn't there something down on this route that you were supposed to remember or some shit? Oh, hmm, was there? That kind of rings a bell. Uh, shit, uh, hey, Joe, what do you think of the idea of our next playthrough being a Nuzlocke of some good sort? Good save, Obama. Would you enjoy that? Ooh, well, thank you for asking, Brock. I think a Nuzlocke could be a good idea. It could keep the game fun and exciting. That being said, I do have a few concerns with it. I think the idea of a consistent party is appealing to viewers especially because of the obvious attachment they can create over time. For example, people are surely getting attached to Ruby because of her sentimental value to me. And similarly to Mango, because of his excellence in each gym battle so far. Okay, I see your point, Joe, but I think there's value to the Nuzlocke that you aren't considering. Let's say people get attached to key members of the team in the run, but in a tragic turn of events, one of them faints in a battle. Don't you think that could be great from a storytelling perspective as well? Well, then you heal the Pokemon in question. What am I missing here, guys? Okay, well, that's a good point. I guess we never actually explained the rules of a Nuzlocke to you, George. And it's, it's probably a good thing you're here for this because I'm sure there's a handful of viewers that would appreciate an explanation. Go for well. it, Barry. You're the explainer in the group. All right, so basically there's two core rules of a Nuzlocke, George. The first one is that we can only catch the first Pokemon per new route that we come across. Uh, there's some caveats to that rule, like how we can skip a Pokemon we've already caught before, or we can decide to just allow any Pokemon that's given to us by an NPC, but basically the point of the rule is that we are limited in how many team members we can add throughout the entirety of the run. Okay, got it. So generally only one new Pokemon per new route or town or whatever? Exactly. If you open up the Pokemon's description in the menu, it will show exactly what route you caught it in. So only one Pokemon per whatever it says in their description. Yeah, that's a good way of approaching it. As for the second rule, George, and the relevant one to your question earlier, if a Pokemon faints in or outside battle, it is considered dead and we can never use it again. Ooh, shit, so it's like Pokemon hard mode then. Like, you can actually lose if you aren't careful. Precisely. I would say that those are the basic rules of the Nuzlocke, but a lot of people add other rules to make it even more difficult. Then it becomes what is commonly known as a hardcore Nuzlocke. These rules include no items in battle, no leveling past the next boss battle's highest level Pokemon, and making it so you can't switch your Pokemon out for free when a trainer is about to send a new one out against you. Damn, that sounds needlessly intense. Why would you ever want to do that? Well, simple, really, George. It's hardcore rules for hardcore players, and that's just what we do. All right, chill out, virgin. That was Ooh. nowhere close as cool as how it sounded in your head, I promise all you. All right, whatever I'm tired of getting called a virgin here, I guarantee you all I'm the only one with an active sex life here. Barack, getting pegged by Michelle does not count as an active sex life. Oh my God, Barack, you're getting owned today. Well, I bet if we asked Michelle, she would say that Barack is getting owned every day. Mm. Stop, stop, he's already dead. Fucking hell, that was good, George. You definitely need to come back in the future. You guys are terrible friends, you know that? Yep. Sure do, Obama. Oh, hey, we're friends? Whatever, I know that I could easily rip you guys apart at any second, so if you need to feel good about yourselves by ganging up on me, then whatever. Just know, Donald, that I'm not visiting you in prison.
Oof, okay, you got your lick in Barack. That's good, because it's probably about damn time we commentate on the actual gameplay in front of Wait, us. Wait, what the hell? This place does not look at all like I remember. Well, yeah, Joe, they actually dramatically changed the color scheme in Emerald. The overall layout is the same, but in Ruby and Sapphire, the surface texture is brownish yellow, where it's pretty much gray in Emerald. Yeah, both of them are pretty sick, though, if you ask what me. What the hell? Did we just stumble onto a clan meeting or something? Yeah, these are the evil teams Donald mentioned earlier when he was shitting on my generalized explanation of Pokemon. Okay, and so the evil guys are the Bloods and the Crips. And the Crips are led by a guy that can't find clothes that fit him properly. Got it. Sounds like you're up to speed, George. Yeah, the evil teams in this game are stupid as hell. They just want to fuck with the ocean and stuff the whole game. Nothing that actually makes sense. Okay, whatever I'm done defending the evil team's motivation in this game, I have to admit they are a bit lackluster compared to most other evil organizations in the series. Anyway, they tell us here that something is going on at the top of Mount Chim, which is where we actually started the episode off. So I'm going to have to backtrack over there. But before that, there are some trainers beyond this cave that provide some good experience. I'm going to take them on and then probably end the episode. Oh, hell yeah. Obama, give Ruby that sweet, sweet experience. My baby is getting ready to evolve. Yep, that's the plan, Joe. I hope these trainers are enough. Wait, I feel like there's something special about this karate guy. Yeah, Donald, you're on to something. Notice how he gives us his phone number to battle him again. If we rematch him a few more times, eventually he will have a May Champ that will be holding a black belt. We can thief that black belt off him, which gives a Pokemon a 10% increase to fighting type attacks. Probably not worth it for all that trouble, but cool nonetheless, considering you can't get it anywhere else in this game. Damn yeah, that's not worth it at all. We don't even have any fighting type attackers. Yeah, that is something that later games handle better. Not only did they get a boost in strength, but they are actually decently available in later gens. They are incredibly underwhelming and difficult to find in gens two and three. Good points, Joe, but I think that was partially because Game Freak wanted to slowly introduce the concept of held items and didn't want to create things too powerful for their time. So they clearly kind of just eased into it. Of course, nowadays, there are incredibly busted items that are meta-defining and necessary on some Pokemon, like the choice items, the life orb, heavy-duty boots, stuff like that. That's fair, Obama. I also didn't really consider how Game Freak needed to slowly create a meta over time, as opposed to just throwing things all together. Anyway, definitely switch Ruby out here. I'd hate to see it give the Makuhita guts, and then it crits us right after we got to this level. Good looks, Donald. Nothing too significant really happened this episode, so I want to make sure we get to see this evolution to end things off here. You guys really seem to know how the ins and outs of this game work. You should do a competitive series or something. Oh, wow. Hi there, George. Forgot you were here. Buzz off, Donald. Sorry, I don't know shit about Pokemon. Hard to contribute. We actually are doing one, George. We will tag that in a second. For now, just sit back and enjoy this beautiful sequence. Yeah, Dil Zan, don't get cheeky with the advertisements this time, you dickhead. Shh, shut your face, Donald. Fine. The fuck? George, mute your damn mic right now. We're never having a normal evolution, are we? Jesus Christ. Oh my God, kick his ass, please, Obama. Oh shit, wait, could you guys hear that? George, you're never getting invited to this game ever again. Uh, yeah, George, we could hear you slamming that popcorn that entire evolution. There's no doubt in my mind that was on purpose, George. No, 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 it definitely was not. I thought I muted my mic. I made this popcorn back when you guys were talking about knuckle locking each other or whatever, because I was so disinterested from the conversation, I needed something to snack on. Wait, George, who? Well, me, I'm the one who- Fucking asked. Oh shit, Joe's on his demon mode now. Better back up, George. Nah, he won't stay mad at me. Oh, come on, man. Would you just forgive me already? It was an honest mistake. I thought I muted my mic. No, George, you son of a bitch, you ruined the most important evolution in the game to me. I won't forgive you for that. In fact, next episode, Donald, I will show you what real demon mode Joe is. I'm going to absolutely obliterate Team Magma and then also Flannery. Just you fuckers watch. Oh, shit. I just got tingles down my spine, Joe. I can't wait to see it. All Joe, right, would you just give up already? I'm getting tired of hearing this soundtrack on Fast Forward. It's driving me crazy. No, Donald, I swear it exists. I've seen it before. I promise I'm not insane. Joe, stop the cap already. It doesn't exist. I would know I am the Generation 3 expert here. Donald, really? 
I bet on my life that I've seen it before. It happened once on my old Ruby file. I spent hours searching again, but I could never find it. I swear this time will be different. Jesus Christ, Joe, your geriatric ass doesn't have the time left in life to be doing this. Don't worry about me, Donald. I'm still in my prime. Biden 2024, baby. All right, let's get this stare. What the hell? What are you guys doing? Did you start without Obama, me? Obama, thank God you're here. Can you tell Joe there's no such thing as a random trainer climbing this mountain while we're on the cable car? What the hell? No, I've never heard of that before. Joe, do you really think that going up and down will just trigger a trainer out of nowhere? Obama, that's exactly what I said, but this smooth brain won't stop doing this. I just want to get started with the episode. Obama, I promise this guy exists. Just give me like a couple more attempts and then I'll give up, but I really want to prove this to you guys. You all think I'm crazy, but you're going to pay. The fuck? Oh, they're all going to pay. They're all going to pay the ultimate price. Jesus, chill, Joe. Jesus, all right, Mr. Reynolds. Chill the hell out. You really aren't helping your case. You're clearly insane. Yeah, can we just move on, please? We have viewers watching. There he is. There Holy he is. Shit, Fuck he exists. the viewers, Obama. There he is. I knew it wasn't a crazy. Jesus Christ. All right, Joe, congratulations. You definitely just proved you aren't crazy. Now, there's definitely no doubt in my mind. You are completely sane. Can you just progress the story now? With pleasure. Donald, you can suck it. We all saw it. The viewers saw it, I saw it, you saw it, Hussein Osama saw it. Don't call it. me that. Let's all begin this episode with the knowledge that I proved Donald wrong about Generation 3 Pokemon. Holy shit. Fine, good job, Joe. You are a Pokemon expert. Can you just do an intro now, for God's sake? Oh, uh, yeah, my bad. Viewers, welcome back to our President's Play Pokemon Emerald series. Last time, the three of us traversed through hey, that George. one cancer route, and then the Meteor Falls place with the Bloods and the Crips or some shit. And now we're at the top of a volcano. I don't really know what the hell is going on, honestly. I just have to fight a lot of fire trainers this episode. Beautiful intro, Joe. Thanks for taking your time to put together something thoughtful. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, what the hell is this guy feeding his poochie in it? Is it on crack or something? The dude's got his chest hair poking out of his deep V neck and everything. Definitely the type to be a coke addict. I wouldn't be surprised if his poochiena got a hold on the stash. That's what dogs do anyway. Incredible deductive reasoning, Donald. That's why you're the second most knowledgeable Emerald player after me. Oh, second most, my ass. Let's see you fight these trainers first, and then we'll talk Joe. Jesus Christ, did you guys skip your couple's therapy session today or something? Can you two act like normal human beings, please? You know what? Fine, Obama. I'm just glad that mountain trainer showed up. I was beginning to doubt myself, but now I'm as confident as I can be. Love to hear that. I'm going to destroy these bloods and then take out Flannery's hot ass by the end of this episode. Calm down, Joe. And maybe even beat her in a battle. Joe, that is fu- Actually, wait a second. Oh, you lucky bastard. She's 18 years old. You're okay this time, Joe. Mm, okay, you know what? Never mind then. Oh my God, Joe, Joe. you're going to hell and so are you, Dilzan. You know what, Joe? I'm over it. You just don't surprise me with anything anymore. The only thing that would be unexpected is if you actually managed to battle well today. Yeah, I'm getting desensitized to his perversity as well. Oh, shh. Oh, goodness, this is going to do some damage. Yep, well, safe to say I won't be surprised this episode then. Way to be consistent, Joe. Goodbye, Titan. Yeah, hate to say it, but a magnitude 9, Titan is fucking imploding after that one. Good shit, Joe. Donald, that's too oh, far. Oh, my God, Donald, you can't say that, you bastard. That's too much to joke about. If you're going to joke about anything, joke about my gameplay, not the Titan catastrophe. Oh, okay, we'll say less, Joe. You are a terrible trainer, and you are not going to be able to defeat Flannery. Oh, hop off, Donald. I lost one Pokemon to a magnitude 9 because I was rushing through it and arguing with you. If I wanted to take it seriously, I obviously would have just switched into Mango in the first place. Besides, you've already lost multiple Pokemon in your episodes, so All I right, don't want to hear Let me it. talk for a second here. This is going to be a difficult day of battling for you, Joe. Because of that, you're going to need all the support you can get from us. It won't be as mentally demanding as the showdown battles, but you will have to strategize if you want to beat Flannery with this team. We are not too well equipped for a fire type gym leader. So that being said, Donald, give Joe some support here. It is so draining seeing you two just bicker all episode. All right, fine, Barry. I like to give Joe some shit talk during these less important battles, but you're right. When it's an important battle, the pride of our team is on the line. So that's enough to make me want to lend my support. Joe, just try to focus up here and win some battles. Fair enough, yeah. See, Donald watched this 10 billion IQ play. I switched Titan out against the ground type. 
Is that up to your liking? Yep, glad to see you're thinking with your brain now. All right, I'll pretend that's progress. So Mango should be able to sweep through this Magma admin with ease, but Maxi is a little bit more difficult. He leads with an intimidating Mightyena, so you should probably lead with one of your special attackers, Joe. It shouldn't be a hard battle necessarily. His camera up doesn't really have any good moves at this point in the game. Okay, that works for me. Barack, good looks. Can either of you tell me what the hell they are doing up here? in the first place? Like, do we ever have to come back here for any significant plot points? Yeah, no, this is one of those many reasons as to why Team Magma is a terrible villain organization. They have a secret base or something down below the mountain. But for now, they are trying to cause the volcano to erupt and take out the whole region or something. Like, it's literally a kamikaze mission. I don't know why this is part of the game. What the hell? Why do they have a whole following of people that are okay with this? And what is up with the meteorite they're talking about? Okay, I'm glad you asked about the meteorite, because I think that part is pretty cool. Team Magma believes that it can be used as a trigger to cause the volcano to explode. Not much is explained about this, but there's a fan theory that the meteorite is actually somehow related to the red orb and has some implication into Groudon's reversion into primal form in later generations. Again, not much is explained here, but I think it is cool nonetheless. All right, stop jerking it to the lore of Team Magma's fetish for volcanoes, Barack. Not it's time it. for the maxi battle. Heal up Mango real quick, Joe, and let's take care of business here. Seriously, Obama, you're freaking the viewers out. You also need to be careful before the Crips find out about your obsession with these guys. They're not the goddamn Bloods and Crips guys, but whatever. Joe, good job remembering to switch in a special attacker first. This should be a pretty easy battle, all things considered, but you can definitely get unlucky. Maxi likes to spam sand attack, flinching moves, and supersonic, so just stay patient more than anything else. God damn it, of course he does. I swear this battle is gonna take like 15 minutes because we aren't going to be able to hit a move. You'll be fine, Joe, just believe in the team. It can't be that hard. That being said, we desperately need a water type. Yeah, that's big facts, Donald. It would be huge to have one for this episode, but unfortunately, none of the ones we want are available to use right now. That being said, after this episode, we should be able to move straight on to the fifth gym in the next episode, so we could potentially get our water type then. Wait, well, we get surf after we beat the fifth gym, but the only things on the water in this game are tentacles and magic carps, and we can't use those. What do you mean we can get an encounter then? Jesus Christ, I'm regretting picking Grovile. This moveset is absolute trash. We'll get Leaf Blade at 29. Don't worry, Joe. But Donald, you will have a fun episode next time because you will get the best grass type move in the game for Grovile, and you will get a gym battle. Also, after we beat him, we get access to Surf, and consequently, that gives us access to the Good Rod. Uh, that's what I'm talking about, Donald. The Good Rod opens up both the Whizcash and the Sharpedo line for us. Technically, Phoebus will be available to us, too, by that point. Holy shit, I'm getting absolutely boned here. Bullet Seed is ass, and he is just critting Yeah, whatever. Me. Skill issue, Joe. Anyway, Obama, that's a good point. I will probably take on the desert area for some training, but then do the Norman battle. But more importantly, it sounds like we finally are getting to the point where we have to decide on our water type. I cannot believe I have to switch up my level 26 starter from a level 24 Mighty Anna. That is embarrassing. Yeah, get wrecked, Joe. Anyway, yeah, Donald, based on the comments from the recent episodes, people are pretty heavily in favor of the two Pokemon that you and Joe are kind of tossed between. Uh, there were a lot of Sfeels, Whalmers, Corefishes, and maybe some others, but it's mainly between Whizcash and Sharpedo. Oh my God, and now I fucking miss my Joe, move. stop crying and get good at the game, please. This better not flinch. Ooh, feels bad. Holy shit, you have got to be joking me. Oh my God, what is happening? Joe, can you just hurry up and beat this guy already? Donald, did you not pay attention to anything that happened on the screen over the last two minutes? Truthfully, no, Joe, not at all. I was thinking about our future water type and how we are definitely getting a Sharpedo or a Melodic, one or the other. Okay, well then, you can shut the hell up for two reasons then. One being how I have been getting boned by RNG this battle. So now I'm just gonna have Mango sweep instead of trying to spread experience. And the other is how we are not getting either of those Pokemon, we will be getting Whizcash. To hell with that, Joe. Whizcash has more voters for it than any of the other water type. And it has Wiz in its name, just like Wizmer. Joe, the viewers are not goddamn voters. They are simply giving us nickname possibilities for whatever they want. 
The number of viewers choosing one specific Pokemon has no effect on which one we actually get. Oh, are you scared of a fair voting system, Donald? Can't say I'm surprised. Oh, my God. The hypocrisy in that statement, Joe. Obama, can don't you please tell Joe this. that we aren't getting a goddamn whiz cash? Honestly, I don't give a shit between those three Pokemon. Both of the ones I wanted have been completely ignored anyway. I'm going to stay out of this one and let you guys figure out a way to come to a conclusion yourselves. Don't include me until you figure it out. You know what? Fine. We have like 45 minutes of gameplay before we need to make a decision anyway. For now, I have more important things like getting down to the next town and planning out the gym yeah, battle. Yeah, Joey, we're going to be talking about this later. Viewers tell Joe that Wiz Cash sucks balls and Sharpedo is a better team member. Joe, turn back around. We need to grab the meteorite from that thing up there. We can give it back to the scientist in that ashy town and get the return TM from him. All right, good call, Barack. And Donald, stop brainwashing the viewers. Viewers tell Donald here that Wizcash is a much better Pokemon for our team, considering the broken water ground typing and the much needed bulk that our team is missing. Yeah, great. Let's just pit the viewers against each other, why don't we? Try to keep things civil in the comments, please. Why the hell is this lady up here? Wasn't this volcano going to explode in like two minutes if we didn't show up? She's a businesswoman, Joe. She's just trying to sell her cookies. And all those Team Aqua and Magma Goonies were her clientele. And you just ran them off. I would sue your ass Sucks if to I be were her. her. What the f- uh, Lydia, I couldn't care less about your shroomish eating poke blocks or whatever you're talking about. Delete this number. Damn, Joe, a random girl with a pretty name calls you and you're trying to block her. I'm proud of you. Barack, ever since the, that magnitude nine and then getting hacks that entire fight against Maxi, I'm over it. I just want to beat Flannery's ass and take a gym battle win for the squad, and it's taking way too damn long to get there. Calm down, Joe. We still have a whole lot of trainers before we get to Flannery. We have this whole route to get through still, and her gym is especially full of trainers compared to the ones we've been through so far. All right, fine, Obama. I just want to battle her already. That maxi fight pissed me off, and I'm trying to bring out that demon Joe that I promised last episode. Anyway, what the hell is this guy still doing here? Didn't we scare all of his friends away? Yeah, this is where they are building their secret base that I was talking about a few minutes ago. We come back later. Uh-oh, Roar, who's coming in? Oh, my God. Oh, hell yeah. Let's go Ice Spice. Joe, this thing is like four times our level. Please switch out here instead of just wasting our time. Now, nah, fuck that, Obama. Ice Spice can do it. See, look, he's not even attacking me. He's too scared. Joe, as soon as the AI randomly decides to click an attacking move, you are dead immediately. Oh, my God. Maybe Ice Spice can do it. That's the spirit. Thanks for believing, Donald. Holy shit, Joe. I'm being facetious. Ice Spice is dying in like two seconds. Please just kill this thing. Thank you. Oh, no. Joe, just go deposit this Wismer when we get down to the next town. We already have a couple water types to decide on for one of our next encounters. And we already know the other one because George decided on the piece of shit for us. Oh my God, fine guys. Let me just have this last episode with Ice Spice, please. Besides, she might be useful in the gym battle, just like how she was for the last one. All right, that's a fair point. Donald, when it's your turn next episode, you can deposit her, but she could be good to sack to overheats for this upcoming battle. Shh, don't let her hear you say that, Obama. She's literally unconscious in her Pokeball right now, Joe. Anyway, that brings up a good point about strategizing Joe. Her level 29 Torkoal is an absolute beast, and we don't have any good answers to it, if I'm being honest. Uh, we might hell? have to train up the team a little bit after we go through the gym trainers. I don't think we're going to be able to handle it at the rate we are at. Our Pokemon stats are severely outclassed by hers right now. Obama, what the fuck was that moan you let out in the middle of that? There was a spider on my desk. Sorry, guys. <laughs> All right, whatever. Anyway, yeah, Obama, I have Flannery's team pulled up on my second monitor here, and I agree, it's pretty scary. The sunny days, the overheats, the attracts, the possible paralysis from body slams, and overall, just the scary team. But I really don't think it's going to be as scary as Watson. We can actually do a little damage this time around. Also, that past battle, there actually gave me an idea on something we can do. But we can get back to that when we get there. I know I've been messing with you, Joe, but I think you'll figure things out. That being said, Joe, can you heal up our goddamn team? It's giving me anxiety. Don't say that, Donald. Anxiety is a mental health condition, and you shouldn't joke about it. Holy shit, Obama. What are you, a social justice warrior or some shit now? Take a chill pill, you fuck. Also, yeah, Donald, I don't need to heal. This team is full of warriors hardened by the experience of battle. They will live by the sword or die trying. All right, calm down, Rambo. It's not that serious. Also, something's weird with this double battle. 
Some random cyclist and some random picnicker are just hanging out on a secluded cliff staring at each other. I feel like we interrupted something here. Mind your business, Donald. These NPCs have lives, too. We're the main character, not the only character. Have some respect. All right. You know what, Joe? I should have known your creepy ass wouldn't see a problem with this whole situation. Obama, can you do what you do and change the subject for me? Yeah, sure, Donald. So after this battle, you should just have one left, and then we're down in Lava Ridge Town. Um, it, it's certainly uh, secluded by nature, yet very beautiful place. Honestly, one of my favorite areas in the entire region. What do you guys think of it? Thanks, Barack. I hate it. It's too hot, and there's too many old people. It reminds me of Florida, and fuck Florida and Ron DeSantis' conservative ass. All right, needlessly political, but whatever, Joe. What about you, Donald? I'm not a huge fan of it either. But the comparison to Florida and the fact that Joe dislikes it makes me like it a little bit more. That being said, I mainly don't care for it because it's just a bunch of retired old people and there's clearly not a good economy. The hell do you mean not a good economy? Well, not surprised you can't tell, you Democrat. The Hot Springs probably has an incredibly high cost of maintenance. And the only business in the area besides the center and mart is the remedy shop. And we all know how pseudoscientific those homeopathic medicines are. Guys, this looks like a bad idea, but it feels so right. Joe, please do not do it. Parkour. Jesus Christ, oh Joe. Oh my God, Joe, you fucking child. Do you even realize what you just did? Uh, ooh, yeah, I got us an item. What is it? Ooh, see, free money. You're welcome, Donald. Whatever, Joe. Yeah, now you have to go all the way back around, Joe. Our viewers, we'll get back to you in a minute, I guess. Okay, so I came back here to sell some stuff at the Mart, and now Donald here apparently wants to oh, teach us how you, to Joe. roll around like Diabito from Family Guy. So we're gonna do that real quick. Not exactly how the move works, but yeah, good thing you found this here, Joe. Rollout could be our saving grace against Flannery. So it is for sure good to have as an option. You can get this move all the way up to like 480 base power or something, so it can potentially be a one-hit KO on her Torkoal if we play our cards right. I think I still want to keep the low-commitment Rock Tomb around and Metal Claw is stab, and we can't get rid of Rock Smash. So I think Headbutt is the right choice here. Yeah, it sucks because Headbutt is our most reliable move on Titan, but hey, reliability isn't exactly Titan's greatest strength, is it? Oof, too soon, Donald. All right, we made it back in one piece. Sorry for that little detour, guys, but I just really wanted to do some ledge jumping. I felt like Alder from the Pokemon Black and White 2 games. My legs! Whatever, Joe, it ended up being a good thing for us since we got a useful move on Titan. Anyway, that lady gives you the why not egg. I don't think we need to waste our time with that. Yeah, more importantly, this guy's got the right idea. A hot sand bath with some egg lady giving us neck massages. This is the goddamn life. Oh, how could you not want to live here, Donald? I'm not saying I wouldn't want to live here, Joe. I'm just saying I don't respect the town from a fiscal point of view. Oh, fiscal schmiscal, Donald. Live a little, why don't you? Some of us actually care about the economy, Joe, unlike you and your student loan forgiving ass. All right, guys, that's enough. Joe, heal up the team and go get the charcoal and some items from that herbal shop and just get to the gym already. All right, fine, fine. Viewers, we'll see you there. All right, this is what I'm talking about. Finally at the meat and the potatoes of the episode, boys. I'm stoked. This is gonna be a good one. It smells like skunk in this bitch. Don't think that's skunk Joe. This is a fire gym right next to an herbal shop. Put two and two together here. Yeah, why do you think all this smoke is in the air, Joe? This is heinous. I must put a stop to this blasphemy. I'm gonna kill every trainer in here. All right, that's super dark, Joe, but I like the enthusiasm, I guess. Wait, my screen is glitched. What do you mean, Donald? Like the whole screen is black. Who are we up against right now? Uh, well, Joe is just about to kill a slugma. Slugma balls, Obama. Uh, I God got damn him. it, Donald. Are you serious? Seriously, Obama, you are just too easy sometimes. You got to be less gullible than that. For real. I got you with gulping earlier in this playthrough, and now Donald got you with slugma. I wonder who's going to be next. Fuck you. No one's going to be next. You won't get me again. Anyway, takedown is actually an okay move because our ability prevents recoil. But at 85% accuracy, I don't know if it's worth dropping any of our coverage moves here. Yeah, I agree it would be our strongest neutral hitting move, even after stab, but our other moves just provide better utility. And 85% accuracy isn't something I'd like to rely on. Yeah, honestly, Titan's moveset was really good for us in the previous few episodes, but now it's starting to fall off, in my opinion. Rock and steel moves are notoriously inaccurate in these early to mid-generation games. Big facts, Joe. Down the line, he's going to get better stab moves, but 
they're still gonna be inaccurate. I'm thinking rock slide and iron tail. We can probably afford to put earthquake on him too, but that's not until like the seventh gym or so, I think. This gym is so strange and people are just getting high in these random pits. Yeah, maybe you'll find your son in one of these. Ooh, good one, Barry. Well, hop off Barack. My family does not partake in these devilish activities. Easy peasy. Joe, you really need to heal up like ASAP. Yeah, Joe, that was close. Yeah, yeah, stop crying. I'll heal in a so shit. Get fucked. And that's what you get for rushing through things, Joe. There's a lot of trainers in this gym, and you just got a bunch of cheap healing items from that herbal shop. No need to be stingy. Yeah, yeah, lesson learned or whatever. It's not a big deal. These guys only have one Pokemon each anyway. Oh, wow, would you look at that? Donald. What the hell is a Kecleon doing in this gym? I thought Jesus, this was for Titan. fire types. Well, if I remember correctly from the electric gym, some random zigzagoon completely boned me with two critical hit thunderbolts. So I'm guessing this Kecleon is just gonna throw off some flamethrowers. Yeah, that's what Emerald gyms like to do, I think. The trainers are more concerned with the moves used as opposed to the actual types. I think there's a meta tight in here too that likes to use fire punch. Nothing like some good old meta titties, am I right, boys? Uh, sure, Joe. Whatever. Joe, you sound like a boomer trying to fit in with a young crowd, and you're not pulling it off. Yeah, and you're not pulling off that shitty-ass toupee, Donald. Joe, you psyduck. This isn't a toupee. It's my real hair. Oh, yeah, right, you snorlax. Google it, stunfish. All right, hey, guys, can you uh, shut the hell up for a second? I have an idea for a question of the day for the viewers. Didn't we already ask them to decide on Sharpedo or WizCash in the comments? Well, they can go comment again, Joe. Who cares? We asked them like a billion things every episode anyway. Good point. What do you got, Obama? Well, going through this gym puzzle has me wondering about all the other gyms in this game and across the Pokemon series as a whole. I was wondering about everyone's favorite gyms in the series, whether it be by design, puzzle ingenuity, the gym leader, whatever. What do you guys got? Ooh, okay, that's a good one, Barack. If I had to pick a single gym in the series, hmm, hmm. You know what, that's a harder question than I thought. Joe, you go first. All right, for me, it's probably the ghost gym in Sinnoh, and specifically the platinum one with the shapes on the doors and stuff. Joe, what the fuck, that one is basic as hell. Why do you like it so much? Well, it just reminds me of those shapes in the slots toys. I like to do those from time to time in the Oval Office to keep my mental fortitude in tip-top shape. Joe, I'm gonna pretend you didn't just say what you said before that battle. Barack, what's your favorite gym? Oh, mine is pretty easy. Definitely the Dragon Gym in Generation 5. That is easily one of the most badass setups in all of Pokemon. Unforgettable design, in my opinion. All right, that's a pretty base choice, honestly. Much better than Joe's, that's for sure. Oh, blow me, Donald. You haven't even given an answer yet. Good point, Donald. You still have to share yours. I have no idea where the hell I'm going. Okay, I got it. I'm gonna have to go with the last gym in this game with the breaking ice puzzle. I thought it was very cool when I first realized what was happening, and the sound effects are incredibly satisfying. It's also one of the only gyms where you can be rewarded for your problem solving by not having to face any of the trainers. I think that was pretty clever of Game Freak. Good answer, Donald. Viewers, let us know what you got. Anyway, Joe, good job getting to Flannery. Yeah, I'm not sure how I did it, but I'm actually gonna do a little more prep work, viewers. We'll be back in a second. All right, so this is like 30 minutes later for us, but hopefully just a second for you guys. Check out the team real quick. Mango is at level 28 and poisoned, so we can activate his guts ability, and the rest of our fighters are at level 27. I think that should be enough to take care of Flannery here. Also, Sky has the soft sand because I taught him the dig TM. His moves are trash, but dig makes him actually useful in this gym. Yeah, that was a good little grinding session, Joe. Thanks for doing that. Any overheat still? decimates any member of the team, but that's just the nature of the beast. We'll have to just do our best. Okay, also, Titan is getting the quick claw again. And actually, I'm looking at her team now, and I'm more concerned with Ruby getting paralyzed from a body slam than a burn. None of her moves actually have burn chances, surprisingly. All right, Joe, sounds like the Prevagen is doing its job today. You love to see it. Blow me, Trump. All right, Joe, I'm excited for this one. The squad is looking immaculate. It's incredibly rewarding to see how well they have progressed. I remember when we were first arguing about what starter to take, Donald's excitement when we finally encountered the wild Talo, and how well those two handled the first gym together. We've come a long way, boys. Oh shit, that was dumb of me. Uh, well, I agree with you, Obama, but we're gonna have to save the waterworks for later. We have one of our biggest obstacles yet in front of us. It's time to nut up or shut up, boys. 
Let's do this, Joe. All right, team, fully healed items on everyone. That's all I can do. I'm as nervous as can be, but it's finally time. That's good, Joe. That just means you understand what's at stake. The yerkes dodson law of optimal arousal states that we ought to be a little nervous if we want to execute at our best. Holy shit, Obama, you're such a nerd, I can't believe you just said that. Joe, don't be nervous, just treat it like any other battle, you'll be all right. Battle? Donald, I don't give a shit about the Pokemon, I'm nervous because look how goddamn sexy Flannery is. Jesus Christ, Joe. I just want to make sure she sees how powerful and dominant I am. Joe, we both know she'd be the dom in that relationship. Oh my God, can you two shut up about this? We are losing viewers as we speak. We have officially lost all three of the female subscribers we gained over the past five weeks. Yeah, yeah, whatever, Obama. Anyway, Guts Mango is an absolute beast. He's gonna one-shot these two shitters at the front of her party with ease. I'm just gonna let him do his thing here. No need to even think about it. Absolute facts, Joe. Mango is my goat. Fuck Armada. That being said, her next two Pokemon would live the attack and kill back with a single overheat. So you might want to plan around that one. Good call, DT. Joe, you probably want to keep Mango around because Guts boosted secret power is our highest damage output. Yeah, I think I have to sacrifice. Uh, not you, our little bug thing here. Get out there, huh? Poor Nincata. Dude's getting sacked every gym battle. Can't help but feel bad for it. Oof, overkill much flannery. This overheat probably kills the entire generational cicada swarm. Oh, seven Nincata, your ass probably can't be revived from this one. Yeah, thankfully this camera up doesn't have a white herb, so his special attack is severely dampened by doing that. Okay, so her Torkoal has the white smoke ability, meaning I can't lower its stats with Screech, so I might as well send Sky in now. This is his best chance to be useful for us. Makes sense to me, Joe, and what the hell, why is it using Tackle? It probably didn't see a kill with Overheat since its special attack is lowered, so it just went for a random move. We got a little lucky there. Sky is clutching up big time. This damage is massive for us. Well, Overheat definitely kills now, so don't rely on him too much. Yeah, it's probably coming here. Miss? Yeah, that would have been clutch. It's all right. She's clearly not in heal range, and Mango can come in and do his thing again. That Torkoal is a menace for sure, but we still have a few team members to take her on. Oh, Seven Sky, we'll win this for you. Yeah, stay focused, Joe. You're through the first part, but now you have her ace to deal with. She still has both of her heels, too, so it's not going to be easy. All right, thanks for the caution, boys. I think I need to just keep Mango in now and just let him do as much damage to the Torkoal as possible. I think I see what my best path to victory is now. We'll let you talk it out, Joe. You've come a long way this series. Let's see what you can do. We're in the final stretch now. Clutch up, JB. It's all you. Oh. Jesus, what an absolute behemoth. Yeah, like base 140 defense or something, too. I hate to say it, but Mango is outclassed this time around. Jesus, all right, all right. It's fine, guys. I still have my plan. Oh, sevens for Mango. Oh, seven. Fly high, big guy. All right, what's next, Joe? Okay, so besides Ice Spice, only Ruby and Titan are left. Ruby could come in and throw off some sparks, but that will probably just put her down into heal range a couple times. And we won't actually make any progress. I I think I need to use Ruby to paralyze her to maximize the chances that Titan can get a meaningful rollout going. All right, I like that, Joe. Plus, we can get this paralysis off. And if luck is on our side like it was for Watson, we can get a couple full paras, too. Yeah, Ruby is fucking indestructible. We didn't even need to teach rollout to Titan. All right, well, let's just see what happens. Hopefully, you guys are right. Ooh, shit, that's going to hurt. Yeah, I think you jinxed us, Donald. All right, so new plan. Ruby just got bodied. It's time for Titan to use rollout. Oh, sevens for Ruby. Uh, again, I guess, uh, anyway, that paralysis may be our ticket to victory. Oh, seven, Ruby, you were a good girl. The best of the good girls. Okay, now, a few options here. Honestly, Joe, you're, you could commit to the rollout. You could get the more reliable damage with Rock Tomb or even lower his defense with Rock Fuck Smash. Fuck all that noise, Obama. Go big or go home. Roll one out for the boys, all Titan. Right, we're committed now. That's what I'm fucking talking about, Joe. You're realer than I thought. Holy shit, critical hit into paralysis. We can end it this turn, boys. And we hit. Is this the dagger? Come on, Titan. Come on, Titan. No! Oh, oh so please, close. no overheat. Oh, shit. 30% to paralyze and end our dreams. Cross your fingers, boys. Oh, thank God. Phew, all right. No paralysis. I can't even click buttons. I just have to let Jesus take the wheel. Come on, connect. Let's go. Free turn here. 
If we hit this next attack, we win. Come on, Titan, do it for Ruby, for Sky, for Mango, for Ice Spice. Hell that's fucking it, that's yes, it. It's Titan. over. We did it. Another glorious battle in the books, boys. These gyms are stressful as shit. They're really taking years off my life. Joe, you're the goddamn president of America, and this is what is stressing you out? Uh, yes. Anyway, boys, I agree. That was an immaculate battle. Joe, you handled it incredibly well, despite Flannery's uh, charm. Thanks, boys. I couldn't do it without you. Hopefully the viewers enjoyed it as much as we did. Joe, how about you send us off here? We've been at it for a while today. Okay, I will do that. Viewers, thank you for making it to the end of the episode today. A lot of fun stuff happened in this one, so we hope you all appreciated it. Make sure to leave a comment on your favorite gym design in the Pokemon series and leave us a like and a subscription while you're at it. It means a whole lot to the creator and, and it inspires him to get these episodes out to you as soon as possible. That reminds me, Dil Zan wanted to make sure everyone knows he is planning on having a couple special episodes in the near future on top of the normal playthrough episodes. So be on the lookout for those. They will be titled a little differently, but they will still be relevant to the series, so make sure to watch them. Good looks, Obama. I'm really looking forward to those. Anyway, everyone make sure to check out our Pokemon Showdown Ladder Climb series if you're into that stuff too. It's a ton of fun and easy to get into if you want to understand the basics of competitive Pokemon. All that out of the way, Flannery, my queen, I'm going to have to leave your gym now. I will never you forget so you. You were so close, Joe. And you are irreplaceable in my heart. All right, cringe lord. Just say bye already. Oh, it's, it's, it's me. Jesus Christ, Joe. I didn't mean it, my love. Oh, my God, editor. Just end the video, please. All right, there we go. We're recording. Let's get it, boys. Okay, welcome, everyone, to episode nine of the President's Play Pokemon Emerald series. Last time, Joe had himself a battle-filled episode against Team Magma on Mount Chimney and against Flannery in the Lava Ridge Gym. Any chance you'd go back through the gym puzzle so we can talk to her again? Not a chance in hell, Joe. Uh, you can call her up on the Pokey Nav in your own time. But we have a lot of stuff to get through today. Yeah, we sure do. Off screen, we finished that conversation with May because Joe was experiencing a dopamine overload after talking to Flannery and her back to back. She ended up giving us the go goggles. Jesus, look at our poor team. So now we can go check out that desert area. Yeah, we can get some good training in there for sure, but definitely need to heal the... Oh my God, I do not give a shit. Madeline, did she actually just call me to tell me she lost a battle? Does she think we're that close? Who the fuck even is Madeline? I, I don't know and I don't care because you're right. We need to get some training done in the desert before we take on our next gym. This might be a, an extra long episode depending on how all the trainers go and whatnot. So viewers, if we end up cutting around more stuff than usual, please understand. Yeah, we kind of have a goal of making sure we advance the plot in each episode. And the next plot point after the fourth gym is going straight to the fifth gym. So we got to take on that today. Exactly. I'm excited, though. The Norman gym and the fight itself are both pretty fun ones. I'm glad I get to do it myself. What the hell is so fun about the normal gym? You literally just walk through a bunch of doors. There's like nothing particularly appealing about it. Well, Joe, I'm not surprised your newbie ass can't appreciate the gym style where you pick the battle specialty of each of your opponent. You can play around their particular play style to your advantage, and I always thought that was kind of cool. I can appreciate that, Donald, but I will admit it isn't exactly the most engaging gym design, all things considered. All right, whatever. Agree to disagree, I guess. Anyway, yeah, this hiker has a point. Where the hell is the fossil tower? Isn't it supposed to be right here? Ooh, you know what? I have heard that Mirage Tower actually only spawns if we have talked to the fossil maniac back in Fallerbor Town. So I guess that guy does have some importance in the main story as well as the post game after all. SMH, Donald, you claim to be the fossil maniac expert, but you didn't even know that, huh? Okay, I never claimed to be the fossil maniac expert. I simply claim to be more knowledgeable on the subject than Barack, which is all I actually care about. Oh, so you're literally just a hater and that's all you want to be? Is that what you're saying? No, I just want to prove to our viewers that I am, in fact, the best Pokemon player here because for some reason they tend to think of you as the most knowledgeable one in the call. Well, I think I've convinced them with my flawless Pokemon showdown performance so far. Wouldn't you think that is a good indication of overall game knowledge? Not yet, Obama. That sample size is far too small. Besides, Donald and I have each only lost one game. That's not a fair comparison. Thank you, Joe, but I hope you don't think that you saying that means you get to be in the running for best Pokemon player here, because you're trash. Oh, fuck off, Donald. You're literally getting your ass beat by a level 21 ball toy while you have a level 27 evolved grass type out. Don't call me trash, you poser. Yeah, Donald, you're kind of getting smoked right now. Oh, both of you can blow me. I'm getting boned by RNG, and you know it. Sky, you better break through confusion here. 
unlucky. Jesus Christ. You are awful at this game, Donald. Joe, I literally left him in the red with bullet seed. Skill then he issue. confused me with Psybeam, and now skill I have hit issue. myself three times in a row. That's complete RNG bullshit. Skill issue. Not a skill issue, so stop saying that. Anyway, this just further highlights the need for us to get Leaf Blade on Sky, which we should get in, honestly, just a few minutes, Donald, if you continue to prioritize his training. Thank God Sky can finally have an actually respectable attack on his moveset. I think he'll be the easiest one to train out here in the first place. I'm guessing there's just going to be a bunch of ground and rock types. Yeah, the crappy part is it would actually be pretty ideal to keep him in the red here so you can make sure to kill everything thanks to the overgrow ability, but the sandstorm would ruin that entire strategy. Yeah, the fact that weather is permanent in Generation 3 honestly feels like an oversight to me. That's such a broken concept. It's no wonder that Sandstream Tyranitar absolutely runs the entire Gen 3 competitive meta. Well, I would say that it's broken because of the importance of weather in the stories of Generation 3 in the first place. It kind of makes sense that it's overpowered because Kai, Ogre, and Groudon are supposed to be overpowered. It's also pretty cool that Rayquaza gets an ability to negate those two, given how the main story unfolds later on. Yeah, I guess you have a point with that one, Donald. Speaking of Pokemon meta, did you guys see the new DLC news for Scarlet and Violet? Oh, hell yeah, I did. They're bringing back all the starters. I'm so excited. Joe, that's like the only thing in that announcement that nobody cares about. Oh, hop off, Donald. I finally get to use Chikorita again, the best starter of all time. The fuck? Well, I was more Joe so thinking, okay, never mind. Joe Chikorita is objectively the worst starter of all time. You take that back right terrible now. Terrible typing, terrible stats, terrible moveset, and performs terribly in the region it's in. Donald, I don't care about that. She's literally so cute. Didn't you ever watch the anime? Joe, you can't call her objectively the best and then talk about how cute she is. All right, fine. Well, then what stupid starter Pokemon is your guy's favorite if you're so smart, huh? That's actually kind of a tough one for me. Donald, do you want to go first while I think? Easy. Chimchar. Okay, Donald, can you please explain why the first of the Blazik and Line ripoffs is your favorite Well, starter? my answer is based on actual objectivity, unlike yours. Please elaborate on that one for us. Okay, so basically, Joe, Considering Platinum is the best game in the series, the starters obviously play a significant role in that. Most importantly, Infernape is an insane glass cannon that can sweep through so many important battles. His mixed coverage is crazy for the whole game and is an absolute S-tier Pokemon for any Nuzlocke. He also looks cool as hell and was also sick in the anime. I know you all remember that Paul fight we talked about recently. Damn good take, Donald. The Chimchar line is sick for sure. We might get Leaf Blade here, by the way. Oh, please, yeah, let this be enough experience. It's going to be close. Ah, oh, oh, shit, it's so going to be another battle, boys. That's all right. Anyway, yeah, thanks for asking, assholes. I think I know my favorite starter now. I'm probably going to have to go with Oshawott. Wait, so did we all just end up choosing the Pokemon we have on our end screen? Are you surprised we literally picked them out ourselves? Yeah, I'm glad you asked. Oshawott is probably my favorite because I really liked using the Hisuian Samurott in Legends of Arceus. That's it? Yeah, pretty lame reason, Barack. Okay, well, fuck both of you. It's also a cool design and was funny in the anime. That's a little bit better, I guess. Okay, I think that makes a good segue for a comment question of the day, don't you think? Ooh, good looks, Joe. Yeah, viewers, why don't you tell us your favorite starter line and why? I'm interested to hear what you guys think. Okay, well, I was more so thinking of how they can explain how Chikorita is the best starter instead of the shit picks you guys have. But I guess that works, too. Joe, I'm willing to bet that not a single soul in the comments will say that Chikorita is their favorite starter. Donald, are you just anti-healthcare or something? Why has Sky been in red health this entire time in the desert? It's punishment for almost losing to a ball toy. A little harsh, Donald. That being said, we level up to 29 here and finally get Leaf Blade. I've been waiting for this moment for like eight episodes ever since we taught him Bullet Seed. I knew it was going to be trash for us. Yeah, this is a pivotal moment in the run. Hmm, actually, I think we don't need it. Donald, oh, no! Son of a bitch, stop trolling. Jesus, chill out, you pansies. I'm just messing around. Of course we're learning the move. That being said, Leaf Blade's animation and sound is way too damn cool to use for the first time while the red health sound is going off. I'm saving it for the next battle. You know what, Donald? I can appreciate that. That's a very cultured statement. We ought to savor the moment, and it would be hard to do so right now. You guys are children. Donald just killed a sand slash with Leaf Blade. I knew you wouldn't understand, Joe. Just have some patience. We will get there soon. For now, I'm just gonna let the rest of the team take care of this battle. Yeah, Joe, how hard can it be? They're only level 22, and we have multiple fully evolved Pokemon on the squad already. I don't know, man. Sand Slash is pretty physically bulky. Chill out, Joe. I bet Mango and Ruby can take care of this whole thing in like 20 seconds. Just watch. One eternity later. Oh my God, it's finally over. Thank Christ! 
That literally took like four minutes for no goddamn reason. You are so stupid, Donald. Oh, hop off, Joe. I didn't know that Sandvale gives Sand Slash the, the fucking invisibility cloak from Harry Potter. We literally missed like six moves in a row at one point, and it just kept spamming defense curl. Whatever, whatever it's done, we can move on now. Donald, please just get us out of the godforsaken desert. Please, I don't even care about Leaf Blade anymore. I just want to get out of here. Fine, well, let me actually heal up Sky now in case there are more trainers here. I don't even know if there are, honestly. I think there's just the Regirock cave. No trainers, but I think there is actually a TM down at the bottom. You should actually go pick up. Can't remember which one, though. Ooh, good looks, Barack. Hopefully it's something useful considering how agonizing this whole desert route has been. Jesus Christ, this is officially the worst route in the entire game. I'm getting us out of here right now. All that for the Sandstorm TM. Okay, but at least you finally got some good levels for the team. I feel a lot more comfortable going into Norman's gym now that Sky can throw off some actually reliable damage now. Yeah, and there, we can appreciate the sweet, sweet thing that is the leaf blade animation and sound. Oh, hell yeah, or maybe even now. Definitely now. Are you kidding? That animation plus the super effective sound after? This is about to be orgasmic. Viewers, you're in for a treat. Okay, some boys are in the general channel. I just sent a message for them to hop in here so they can experience this. The fuck you guys want? We're in the middle of zombies on ascension right now. George, I'm about to kill this crawler. I just want to play five already. That's my favorite zombies map. Okay, first of all, John Five is a shit zombies map because that crazy COVID scientist always steals my guns. What the hell is COVID? Yeah, besides John, anytime we play that map, you make us restart until you get to play as yourself, which is bullshit. Can everyone just shut the hell up for five seconds so we can listen to this masterpiece real quick? Thank you, Barack. Okay, here we go. God, that oh, is so damn sexy. Yeah. There's something seriously wrong with your guys' heads. Oh yeah, like how they aren't all over the back of a limousine. Oh my God, God Joe. damn Joe, that may be too far. Wait, what is that supposed to mean, Joe? Uh, don't worry about it. John, let's just get back to our game. You guys suck for making us watch that crap, by the way. Well, those two are just idiots with no respect for video game culture. Joe, that was the craziest diss I've ever heard you drop on someone. For real. Yeah, I'm not quite sure where that came from. Honestly, I was just kind of pissed. I invited them to the call for something special to us, and they didn't respect it the same way we did. Anyway, we're past that now. Let's get on with the story here. All right, so before we head back to Petalburg, I wanted to do a couple things in Slateport here. Uh, I'm pretty sure we can buy more of the secret power TMs here. But more importantly, we can get Hidden Powers too, which have a chance to be some cool type coverage for some of our team. Yeah, Hidden Power is actually pretty interesting in Generation 3. For all intents and purposes, it's gonna be a random type with a random base power between 30 and 70. The type and power is actually based on a formula utilizing the Pokemon's IVs as variables, but we're not about to calculate all that for a regular playthrough. Yeah, I'm still gonna give it to our guys that could use some potential type coverage. I'm thinking Ruby for sure, and then maybe Sky, because I'm tired of trying to make Fury Cutter good. That works for me. It could be good on Mango too, but his coverage is already decent. We don't need to do that. Plus isn't Hidden Power special? Why would we want that on a Swellow? Well, that's another thing about it, Joe. It is special in Generation 4 and on after the physical special split was created, but for now, it is still dependent on the type it becomes. So if we get like a 70 base power ice type hidden power for Manectric, that would be absolutely insane. But there's also a chance it's like a 30 base power physical normal move or something that we don't care about. Yeah, but honestly, it's still fun to have and test out. I like trying to figure out the type it is by using it against enemy trainers Ooh, and slowly eliminating the options based on type effectiveness. Joe, the secret base stuff will be on your own time. So just come back here and buy them yourself. All right, so I got the hidden power TMs I wanted. And the second thing here is a bunch of these soda pops. So I'm gonna buy a whole bunch of these real quick viewers. We'll cut all this out. All right, like 25 bottles of soda later, we're probably fine for now. Time to finally make our way to the gym. Sounds like a plan, Donald. I'm looking forward to seeing how you handle it. Hey guys, I just wanted to pop in real quick and say that move animation was sick as hell. Damn straight. I wanna play and use it sometime. I just needed to act cool in front of Kennedy. All right, George, maybe you can come in and learn how to play sometime if the viewers are okay with you taking an episode sometime down the line. Maybe we'll let you do the Safari Zone or something more casual. That's a good idea. I'd be cool with that, Donald. George, no offense, but given your inexperience with the games, you probably shouldn't be in charge of important battles or anything. 
but maybe you can come in and do a special like catching the legendaries. Catching or legendaries? That sounds sick. Yeah, I'd love to do that. Okay, we'll plan on letting you do that, but that won't be for a while, George. But we'll keep you posted. Okay, okay, thanks, guys. Just let me know whenever. Anyway, Kennedy's dumbass probably killed our crawler by now. I gotta go. All right, well, that was surprisingly wholesome. I'm glad he admitted to that. Yeah, I think we were planning on doing a special with the legendaries. Anyway, I guess teaching George how to catch them could be a cool twist. I'm sure as hell not waiting on his dumbass to learn the Braille secrets, though. Hey, that reminds me, we didn't actually go into that Scarlet and Violet DLC news. We kind of lost track at the starters. There's some new information on the Raikou and Kabalian variants and new moves, but I'm more so interested in how the new type is gonna work. Whoa, 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 are they adding a new type? Kind of, Joe, it's just a terrestrialization specific type. There's some speculation that it's gonna be along the lines of the legends of Arceus Legends plate, where it'll make you super effective against the opponent but also weak to their attacks too, to balance that out. Yeah, I don't really know how they're gonna do it. To be fair, I think they handled the advent of terrestrialization pretty well, if I'm being honest. So I'm looking forward to how this is gonna go. I don't think it's gonna be an actual new type, like some people are talking about a light type or a sound type or something like that, but we'll just have to wait and see. Oh, hell no, we definitely don't need a new type. There's already so much going on, it's too much to keep track of all the different type effectivenesses. I've been playing this series for 20 years and I still get confused from time to time. Like, did you guys know rock is actually neutral to other rock moves? Yes, you know. Uh, yes, Joe. All right, well, whatever, screw you two. But I bet others would agree with Also me. relevant to that news, I'm still just super excited for the third couple of Paradox legendaries to come out. Tarakian is the coolest of the Swords of Justice and often the most threatening. And Entei is about to finally get the buff it always needed. The dragon fire typing is about to go crazy. Facts, Donald. Blazing Bark is going to be so sick. Fuck, it's not going to be called Blazing Bark, Joe. That's the dumbest name I've ever heard. Actually, I think that's kind of heat, Joe. I could get behind uh -huh. it. Aha, heat. Good one, Obama. That was completely unintentional, but okay. Whenever you're both on crack, I got to go heal up real quick that Del Caddy actually kind of tore me a new one. Phrases that have never been said before for 300. Anyway, I forgot these trainers all have hyper potions in addition to their X items. Maybe this gym is a bit more annoying than I thought. Donald, if you're already frustrated by that Del Caddy, then you are in for a surprise for the rest of this gym. Seriously, Obama, I'm getting tired of you two hyping up these gym trainers so much. The theme is cool to me, that's why I like it, but there's no way I'm actually gonna struggle in terms of defeating them. I mean, look, I have tightened up against a swallow. This is easy peasy. Let's just hope so, Donald. By the way, Donald, if you beat this gym, and we still have at least a little time to spare, we might be able to end off the episode by getting our water type. And that could be super fun because we can finally spin the WizCash nickname. Jesus we'll Christ, Joe. Shout out to one of the lucky viewers who guessed correctly. Joe, for the last we time, go. we are not getting a goddamn WizCash. We will be getting Sharpedo, and that is final. I am playing, so I will be fishing it up for us, right in that route where we get the good rod. Donald, we have to figure out a way we can do this fairly. Maybe we should send a poll to the viewers and see what the majority of them Joe, want. Joe, I know your puppet ass doesn't have dick for responsibilities in the White House, so I wouldn't be surprised if you already counted up every single comment for every water type in each of our past videos. Mm, no, Donald, I have definitely not counted up each individual comment for WizCash and Sharpedo ever since episode three when we first brought the idea up of which water type we should get, if that's what you're saying. Not very convincing of a lie there, Joe. Obama, what do you think we should do? You've avoided giving your opinion on this for the most part. Yeah, you want to know why I haven't cared to voice my opinion? Yeah, I mean, I just figured you were neutral on WizCash and Sharpedo. Yumta, bitch. Yeah, well, actually, Donald, I don't give a shit because I was cool with either of them back when we first talked about this, but then I talked about how I wanted a Whalemer too, but both of you ignored me, so I just stopped caring. Sounds like some pretty toxic behavior if you ask me, Obama. Well, good thing no one asked you then, isn't it, Joe? For real, though, Barack. Do you walk away from Michelle whenever you two get into an argument instead of de-escalating the situation? Yeah, Barack, it sounds like you need to work on your open communication skills. I hope Michelle doesn't have to see all this negativity in the household. I agree, Joe. Holy shit, there is no way in hell I'm getting marriage counseling from you two bozos right now. Joe, you are literally a nursing home fugitive with an obsession for adolescent girls, and Trump, you are literally getting your ass pounded by a wiggly tuft. Sus. Neither of you are qualified to lecture me on my emotional intelligence. Geez, well, I guess we don't have to ask any more about it. That response gave me all the answers to any question I could have asked about it. For once, I'm going to have to agree with you on that one, Donald. 
Whatever, guys, I'm glad you two can bond over thrashing my abilities as a husband. Regardless, Donald, are you still a fan of this gym? You're getting shit on by one of the worst Pokemon in the entire game. Don't you say that about the Guildmaster. Yeah, honestly, I was about to scream at the computer when Titan got infatuated, then fully infatuated turn one, but I had to keep my composure. Otherwise, I would have looked like a hypocrite while lecturing you about healthy communication. All right, you know what, Donald? I just want to move past this. I don't think the viewers are able to process you being an emotionally sound individual. Just sounds like pretty poor script writing, if you ask me. Wait, what? Hey, Donald, do you have any sort of plan for this battle? Norman's actually got some tough Pokemon, so if you don't have a strategy, it might be impossible with this team we have. Well, first of all, through Arceus, all things are possible, so jot that down. And yeah, I got his team pulled up on my phone here. It doesn't look too threatening, so I don't know what you're on about, Joe. I don't know, Donald, all of his team members have some sort of gimmick to them that can be hard to handle if you don't prepare for it. Hmm. Okay, well, looking closer at his team, I guess I ought to think about it here. I think I'm gonna lead off with Titan to 1v1 the Spinda. Shouldn't be too hard unless we get really unlucky with confusion hacks. Okay, yeah, the Spinda is definitely the easiest member on the team to beat, so I agree Titan can probably take care of it safely. And after that, I think we'll just hold on to the momentum advantage. Ruby can take out one of his Pokemon on his own, Mango can do the same, and Sky can come in and deal with the slaking with dig strats to play around the truant turns. I can even sack off our two party fillers as per usual if I need to. I don't like when you guys doubt my abilities as a Pokemon trainer. Well, yeah, in an ideal world, Donald, you can do all that stuff, but you're going to be victim to RNG that you're clearly not willing to play around. You're just going to go gun ho on this, and I don't like that. We haven't lost an actual battle yet, and I'm hoping we don't have to start here. Yeah, he makes a good point, Donald. You need to have a backup plan, too. This is a difficult battle, regardless of what you think. How many times do I have to say it? I am a Pokemon master, and there's no way I'm going to... Oh, shit. All right, Donald, so let me get this straight. Don't you fucking start, Joe. So far, you have let yourself get absolutely bodied by a Wigglytuff and a Slaycoth, but you expect us to believe you are a Pokemon master? Yeah, Donald, you're throwing. Jesus Christ, and of course he heals too. That's it, I've had enough of this damn gym. I'm completely over it now. And there it is. Oh, come on, Donald, but the gym design is so fun and interactive. Don't patronize me, And you me, get Joe. to choose your battles based on opposing strategies and it's for the cunning and tactful trainers like yourself. Nah, I'm done with this. This gym is a piece of shit. All the trainers can lick my nuts. I just want to get to Norman already. Is there anyone left I have to battle? Uh, I think there's two more trainers. The one in front of you is actually kind of easy with a Vigoroth, but the other one is a bit scarier with a Zangoose. I remember because that one has actually killed one of my Pokemon in a Nuzlocke before. Oh, Donald, you have to go fight the Zangoose. I need to see it. Just try to contain yourself, Joe. Oh, don't you worry about me, Donald. Anyway, returning back to the Norman fight, you really need to be careful with each member of his team, Donald. Spinda can hax you down. Vigoroth can do crazy damage with stab critical hit slashes and mess with your strategy. With Encore, Lanoon can belly drum sweep you if you aren't careful, and Slaking can easily one-hit KO the entire team. Okay, look, Obama, I get it. You think I'm belittling this fight, but really, I got this. Stop worrying about it. I'll figure things out as we go if I Oh have my to. god, I fucking love Zangoose. That thing is so badass and its design is so cool. Joe, calm your furry ass down, please. Hey assholes, I'm bad. Oh my Jesus god, uh, I fucking love Zangoose. That thing is so badass. Facts. What is and happening? And its design is so cool. Holy shit, Janet, that is absolute facts. Wait, Joe, are you a Zangoose fan too? Big time, that's why Emerald is such a trash game. Somebody shoot me. Zangoose isn't even available to catch. Well, there's a whole different version of Emerald that I would consider trash. I actually made it myself a couple years ago. You should come check it out on my channel. It's called... All right, and that's where I draw the line. Thank you, Donald. No self-promotion during our video. He should have known that. Maybe that guy isn't so bad after all. Joe, just because the two of you share the same strange obsession with Zangoose, that does not make him any less of an asshole. Remember how he treated you during the Brawly fight? Who the hell is Brawly? Jesus Christ, all right. Forget about it, Obama. It's finally time. All the gym trainers are defeated. George has already made his appearance. Pokemon Challenges has already made his appearance. And somehow JF fucking K made an appearance. Don't ask me to explain that one. All I know is there is definitely no one else that's going to come in and interrupt us now. Oh, wait, 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 wait. God damn it, Donald, that advertisement was completely your fault for saying that. Whatever, at least we won't get one during the gym fight now. Let me see how the team's looking here. So quick claw on Titan, for sure. I think Miracle Seed on Sky and Silk Scarf on Mango makes sense. I don't know about Ruby, though. 
Uh, the Chesterberry might be a good idea. I think his slaking has yawn, so that might be good to have just in case. All right, good looks, Obama. I doubt it's going to come down to that honestly, but you're right. It's better to be prepared for that situation than not be. I'd hate for it to come down to his last Pokemon just for us to fall asleep and not be able to do anything about it. All right, Trump, glad to see you're actually planning on taking this one seriously. The last two gym battles were both super close, even with extensive preparation and a bunch of luck. So I feel like you owe it to our party members to take precaution. All right, here we are. It's us versus the good-for-nothing father who didn't even help his wife and 10-year-old son move into their new home. Time to show him who the real man in the house is. Speaking of our house, after this battle, we have to go back and talk to our mom to get the amulet coin. Then we can just surf from that route there over to Maville. It's actually pretty cool how the whole thing wraps around for our convenience. All right, well, good looks, Obama. We'll try to remember that, but let's just focus up here, shall we, boys? All right, so first matchup is Spinda. I'm going to go for a Rock Smash defense drop first. Then I'll start going for Metal Claws for more damage. That's a good plan, Donald, but yeah, as I thought he's going for the confusion plays immediately, don't be afraid to switch out to a faster Pokemon. Nah, we'll be fine, Obama, trust in the boys. Come on, Titan, break through. Start us off strong, Titan, God damn it, Titan. Seriously, Donald Titan can play a pivotal defensive role for us down the line. We don't need to waste all his health in the beginning like this. Look, Obama, I see what you're saying, but this is important to Titan. Come on, little guy, break through. Oh, oh my shit. God, Titan is an idiot. All right, you know what, Donald? You play your RNG-reliant game. It's good if we white out every now and then oh, anyway. Fuck off, Obama. We wouldn't want the viewers to think we can never lose. That wouldn't be exciting gameplay. I'm not going to lose because I hit myself in confusion twice, Barack stopped being a hater. Whatever, Donald. I'm just saying, you're rushing through this battle with a full head of steam, and that's just not a smart game plan. Both of you sound like children. Just calm down for a second. I swear to God, if Titan hits himself in confusion one more time, I'm going to flip the fuck out. Come on, buddy. Holy shit! This is what you get, what Donald. What is happening right now? Editor, can you put like a meme or something here for the viewers? Because this is exasperating for me. Hmm. Donald, you are literally throwing this game at the very beginning for no reason. Why can't you just listen to someone other than yourself? Jesus Christ, Barack, please just stop backseat driving before I kick your ass out of the car. Okay, okay, okay. Both of you need to shut the hell up for just a second now. Donald, we have lost all of our HP on our steel and rock type in a normal gym just because of your stubbornness. Exactly. But Barack, can you just listen to your own advice and support Donald during this difficult fight? Holy oh God, shit, Titan, Titan you, you are an idiot. All right, you know what, Joe, you're right. This battle is bigger than us. Maybe Titan isn't confused at himself, but he's confused because his trainers are bickering so much and giving him conflicting directions. What, no, Obama, he can't hear us, I don't think. Wow, Obama, that's actually really deep. Maybe you two are right. I keep forgetting some of these battles can actually be difficult. I'm sorry for not treating this like a team battle. Titan, I'm sorry for failing you. I know you were excited to give us an early lead. Am I the idiot here? They're literally still just ones and zeros, guys. All right, Donald, I'm sorry too. I was trying to act like I was playing myself. Uh, let's just come to agreements on how to take on the rest of his team. Let's do it, Obama. All right, well, that was the dumbest bonding experience I've ever seen in my life, but whatever. Let's just regain the advantage, Donald. All right, so secret power here because it's the most damage. Makes sense to me, but ooh, you got the paralysis. Could be bad if he goes for the... Yeah, exactly that. Unfortunate. Oof, that's honestly funny. Okay, so Titan got screwed over by bad RNG, and Mango is getting screwed over by what should be good RNG. Love to see that. Thanks, Nintendo. Rip Mango. Okay, Donald, precarious position we're in, but it's not over yet. We still got Ruby and Sky to save the day for us. What's your plan for now? Okay, yeah, things are a little bit tougher now. Here's the plan. He's gonna heal, but Ruby's gonna finish off the Vigoroth and then hopefully the Lanoon too. Then we can paralyze the Slaking and we should be able to 1v1 him with Sky after that. What do you guys think? Hmm, I don't know, Donald. That just seems a little bit optimistic. For now, let's just see how much damage Ruby can do to this Lanoon. Yeah, don't forget you still have Ninkata and Wismer in the party. They can still be useful if you need to switch around at all. All right, and Joe, I'm sure Ruby will do just fine here. It's a Route 1 Rodin, after all. Stay vigilant, Donald. If Lanoon manages to get up a belly drum here and Norman heals him back to full, the battle could end here. Oh, yeah, you got lucky. He just went for headbutt Donald. Belly drum would have put him in heal range. Still, Headbutt is doing crazy amounts of damage. I didn't expect all that, if I'm being honest. Okay, honestly, this is still a fine position, all things considered. But my plan changes a little bit here. I'm glad he's using his potion now instead of on the slaking. 
but I still really want to keep Ruby alive for him. So I'm going to go ahead and sack Nincada. Donald, I don't think Grow Vile can take care of Lanoon in one hit. Are you sure you want to switch out Ruby here and take damage on Sky just before the slaking? Obama, I know I flubbed the start of this battle, but trust me, I know what I'm doing this time. Hmm. Okay, Donald, I'll choose to trust you. I hope you don't disappoint us. There's thousands of people watching from afar right now. Nincada really has just been used and abused this entire playthrough. We should give him some sort of tribute before we have to box him down the road. We'll get to that, Joe. For now, check out the rest of this plan, guys. Now Sky can come in and clean up the Lanoon. Whatever health we lose doesn't matter in the slightest. We aren't getting touched by that slaking a single time. Just dodge the crit, please, one time. Phew, thank goodness. Damn, okay. Yeah, that was actually close. Looks like it was a roll for a crit to kill us there. But whatever, we don't have to think about it now. I think Sky probably outspeeds the slaking, but I have a foolproof plan for this. First of all, I'm gonna go ahead and sack off Ice Spice. Joe, please say your goodbyes oh, now. Oh no, Donald, do you really have to do it that way? Is there no other option? I see where you're going with this, Donald. Yes, Joe, please say your farewells. Damn okay, I guess. Uh, I'm a munch. That's it? Not much else to say. Jesus, I can't wait to get this thing off the team, but whatever, thanks for keeping it short, Joe. Anyway, here's the plan. Ruby's gonna come in and get off a thunder wave now. Slaking will be loafing around this turn too, so I can get some free damage with Spark before switching to Sky. That's when the real magic's gonna happen. Yeah, this paralysis was to guarantee Grovile can outspeed, wasn't it? Still, there's no way Sky can take care of this beefcake in just two turns before it kills us back with a facade or something. I mean, come on, we couldn't even do half its health with a critical hit spark. Oh, you see, Joe, you failed to see the genius in saving Sky for the end here. Have you forgotten our moveset? Uh, leaf Blade, Screech, Hidden Power, and oh, okay, I see what you're cooking, Donald. Yep, there you go, Joe. Okay, so quick Leaf Blade here since he's just jacking off this turn. Gross, Donald, what the And it's the, the most hell? damage Sky can do in one turn. But now I simply need to click dig from here on out. I will be underground during his attacking turns and above ground only when he's loafing around. Easiest battle of my life. Okay, he does kind of look like he's jacking off maybe a little bit. Donald, you, uh... All right, Joe, anyway, Donald, you are literally down to your last Pokemon and one simple misclick and you lose all progress we've made in the past 10 minutes. How can you possibly consider that the easiest battle of your life? Huge hater energy coming off of you here, Barack. There was never any doubt in my mind. I was always going to win this battle. I am inevitable. All right, calm down, Thanos. It's not that serious. You started off like shit, but you adapted and played well, Donald. I'll give you that. Just don't throw this in the last few turns, please. I could probably just go ahead and kill him off with Leaf Blade here. Holy shit, Donald. I swear to God, if you click Leaf Blade here and he lives on one and we lose the battle, I'm not playing this game again with you. Ooh, very tempting then. I fear what you would do to sabotage us in the Elite Four. Just joshing you, Obama. One more dig, but then I will click Leaf Blade when he's in the red. I don't want to mess with ranges either. Anyway, yeah, this is the end of the gym battle here, but the episode is far from over. We have some stuff to do still. Viewers, you're gonna wanna stick around for the end here if you already made it this far. Nothing like a good old leaf blade to end off the battle. Slaking is such a behemoth, it's such a rewarding feeling taking him down. Why the hell doesn't Norman have a Zangoose? Joe, why are you still on this? But seriously, his team kinda lacks creativity now that I think about it. Slaking is cool, but his other Pokemon include an under-evolved form of his ace, a shitty and forgettable Spinda, and then the evolved form of the shitty starter encounter, like, don't you think he could have been more creative with a Zangoose or even an Exploud or something? Okay, honestly, Joe, an Exploud or a Loudred makes sense for sure, considering how nearby the Whizmers are to this town, and none of the other trainers in the gym had anything from that line. But his final trainer here had a Zangoose, so I think the game developers just didn't want to have too many repeats in the gym. Does that make sense? Mm, I guess. Missed opportunity for sure, though. All right, all right, all right. We're done talking about the Norman battle for now. We're past that. We got the facade TM that's certainly worth teaching to Mango in place of secret power so we can utilize the Guts ability to its full potential. Also, now's the part of the game where Wally's dad gives us the Surf HM. An incredible move, but we don't have anyone that can use it. Ooh, I know a way to solve that problem, Donald. Joe, I swear to God, if your decrepit ass says the word whizcash right now, I'm gonna tombstone pile drive your ass into the ground next time I see you. Okay, chill out, I won't say it. Thank you. But you should definitely go fish up a bar boat in Fallerbore Town. Oh my God, Joe, you're dead to me. Okay, okay, calm down, guys. But speaking of dead, goddamn, look at our team. Donald, you should actually go ahead and deposit one of our team fillers. We should go catch a Zigzagoon real quick to be our new HM user since he gets surf. All right, that's a good point, Obama. 
I'll go ahead and take care of that right now. Yeah, it really doesn't matter which one to me since Zig Zagoon also gets cut, but I'm sure Joe has a preference here. Donald deposit the Ninkata. Shock. I feel bad for the lack of love he gets. He deserves a quick little tribute montage for all the hard work he's done for us. Excuse me, what hard work exactly? He's a freeloader. Well, Donald, I agree with Joe. He deserves something of a send-off for sure. Dilzan, cook something up here. All right, come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Ah, ah. Fuck, get this thing out of my face, Joe. That is not a Pokemon. That is literally just a cicada. Why is it here? All right, what in the actual fuck was that? Yeah, that had to be the absolute worst tribute video of all time. It was literally just us shitting on Ninkata while we caught it, then it dying three times. Yeah, and then this dude had the audacity to add a reminder to subscribe directly over Ninkata's entire goddamn face. You guys are absolutely heartless. That was a cinematic masterpiece. Farewell, Ninkata. Donald, take us far away from here. All right, so first off, Barack, Thank you for the reminder about this. I actually always forget to do this in my playthroughs. If we talk to our mom here after beating our dad's gym, she will give us an amulet coin. Super useful for stacking some money for the rest of the game, especially considering how useful those game corner TMs are gonna be for us down the line. Exactly, Donald. That's pretty much the only reason we need money in the main story, especially since we are doing no heals in battle. Hey, Donald, you should probably switch Ice Spice to the front if you want to go ahead and catch a zigzagoon so we can use it for HM. Damn, Joe, you're just moving on from the Ninkata just like that? What the hell is a Ninkata? Jesus Christ, Joe. Don't worry about it, Joe, anyway, yeah. Good call, moving Wismer to the front. That'll probably save us at least a little bit of time catching zigzagoon. We probably should have been using it from the very beginning, considering it could have had rock, smash, cut, and surf, while also being able to pick up items for us, but oh well. Yeah, we only got, like... Two billion comments talking about how we need to pick up a zigzagoon exactly for that purpose. But you made a good point back in episode two, Obama, about the compound eyes and wild items thing. Unfortunately, I don't think any of us actually care enough to utilize that. All right, Donald, we now have a surfing Pokemon to hold us over until we get our actual surfer for the team. It's time we figure this shit out once and for all. Uh, oh, Donald, sounds like Demon Mojo is back out and he means business. I wouldn't want it any other way, Barry. All right then, Joe. Clearly, we are at an impasse here. I know you have some fair arguments for Wizcash, but I have expanded on my reasonings for Sharpedo since last episode as well. I actually have a compiled list of pros and cons for both. Ooh, well, I'm quite interested to hear about each of those, Donald. I made something of a conglomeration of benefits to the Wizcash line myself, and I made sure to stick to his objective performance in an emerald run as well as his assumed team chemistry with our current party composition. Let's do us both a favor and keep things civil so we can come to a reasonable conclusion. This is incredible to hear, guys. You both have developed so positively in this relationship of deciding our water type. You two were nonstop bickering in the past, but I'm actually looking forward to hearing the succinct arguments you both have created. Glad you guys are planning on keeping things courteous. You're a complete idiot, Joe! Donald, just use your feeble brain for two seconds. We don't need another glass cannon. It's not a glass cannon if it destroys every gym we have left in half the Elite Four. Well, at least Wizcash didn't need a mega evolution to become relevant. Wizcash has literally never been relevant, Joe. That is the stupidest thing I have ever heard. No, the stupidest thing you have ever heard is this. Jesus Christ, Joe, you nutcracker, can you please just... Okay, I have had enough of this. Here's what we're going to do. Both of you listen to me right now. Thank God for you, Obama. You two are going to meet on Pokemon Showdown this weekend, and you are going to fight it out in a best of three Generation 3 random battle series. Oh, let's fucking go. Easy money. The winner of the series will get to choose what our water type is going to be. Record the battles and your commentary, and we will add that video to this playthrough series as a special. Got it? I got the message as soon as you said Pokemon Showdown Obama. Joe, you are getting absolutely toasted in this battle. You better come correct. Oh, I'm going to be coming all right. The fuck? Joe, please refrain from saying stuff like that. All right, well, it sounds like we will finally be picking out our water type at the start of the next episode. 
Viewers, stay tuned for this weekend where you will see a video of Donald and I duking it out in a best of three random battle series. That will decide whether or not we go for the whiz cash or the Sharpedo. Let All right, here we go. It's finally my no turn again No time to here. question my moves. Jesus, here we go already. I stick to the path that I choose. Joe, don't ruin this for me, please. Joe, in case you couldn't tell, I'm not in the damn mood to deal with your crap today. It's going to be a long episode for me, I can well, tell. It sucks to be you then, Donald, because we about to go get ourselves a motherfucking barboach, baby. Whatever, Joe, this episode is going to be about me learning to cope with you. I guess this is where that whole character development arc that the viewers have been requesting is going to come into play. Yeah, okay, I literally don't give a shit, Donald. Let me just do an intro without one of you bursting out into song and the other crying about the team composition, please. All right, lay it on us, Barack. Pause. All right, viewers, thanks for tuning in to our President's Play Pokemon Emerald series this week. Last time we defeated Norman, and now it is time for us to proceed the storyline and make our way to Fortree City. Before all that, though, as Joe has alluded to already, we have finally chosen on our run's water type. Joe and Donald fought on Pokemon Showdown this past weekend, and as a result of Joe's victory, we will be going with Wiz Cash. Congratulations, Joe. Thank you, thank you, Obama. Okay, honestly, the part I am most excited for is spinning this wheel. We've had so many great nicknames for both Wiz Cash and Sharpedo, and I'm really looking forward to just giving a shout out to whoever wins. Hopefully it's a good one. Yep, I'm looking forward to that too. Joe, I love making this playthrough as interactive as possible. What do you think, Donald? Okay, but an absolute bullshit victory, by the way. All right. Joe got lucky throughout literally every battle. All the top comments completely agree with me on this Don't one. cry about it, Donnie. A win is a win is a win, and we stay lit, boys. Jesus Christ, Joe, you're not 15 years old. What the hell does that even mean? I'm not sure, honestly. I saw it on some video Holy recently. Holy hell, okay. Can both of you shut up for like two seconds? I can't concentrate on fishing here. Generation 3 fishing mechanics are so stupid it makes me want to grow hair just so I can rip it out of my skull. Massive skill issue, Ooh, Obama. Here it is, guys. I'm so excited for this cute little O gross. Get the fuck away from this gross ass generation one garbage, please, Obama. Chill out, Joe. I've heard Magikarps hold on to grudges for when they evolve into Gyaradoses, so don't let him hear you say that. Yeah, Joe, didn't you ever watch that you don't have enough money to train me video? These bitches come for you in your sleep. Dangerous territory, Dilzan. You might get copyrighted here. Be careful. Anyway, this shit is taking forever, viewers. We'll see you in a second. Yeah, I mean, people really like to hate on Boku no Pico, but I honestly think it has a beautiful message about personal growth through adversity and just treasuring the meaningful relationships in your life. Now fucking there it oh, is. Thank Christ. I have never been more relieved to see a barboke in my goddamn life. Seriously, Obama, I feel like every time we're obviously cutting out segments from the viewers, you just won't stop talking about these weird ass animes that nobody cares about. Some people care. But whatever, we're back now and we have found the beautiful Barboach at long last. Yeah, keep in mind how Barboach is like the worst Pokemon in the history of Pokemon. And in the wild here, it can be anywhere from level 10 through 30. And this is the garbage that we end up with. Amazing. Yeah, well, honestly, it's not a big deal to just slap the experience share on it for the time being anyway. We'll be doing a good handful of training this episode, so hopefully he'll be gaining at least like 10 levels or so by the time I cut things off for the day. Oh goodness, look how cute he is. I've never actually used a whiz cash, so I'm really excited for this one, guys. Big surprise, Joe likes the underage Pokemon. Anyway, Obama pull up the wheel and explain what's going on, please. All right, yeah, so Dilzan has graciously gone through episodes, like two through nine, and taken all the comments that have a suggested nickname for our potential Barboach or Whizcash and put those on this wheel here. We're gonna do this for our sixth encounter too. So keep suggesting nicknames since we haven't gotten to that one yet. Some names are on here multiple times like Whiskers and Boat or The Sauce and so on because we allowed people to comment on multiple videos. I swear to Bird Jesus, if this wheel lands on fucking Whizmer of all things, there's no chance in hell I'm sticking around for the rest of this video. That would be the ultimate slap in the face for losing the showdown right, series. Shut the hell up, Donald, it's spinning, oh my god. Wow, nice internet, Barack. Blow me, Donald. Whoa, whoa, oh my god, Pringles, that's such a good nickname. It's because Wiz Cash's face looks like that Monopoly-looking guy on the chip cans. Yeah, Joe, you mean the Pringles logo, you idiot? All right, so I got the list here. Shout out to the heavy Kiwi for the nickname. Looks like he commented it a couple times for us throughout the series. Kiwi, thanks so much for the continued support and the wholesome nickname means a lot to us. Let's go check Pringles out, shall we, boys? Hey, Obama, now that we can surf around, don't you think it's worth backtracking a little bit? 
Technically, Ice Beam and Thunderbolt are available to us now. Oh, that's a good point, Donald. We need Ice Beam on our future whiz cash for sure. Oh, wow, yeah, especially if we're gonna be rocking a modest nature. It's plus special attack and minus attack, which honestly isn't that bad. Sure, earthquakes are going to be a bit weaker, but surf and ice beam are going to be hitting pretty damn hard, and the latter is incredibly important for both the next gym and many difficult battles down oh the line. Oh my god, wait, can we give Ice Spice a tribute video too? No, Joe, we already played that bit out with the whole Nincata thing. Please just let Ice Spice corrode away in the box with the other Wizmers. Oh man, come on. Viewers, let us know if you want to see a Wiz Murr tribute montage. What? No, do not do that, Joe, you manipulative bitch. Obviously, the viewers want to see us do anything. Don't put this into their hands. Moving on, guys, this segment is meant to be about our newly obtained Pringles, not fucking Ice Spice. Okay, I'm going to give him Surf real quick, just to have it. And then, honestly, I think I ought to go ahead and give Swello Facade over secret power while I'm here. Yeah, hopefully Barboach grows on me because for now it's still a piece of garbage. Sharpedo just hits so much harder. And come on, we chose a catfish over a shark Shh. like really. Pringles is on the team now, Donald. I promise he will grow on you. But yeah, Obama, what are you thinking now? Okay, so thank you, Joe. I think you two made a good point just a minute ago. Since we have access to surf now, we should probably go get Thunderbolt for Ruby since she doesn't learn it naturally and Ice Beam for Barboach from the abandoned ship next to Duford Town. Thankfully, I know my way around those places pretty well from all the times I played this game when it first came out. Shouldn't take me too long. Then I'll start the trek to Fortree City. How does that sound? Works for me, yeah. Shit cash is gonna need all the help it can get. And since ice and electric coverage is going to be crucial for our next gym battle, I think that's a good plan, Barack. All right, first of all, his name is Wiz Cash, not Shit Cash, Donald. And secondly, yeah, can't Ruby also learn Flamethrower? Don't you think we should grab that from the game corner sometime Actually, soon Joe Manectric doesn't get flamethrower or overheat until generation six. I think that was because they wanted to buff the new mega he was getting, if I had to guess. Also, I should probably throw on a repel Ooh, here, that's that I? one secret base I talked about that I like the most. It's the one that says Team Aqua was here or something. Oh yeah, nice, Donald. That's a base base for real. Joe, honestly, please stop talking like that. You're like 150 years old. I've said it once and I'll say it again. Stop glazing Trump. Oh, what Trump. the hell? Useless ass repel. Hey, Obama, you teaching Pringles and Mango those moves earlier reminded me you still have to go get the return TM from Fallibor Town. You want to take care of that this episode, too? Oh, true. Yeah, I need to get that. I might hold off, though, and let one of you guys take care of it when we get the Fly HM out of convenience. And it's not a big deal just yet. I'm going to take care of Thunderbolt and Ice Beam, but I still want to progress the story a bit today. Like, if I can take care of the Weather Institute shit, then I'll be happy with cutting it off there. I thought you said you knew where you were going, Obama. You were stumbling around in this place like a wasted zombie. Ain't no way you just made a Katie fucking Perry reference, Joe. Yeah, Joe, are you having like a late, late life crisis or something? Why the hell are you talking in all this millennial lingo? First of all, Donald, I'm like two years older than you. And Three secondly, years, whatever, actually. guys, I'm just trying to connect to our viewers. They're like 27 years old on average. Learn a little bit about viewer retention rates. You lazy fucks. Whoa, Damn, calm down, no Joe. It's hostile, not that Joe. serious. Whatever, screw you guys. Obama, didn't you say you wanted to do a quick shout out somewhat early on in this video or something about those super shits we got recently shits, or whatever Joe? they're called? All right, Joe, thanks for reminding me. Okay, so viewers, quick little note from the editor here. Something you all probably don't realize is that making these videos is not only a time-consuming process, but also more costly than you would think. The AI voice generator actually requires a pretty high-tier subscription to get content out this quickly. And considering Dilzan is still just a student on top of making these, there are doubts as to whether or not this content can be put out as quickly as you all would like. So we wanted to give a quick special mention to Shaken Baked, as well as Tex Rex, for these considerate donations to the channel. Truthfully, we didn't even really know what super thanks were until partnering with YouTube, and we've never given it any special attention until now. But it's just really cool to see we have this level of support from our fans. We'd hate to directly ask for your support in this way, but we all felt as if you deserve some special recognition for your appreciation of the content. That's all. Well said, Obama. Yeah, viewers alike is all the support we're really asking for, but it's incredible to see how some of you are extending your gratitude in more ways than that. Yeah, hey guys, one quick thing though. Yeah, what's up, Donald? It's five fucking dollars. They Jesus aren't donating Donald. you a goddamn Bitcoin or something. It's the thought that counts you inconsiderate bitch whatever though moving on. We're here with Watson, he just gave us the Thunderbolt TM. And now we gotta teach that to Ruby real quick. 
It's going over Spark because all the other moves actually have some sort of utility, but Spark is completely outclassed by Thunderbolt. All right, now that we're done with all that, it's time to take on the abandoned ship. We'll see you all in Slateport in a second. All right, so let me get some honest opinions from you guys here. Yes, Joe, I do think you're a shit president. All right, noted, Donald, but not my question. I'm wondering, guys, do you think there's actually too much water on this map? Like, does it kill the enjoyment of the region like what some people say? Okay, so I've actually thought about this one a whole lot. I used to think that in the late game specifically, they definitely could have helped direct the player a bit more in the journey after Moss Deep. I feel like they also could have kept Mr. Briney around to sail us around Slateport and Duford if we wanted to be lazy. That being said, the entire plot of the evil teams revolves around the ocean and expanding it or drying it up or something. Like, I do think Pokemon took a leap in terms of experimenting with the improved surfing mechanic in Generation 3. So the abundance of water doesn't really bother me too much. Okay, that's a pretty solid viewpoint, Obama. I respect that. What do you think, Donald? Oh, you want to know what I think? I think you should turn on the catch enemy trainer game shark code Jesus Christ, and Donald. go ahead and catch this Carvana and throw away that piece of garbage Pringles and add this guy to our team instead. Donald, you are a begrudging fuck. You need to accept the reality that I beat you fair and square in the series that you completely agreed to. Grow up, little man. Seriously, Donald, just shut up and tell us what you think about the water on this map. 7.8 out of 10, shit map, but they completely fixed all the flaws with the next region of Sinnoh. That one is a perfect 10 out of 10, just like my wife. Yeah, I don't know, I'm kind of conflicted on it too. I think it's fine up until the point that you also have to dive around and stuff. Like, that's cool and all, but they really felt the need to add a whole nother HM for us to complete the game. Like, surf is a good move, sure, but then also uh, waterfall and dive. Like, who cares about all that? Generation 3 practically forces us to use an HM Mon for most of the game, and it's really annoying. That's my main gripe with the water. Yeah, I can see that, Joe. Like I said, I've gone back and forth with this issue. Viewers, if you have anything you'd like to add or any points you want to make about that, let us know in the comments. Whatever. Let's actually focus on gameplay for once in this series. Obama, I know you have the experience share on Barboach, understandably, but we really got to give Titan some love here too so he can finally evolve. Ruby is a beast. Mango is a beast. Sky finally has a good move. Pringles licks nuts and Titan Watch evolves it. at like 32, I think, so he's almost finally there. Yeah, that's honestly kind of one of my goals too, Donald. We already mentioned this, but with Ruby's new Thunderbolt, and when we get a Wiz Cash at level 30, who will be modest with Ice Beam, we will have a pretty massive advantage already against the Flying Gym, but throw in an evolved steel rock type with rollout, and we will steam roll through her. It might honestly be the first not overly exciting gym battle like everything up until this point. Careful. Barack, I think we all kind of understand that the gym leader battles have been like the best part of the series so far. You might not want to hint at anything like that if you know what's good for the channel. Well, to be fair, Joe, if we let that Altaria get up a single dragon dance, it could still spell disaster for our team with Aerial Ace and Earthquake. And if she paralyzes us with dragon breath and we get hacked like I did in that battle against Joe, we are absolutely screwed. Donald, for the love of God, just please let that go. It was like a week ago now. I will not let that go, Obama. That was an act of injustice that I should never have to have experienced. Didn't we decide I got hacked by like a one in 415 chance against a goddamn beauty fly of all things like what the hell? Oh, Donald, I know your corrupt ass is not talking about injustice right now. Need I remind you what happened to you like three damn days ago? Don't you say a fucking word, Joe. I'm curious now, Joe, what are you cooking here? He's not cooking shit, it was injustice, and that's that. Oh yeah, injustice, yeah, let's talk about that. I think the real injustice is how your ass is facing 91 criminal counts, yet you showed up to jail and were able to leave on your private plane literally 10 minutes after you stepped foot in the building. You're literally playing a Pokemon game right now, despite being the first former president to have his mugshot taken. Hold that L, bozo. All right, all right, all right, let's not get political here, but Joe, you do make a good point. Since I am now a moderator of this Discord, I actually have the authority to make a few changes. 
and I feel the need to do one real quick. Uh, Barack, you're playing the game right now. Don't you think you should focus on that before trying to exercise your Discord adminship? Donald, it's literally a children's game. I can just spam A for the next 20 seconds. Let me just do something really quick. Shut the hell up. Jesus, fine, man. All right, now I'm curious, Obama, what are you doing? All right, there we go. I think we're good now. That should pretty much do it. Donald, say something for me, please. What are you talking? Oh my God, fuck you, man. <laughs> That's a good one, Barry. No, Joe, that is not a good one in the slightest. That being said, this is a pretty badass picture of me if I'm being completely honest. Donald, there is no way in hell you actually think your mugshot is a badass picture. Well, sure I do, Obama. Mango said it best on stream a couple of weeks back. What the hell is more American than going to jail? The people will simply be forced to vote for me now that I am truly the embodiment of the American dream. All right, let me get this straight, Donald. You're saying that you going to prison will help your case as a candidate because going to prison is part of American culture. Damn straight, Joe. Jesus Christ, this country is absolutely screwed. Because in a twisted way, Donald, you actually have something of a point. Well, Obama, answer me this then. Would you rather have a president who unfairly went to prison for an hour, or a president who sniffs babies at every waking opportunity and has a 30% success rate at climbing flights of stairs? Maybe appeal to the viewers of this video, Donald, would you all rather have a president who sucks at Generation 3 random battles or one who's undefeated in them? Joe, you literally use substitute on a Pokemon at 16% health, you dumbass. Right. Well, both of you shut the hell up before I change the Constitution to allow myself to run for president again just so America doesn't have to deal with either of you. Anyway, I'm getting us back on track with the gameplay here. What do you guys think about the change of the abandoned ship to Seamawville from Emerald to Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire? Fine, good call, Barack. We're probably losing viewers talking about this shit. Honestly, I think Seamawville was a good change. This abandoned ship didn't really offer too much besides the Ice Beam TM. I think the quest to get the scanner with all the room keys is cool. But coming back to do all that after we get the dive, HM just isn't worth it for the deep sea scale or tooth or whatever. Like who the hell even cares about the clam pearl line by that point in the game? Might have to agree with Donald on this one for once, Obama. I do think Seamawville was really cool just because of how you can get spirit to him. It was a cool way of introducing a Pokemon you wouldn't think would be available in the game. Nice, yeah, those are honestly some good points, guys. I agree that having to come all the way back here just to get an underwhelming water type is kind of a drag. All right, if I remember correctly up here will be where I can get the storage key. And then I can go right into that last room where Ice Beam is. Yeah, plus another thing on that is don't you have to trade the Clam Pearl while holding that item to evolve it anyway? Like, who the hell is going to go through all of that? Like, it's literally less of a hassle to get a Melodic, which is, like, infinitely better than either Huntail or Gore Abyss. Yeah, that's facts, Donald, but still none of them compare to Wizcash. I know that much. L, take Joe. Don't take the bait, Donald, anyway. Looks like I have to clean out the bag a little bit here. When we get back to Slateport, I'll go ahead and sell some stuff, but for now, Joe, I'm throwing away that stupid-ass fluffy tail, and I'll use one of our vitamins on someone. Oh, man, but the fluffy tail is so cute, I was going to attach it to the skitty that we catch for our sixth team member. Viewers, he's lying. I promise skitty is not the Pokemon that will be joining our team. Yeah, our sixth team member might be a shitty Pokemon, all things considered, but it's not as shitty as Delcaddy. All right, chill out, guys. Too many potential spoilers. I'm just gonna hurry through this place so we can continue on with the story. We've already been recording for like half an hour here. Viewers, we're probably cutting out the remaining battles we have left on this place. Hope you can understand that. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of battles you're still gonna have to get through. If you actually wanna make it through the Weather Institute, Barack, you think you can actually do that with just one episode? Yeah, worst comes to worst, we can just cut out more of these stupid battles where literally nothing happens like that one, yeah, Joe. Yeah, plus I'm planning on robbing the shit out of that one guy's berry farm when we get there in a few minutes. Whoa there, Obama, calm down there, buddy. I know this is Hoenn, but you're going a little too primal on us. Ah, good one, Joe. Oh, chill out, Joe. You're literally supposed to do that. Whatever you say, Obama. All right, I think that's going to be the last battle on this boat here as long as I can avoid these last two here. You know, technically Obama, we can also stop by Duford and grab the Sludge Bomb TM2 at this point. Want to stop for that real quick? That's a good point, Donald, but that's another one we don't necessarily need right now, I don't think. I'll just let you or Joe handle that in an upcoming episode when we get the ability to fly. I really want to get on with the story already. Understandable, Obama. I'm guessing I'll be taking care of it at the end of next episode then because I should be able to beat Winona. If not, then Donald can do it when it's his turn. Anyway, look at that, guys. Our beautiful Pringles already has surf and ice beam. Not much else you can ask for. 
Well, a half-decent special attack stat would be nice too, but whatever. All right, so a long trek back to Mauville, but we made it, guys. Off screen, I went ahead and sold some stuff in our inventory to clear up some space, and I also bought a few more repels to get us through the upcoming sections without interruptions. Hell yeah, Barack, way to plan ahead like a true Digimon master. Oh yeah, right, and George decided to join the call while we were swimming back to Slateport. George, I know your ass knows that we are playing Pokemon. I saw you were streaming Fire Red last week. Don't you try to hide it from us. Shh, don't say that, Donald. I don't want Kennedy to think I'm a bitch for playing Pokemon, okay? George, first of all, Kennedy has no idea what he's talking about if he thinks Pokemon is for bitches. Secondly, nobody cares about Digimon. And third of all, what the hell? Have you actually been playing through Fire Red without telling us? Yeah, maybe a little bit, Joe. I've been trying to learn more about Pokemon since you guys said I can come in and play sometime in front of the viewers. I just beat the electric army guy and now I'm lost in some tunnel. I've been stuck there for like two hours of game time. It's so goddamn dark in there. George, you mean rock tunnel? You were supposed to pick up the Flash HM from the aid over on the other side of Diglett Cave. You're gonna be lost in there forever if this is your first time playing through it. Blow me Obama. I don't need some dude with AIDS to flash me. Not at all what I I'll said. just continue to hug the right wall until I'm out of there. I've seen all this before, dude. All right, whatever, guys, look who it is. The damn reporters that I thrashed last time. Joe, time for us to see how shit of a Pokemon this Pringles really is. Donald, just watch as magnitude blows these two shitters into the water next to us. Not gonna happen. All right, let's see what we get, Joe. Okay, magnitude eight, big damage here, maybe kills both of them. Lucky roll, Joe. Wait, can someone fill me in here? Why does Donald hate Pringles? They are delicious. Oh, I'd be happy to fill you in, George. Pause. Yeah, that was sus as hell, Joe. Oh, chill out. You guys know what I meant. Basically, George, Donald sucks at Pokemon. So we went with my pick of the cute little Pringles over his pick of some overrated piranha as our water type. I will have nightmares of that battle for the rest of my life. Joe, please don't joke about post-traumatic stress disorder. Really, Donald, it isn't that serious. At some point, you're going to have to get over this. Anyway, it looks like I've defeated the reporters here, and it's gonna be my turn to do a post-game interview. Last time Donald said he was lolling after the battle, let's see how I can describe them. Yeah, make sure to really take your time with a sophisticated interview response. Obama, I'm sure you have plenty of time for this. I sense a little bit of sarcasm, but honestly, I'm kind of intrigued here. Can you call them bitches? But no, George, I cannot call them bitches. I have to choose from a preset list of phrases here. I think I can't actually type anything. But uh, let's see here, I think feelings and, uh, yeah, these guys were definitely beat. Wow, that's all you got, Obama? Pretty lame, bro. Seriously, Barack, no one's used the word beat since like 2015, you old fogey. No way, Joe fucking Biden just called me a fogey. This is a new low point in my life. Yeah, what the hell does that even mean? Don't worry about it, fogey. All right, after almost 45 minutes of recording, we are finally allowing ourselves to move on to new territory here. I'm just rearranging the party real quick, and now we can, oh God damn it, this guy again. Wait, was this motherfucker actually just waiting for us on top of a ledge just so he can jump down on us? Are we literally getting jumped right now? George, I've been saying this the whole goddamn series. This guy is a crack addict, and he's up to no good. We found him sniffing rocks in a cave earlier on, and now he's ambushing us, probably asking for money or some shit. All right, literally none of that is true, Donald. I guarantee you he does not actually do drugs and you are just creating a fictitious narrative to downplay the credibility of anyone you come across out of baseless disdain. What the in the hell, world? Joe? What? Joe, I think we're all just having a really difficult time believing that you actually just said all those words coherently. Uh, why is that surprising? All right, let's show this part actually because Titan gets Iron Tail here. Another terribly inaccurate move, but at 100 base power, it's technically our strongest move so far. Okay, that's great and all Obama, but hold on just a minute. I would like to revisit something that just happened here now that I'm thinking about it. Joe hasn't stumbled in his rhetoric like at all during this entire series. Is that not setting off any sort of alarms in anyone else's head right Wait now? Wait a second. Yeah, Joe, you can't go through a single speech without having a damn stroke, and you actually just uttered some Harvard-level bullshit and pretended we wouldn't uh, notice. Uh, advertisement here, please, editor. All right, whatever, Joe. It's not like we should actually be complaining about it, I guess. Keep your secrets then. My thoughts exactly, Donald. Let's just move past that. If I remember correctly, these guys actually have some cool Pokemon that could be troublesome if you are doing a Nuzlocke or something. So, for like the two viewers that are playing along with us, be careful with this one. All right, there's that term Nuzlocke you guys were talking about last time I was here. Have you decided that's what you're gonna do for your next run? 
Yeah, actually we are leaning towards a Nuzlocke of platinum right now. No randomizer or anything, just a straight up hardcore Nuzlocke. We're thinking that's best because we can actually do some strategic preparation, unlike in a randomizer. And platinum can honestly be a somewhat difficult game to do in a hardcore way. I think the fans would like to see it. Yeah, and since it's a Nuzlocke, we would actually be catching a whole bunch of Pokemon and because of that, we will go ahead and name everyone we catch after someone in our Discord. We can even incorporate the wheel for that one again, if people like the idea of that. So yeah, make sure to join our Discord. Good call to action, Joe. And yeah, rest in peace, Titan. This is what I was afraid of, honestly, but at least it gives Pringles a chance to come in and do something, I guess. Okay, wait. So if we are naming a Pokemon in a Nuzlocke after someone in our Discord, can we do this Ludwig style and ban the person from the Discord if their Pokemon dies in the run? Oh, hell yeah. That's sick. What the Let's hell? Do no that. Donald, no Jesus, no guys, we're not doing that. Why are you all so supportive of that? Oh, don't be such a pussy Obama. That would be hilarious. Comedic, yes, but not only do we not have the large enough support from our fans to do that yet, but that's also just rude. And why should we ban people from our Discord? That's just a stupid idea. All in favor of banning Barack from the Discord for being a wuss? Aye. Aye. Jesus Christ, all right, never mind, assholes. We will revisit the topic. Anyway, let's see if Pringles can clean up yet another kill here. Nope, he sucks ass, and now he's dead. Shocker. Donald, he's like nine levels lower than the rest of our team. Give him a break. Soon enough, he and Titan are going to be the only decently bulky members on the team, and you're going to learn to respect that. I'm not respecting shit, Joe. You and I both know that. Also, Obama, you've been using hidden power a lot on these two guys. Have you found out any information about their types yet? based on type effectiveness. Honestly, no, Donald. I feel like they've just been neutral on like everything. So I can't really tell yet. I kind of thought Skies was hidden power grass, which would have sucked. But it looks like it isn't since it's neutral to bug. I guess we're just gonna have to wait to test it out on the Keck Leons around Fortry. Makes sense to me, yeah. We haven't recorded in a little while, so I've kind of forgotten them too. I don't blame you. Waiting would be easier, and it's not a big deal just yet. Only a couple types could be helpful to have anyway, like maybe fire or ice coverage could be nice to have. Obama, I know I don't have much Pokemon experience, but I can tell the team is in absolute shambles right now. You better heal them bitches Yeah, big up. facts, George. We'll be right back, guys. All right, here we are, Obama, the Berry Master's Garden. Now it's time for you to act on those urges you talked about earlier, absolutely guilt-free. What Suck are you going to do? Donald, it's part of the game. Anyway, editor, speed this up for the viewers, please. All right, got all those possibly useless berries. Now time to go make the old man and his wife give me some more. All right, I'm totally lost here, honestly. Are any of these berries actually going to be useful for us, or are we just hoarding things? Jesus Christ, this dude's got berries for days. They have to be useful for something, right? They won't really have any in battle effects for us like all the traditionally useful ones but technically they may play a role in the future. Just stay Ooh, tuned. Ooh, another Jim. interview. What you got this time, Obama? All right, a barboach, I guess, and then, uh... Good answer! Jesus Christ. Yeah, good answer if is shit is a phrase you can finish it off with. What the hell is a barboach? The devil. Uh, Pringles is a barboach, George. I need to find something good here. Oh, okay, yeah, barboach mood. Yeah, I think that's good. Barboach is definitely a mood right, guys. Hmm, uh, barboach mood. Couldn't have said it any better myself, Obama. I'm glad you understand. Can you hand me that person, Barry, please, Barack? Because I am utterly confused as to why the hell I continue to torture myself by being in the presence of you two. All right, again, cry about it, Donald, but it's time to continue on here. Now we're going to be experiencing an actual change of scenery here. I think one last trainer before we are on to the beautiful Route 119 of Hoenn. Damn straight, Obama, this is a route where many dedicated Pokemon trainers have spent hours of their lives on for the sole reason of getting that godforsaken Phoebus just so they can get melodic. Lots of memories there. I wouldn't mind reliving it honestly. Well, Donald, I, I don't think any of us are gonna stop you if you would like to do that on your own time, but either way, melodic won't be joining the team. We are committing to the Wiz Cash just like we would commit to the Sharpedo had you won that battle. Ooh, I remember these trainers well too. They all have their own little gimmick where they copy your movement patterns or something. Honestly, this whole route is just trippy. This is actually where I found my first shiny Pokemon to believe it or not, guys. Is that so, Joe? What was it? It was just a shiny Zigzagoon and Ruby, which on its own is not a cool shiny nor a cool Pokemon, 
but the feeling itself of seeing those stars was very memorable to say the least. Definitely a relatable feeling, Joe. My first shiny was actually an emerald. It was a shiny whalemer I found when I was trying to get a whalered for the Reggie Trio legendary tasks. What about you, Donald? Fuck both of you and your shinies. I've still Dick. never actually seen a legit one. I've probably encountered like 20,000 Pokemon and I've literally never seen one myself. Wait guys, what exactly do you mean by shiny? Basically there's a chance a wild Pokemon will have a different color scheme than normal. Wait a second, I forgot what's in this house. Well, uh, okay, fuck that, we're out of there. Great, thank you for the pointless transition, Obama. Anyway, yeah, it's a little more complicated than that, George. Basically, in this generation, there is a 1 in 8,192 chance that a wild Pokemon you find is shiny. Basically, the color scheme will be anywhere from very slightly different to completely different. It depends on the Pokemon. No other changes besides that, though. It is purely cosmetic, I believe. Wait, what the fuck is that why I ran into an orange Geodude in that one tunnel at the beginning of Fire Red? George, you are trolling me. You did not find a shiny in your first day of playing Pokemon. George, that's actually awesome to hear that you found a shiny. Did you catch it? What did you name it? No, I didn't catch it. I thought it was a bug or something. I just restarted the game. Jesus Christ, Donald, calm down. I hate every single one of you. Maybe let's just change the subject then. How about we all share what our favorite shiny variants are instead of ones we just have experience actually finding? Ooh, that's a good question, Obama. That's a comment question of the day, if I've ever heard one. You guys might make fun of me as usual, but mine is honestly going to have to be Zangoose. Christ, here it we go. It doesn't overwhelm the whole design, but it changes the red stripe to a bright blue, and it just gives it such a sick change in aesthetic, despite only slightly changing it. Honestly, Joe, as much hate as I give you for your Zangoose obsession, that isn't a bad take. Zangoose is shiny, really is top tier, I gotta admit. Generation 3 has some absolute bangers for their shinies. Metagross is sick. Salamence is sick. The Laddie Twins are sick. Septile, Deoxys, say Bly. The list goes on, really. But by far, the hardest shiny of all time is Rayquaza. That fucker is dope as hell in the all black. It takes Charizard's shiny and bumps it up to 11. Jesus, Donald, quite the opinion you have there. Maybe one day you'll find one of those shinies for yourself. Fuck you, George. All right, all right, my turn then. Oh, fuck off, Lydia. We already heard about your poke blocks and shit like two episodes ago. Okay, anyway, my favorite shiny. I think I'm gonna have to show my love for Generation 5 here and say how my favorite shiny is actually Zerua. I think that little touch of bright blue goes super well with the sleek dark brown it turns into from the dark gray. Yeah, Obama can't hate that one. I'm telling you, those bright blue shinies actually hit so damn hard. That they do, Joe. Anyway, yeah, viewers, let us know about your experience with shiny Pokemon. Let us know what your most memorable one was, if you actually got a legitimate one in 8,192 shiny, or what your favorite is. Looking forward to seeing all the responses you guys have for us. All right, all that out of the way. Looks like we're in the final part of the episode here, boys. All these grunts have, like, the same three Pokemon, so none of this is going to be too entertaining if I'm being completely honest. Hey guys, aren't you gonna ask me about my favorite shiny Pokemon? Oh damn, my bad, George. Yeah, what's your favorite shiny? Yeah, it's gonna have to be Geodude, because I saw one a few days ago despite only having played the game for like an hour. George, I know you're directing that at me to piss me off, and I will personally rip the vocal cords out of your throat if you continue to taunt me like that. All right, all right, all right, let's slow the fuck down, guys. No need to get hostile just because George didn't know what he was doing, Donald. But now he does. I'm sure it won't happen again. Anyway, yeah, all these grunts are just gonna have the same Carvanas and Zubats and Puccinas we see everywhere. So we'll catch up with you all at the admin. All right, finally all these shitters are taken care of. Not a single one survived a single Thunderbolt from Ruby. That move is absolutely overpowered this early on in the game. It really isn't even that early in the game if you ask me, Joe. Like, we are in the mid game now, but I think we are almost even closer to the late game than we are the early game at this point. Next episode, we will probably have the sixth gym badge already. This game really is going quickly. Don't you guys think? Yeah, Donald, I'm going to have to agree with you. That being said, don't forget how brutally long the journey is after we beat Winona. Gyms four, five, and six all kind of happen one after the other, but the seventh gym is like half the map across the way from us. And then the eighth gym is only accessible after the evil teams have successfully fucked over the whole region, and for some reason, we have to fix it. 
And that definitely takes a long time, if I remember correctly. Yeah, fair points, Barack. Maybe it's just me, but I feel like we've barely explored the region. Now, I know what you mean, Joe. Maybe it's because we've had to backtrack so many times already. That being said, we really have covered like half the map by this point. All right, boys, peep this play. I'm going to give Pringles a chance to shine here. He only needs to get like one hit off and he can kill this mighty Anna himself. Hell yeah, let's go, Barboach. Oh, uh, yeah, no. Obama Pringles is going to die in like 10 seconds, no doubt in my mind. Yeah, it's an underleveled catfish, Obama. Nah, he'll be fine. Donald, trust me, he's bulky. Uh, okay, maybe that was a high roll, hopefully. No! Jesus, Joe. Oh, that's my son. That's my boy. All right, calm down, Diggory. It's not that deep. I just wanted to give him a chance. Seriously, Joe, we're coming to the end of the episode. No need to have a heart attack over a Pokemon we can revive in like 30 seconds. Wait, that was actually the boss of this place? She just had another piranha and the same dog we've already seen here? Yes, George, I know, a bit underwhelming, but don't worry about it too much. Honestly, I'm a little disappointed, too, because so far the only important battle I've got to have was the second gym leader, and that was, like, the easiest one we've had up to this point, but that's all right. I'm sure I'll get something fun down the line. All right, you're going to call it a day here, Obama? Yeah, I probably should. We've been recording for a good while now. Viewers, make All right, listen up, scrubs, because I'm only going to say this once. For all of you that are siding with Joe and are cool with the bar boats joining the team, you can eat my nuts. For everyone else who agrees that I was, oh, Jesus Christ. Dusty, shut the hell up, please. But yeah, for everyone else who agrees that I was done a complete injustice, welcome to this very special episode. As you can tell from the thumbnail, we mean business this time around. I'm catching a goddamn Phoebus, and I don't care how long this is going to take. Donald, can you tell me why the hell Discord says Trumpinator 4000 is playing Pokemon Emerald right now? Are you progressing the game without telling me you're Obama about Oh, chill it? out, Joe. I'm not progressing the game. I'm just going to catch a Phoebus because it is absolute malarkey that we chose a worthless ass, weak ass, oh, derpy again, ass, huh? ugly ass whiz cast instead of a beastly Sharpedo or a Milotic for our team. This isn't just for me. This is for my fans in the comment section. Like it or not, Joe, we have a divided fan base, both in real life and in this oversaturated AI shit. Fine, you butthurt fuck. Catch your Phoebus. It's not actually joining the team, though. Pringles is staying on. Also, the celebrity channel is popping off right now. A lot of homies in there, so don't be surprised if a bunch of others pop in to say, hey. Fine with me. This is probably going to take me a little while, so I'd appreciate the company, honestly. Donald, can you tell me why the hell Discord says Trumpinator 4000? Let me 4, just stop you right there, Barack. I'm catching a Phoebus just for the hell of it. I feel like it could be fun to have for a potential beauty contest down the line, too, or something, if the viewers want to see it. You're welcome to stick around, but I'm not expecting you to. Say less, I'm not watching all this. Text something in general if you found one, though I'll come peep. Oof, he exposed himself as a fake friend right there. Real talk, Barry. Anyway, I'll stick around for a second, Donnie. I know how painful the Phoebus hunt is. Speaking of, have you explained the whole thing to the viewers? If not, I can do that for you. No, I haven't yet good looks, and yeah, by all means, go for it. Okay, so basically, viewers in Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, in this exact route, there are about 400 tiles of water that you can fish on. Only six of those tiles have a chance of holding a Phoebus at around a 50% encounter rate. So if you're really lucky, you can fish one up within a couple minutes, but if not, it could take several hours of tedious work. That's why they are so rare. Donald, what's your strategy for finding one? Well, I was just gonna start on the bottom left here and approach it by rows, making sure to cover every tile. I'll fish like two or three times on each tile. According to my research, that is the optimal way of doing it. Nice, yeah, that's a good idea. Best of luck, DT. Now, also, we've had a lot of comments suggesting nicknames for a potential melodic. Are you gonna do a nickname wheel for it when you get one? Yeah, I had Dilzan cook one up for me. I got it open in the background. Don't worry. All right, sounds like you've got it under control, Donald. I might have to pop in and out because we're in the middle of our fantasy football draft right now. That's why we have so many people in the main voice call. I'm surprised you didn't want to join us this year. You broke fucks are literally playing with a $25 buy-in that isn't worth my time in the slightest. And you know that, Barry. All right, fine, fine, whatever. Also, we told Shapiro it was a $100 buy-in, and he still paid up, so don't tell him about that. Ha, 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 that's weak. Sure thing, won't tell him. All right, cool. Anyway, I think I'm up soon. I'll be back later, Donald. Good luck with this. All right, appreciate it, brother. Mm, all right, just you and me now, viewer. So I kind of knew I'd be doing my own commentary for a good part of this. So I have a list of a couple things I'm planning on talking about. First things, first the editor wanted to make sure I give a shout out to all the super thanks we got in our last video. 
Check these out real quick. This shit is crazy. Garrett, you've been an OG. Thanks for the support, man. All right, Gay, I'm conflicted on what to say here because fuck Wismer. But thanks so much for the donation. It means a whole lot. Same for you, King Onyx. I've seen you around a couple different presidents play Pokemon series, so thanks so much for helping grow the community. You're a real one, General. Thanks so much for the consistently supportive comments on the videos, and especially this donation to the cause. Glad you're liking the content, my man. He's an, uh, sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, but I speak American here. Anyway, thanks for the support, friend, and best of luck with your studies, and thank you for the appreciation of the content. Joshua, my guy, you're a beast. Really grateful to have your support and trust me. $10 is $10 more than you had to donate, and it certainly will help with keeping up with the cost of production. It goes a long way, my man. Joel, thanks a whole ton, my guy. Glad you're liking this series so much. You're willing to donate to the cause. It's honestly heartwarming to see. Shake and bake, you are the OG super thanker, and you're back at it. You were the first donation this channel ever saw, and at the time, sure, it was only five bucks. What's up, Carrot Face? Oh my god, Ben, shut the hell up. I'm in the middle of something here. Whatever it is can't possibly be more important than fantasy football. Not that you would win anyway. Somehow the goat of goats himself, Tom Brady, fell to me at pick number eight. Jesus Christ. This is ben. going to be easy money. At 100 bucks a piece, I'm going to win like 1,200 bucks just because everyone else is an idiot. Holy shit, Ben. You have no idea how stupid you sound right now. Please either just shut your ADHD ass up or get the hell out of this call. I'm actually doing something important here. All right, whatever, Donald. Just wanted to make sure you knew how smart and strategic I am. Also, nice profile picture, dickhead. Maybe stay in prison for longer than 45 minutes next time if you want to earn some street cred. Peace out, poser. Jesus, what in the hell does that guy know about street cred? Anyway, where was I? Oh yeah, as I was saying, shake and bake thanks again for the donations. Really means more than you know, and I hope you stick around the channel for a long time, bud. Sergeant Bagel, sick name, by the way. But yeah, I don't think Dil Zan wants to publicly speak on that issue, but for anyone curious, feel free to join the Discord and message him. He can talk to you about it there. But anyway, thanks so much for the donation. It certainly does help. Appreciate you, man. It means a lot. William, my guy, this support particularly meant a lot to us. I know the editor has enjoyed the conversations he's had with you in the comments section. Hope you stick around, boss. We'll do our best to keep up the content we're expecting out of ourselves. Benny, thanks for the super thanks, my man. And don't worry, we aren't going anywhere. I saw you are planning on starting up content creation again in the near future. Keep us posted on that. Good luck, man. Shout outs to Presidential Gaming Drive here. Guys, make sure to check out his content, especially if you're at all into the wrestling scene. He's got a hilarious banner in his channel and he's new to the scene, but very engaging. Especially with his intros, we can honestly learn a thing or two from it here on this channel. Anyway, thanks for the support, man. Okay. And finally, save the best for last here. Huge shout outs to my boy, Mr. Beats Machine, with the massive donation. We are beyond grateful for this support of the channel. It's incredibly rewarding to see how much you enjoy watching this series. Glad you're part of the journey, my guy. Anyway, I think that pretty much wraps up the super. Thanks, I hope I didn't miss any. If I did, don't worry, we'll get you soon. All right, Dilzan, screw you for making me do that. You could have just posted a video of yourself doing it, but whatever, stay faceless, I guess pussy. Anyway, I wonder who else is doing the fantasy draft this year. Ben's under the incredibly false impression that he's gonna win 1,200 bucks. So besides him, Obama and Biden, that means there's nine other people involved. Wonder who it could be. Okay, Trump, so no Obama just told way. me you're actually hunting for a Phoebus. Is this true? Yes, Janet, I am it's actually hunting for yawn. a Phoebus. You got a problem with that? Yes, actually, it literally takes no extra skill or strategy to go and find the Phoebus. Only dedicated time that you don't have to waste. I see literally no reason as to why you don't just game shark a Phoebus onto the team to save yourself the suffering. Uh, that's what I would do. And I mean, look at me. I have the best groomed crotch in the world. Yeah, I'm sure that is what you would do, you goddamn robot. This isn't a Kaizo hardcore Nuzlocke where I'm planning on killing off 600 Pokemon, okay? There's this thing called personal attachment that your desensitized ass Yo, yeah. doesn't understand. Obama, thank God you're here. No way did you actually invite Pokemon challenges to your fantasy football league, right? Uh, actually, yeah, we kind of did, Donald. We all thought you were doing it, but when you backed out, we had like two days to fill the spot. So we just kind of sent a Hail Mary, pun intended for Jan. Honestly, I'm surprised you joined us, man. 
Aren't you like German or some shit? Germans like football too, Barack. But I also like your money. That's the real reason I'm doing it. $200 is nothing to a Nuzlocke champion Barack. like me. I can't wait to claim my $2,400 from you plebeians. That being said, I'm doing research on the special teams. See you later, chumps. Oh, he's a member of a special team in his own right, that's for sure. Yeah, okay, I may have forgotten to tell you that we also told Jan it's a $200 buy-in. Thanks for keeping that on the DL in front of him. Hey man, not only am I a businessman myself, but I also fucking hate that guy. I understand Barry, no worries. Be careful he and Ben don't talk about it though. Yeah, we gotta be careful about that, but also if they find out who gives a shit, you know, like what are they gonna do, stop hanging out with us? Oh no. All right, fair enough, good point. Hey, so I already gave shout outs to everyone who gave super thanks on that Yo. last episode. Any clue what else I need to talk about? I could still be here for a while. What's up, Joe? Oh yeah, Donald, maybe address that whole other presidents play Pokemon creators and plagiarism drama shit people were talking about in the Discord. Oh, true, yeah, that was wild. I had to break out the popcorn reading that one. Cool, yeah, anyway, peace. Yeah, so viewers, this one's pretty quick. So basically, there have been a handful of new presidents AI creators over the past few weeks, understandably, really, because they are a hot topic right now. But a lot of smaller ones, including ours to some extent, have gotten a handful of criticisms about being unoriginal and stealing content from some of the larger presidents and content creators. Just a quick word about that. If you're leaving comments like that on other people's channels, blow my ass. Wow, Donald, what a way with words you have. Impressive. No, seriously, Joe, this shit takes a lot of time and a lot of money to make. So if people are actually dismissing all of that by just baselessly calling them unoriginal, then they, oh, buzz off, Dalton. Ooh, good song, Dalton, No turn fucking it up. way is some NPC calling me you right now and screaming the word whizmer into my ear on repeat. This has got to be a goddamn simulation. I do not believe it. Well, good call, Donald, call him back. Maybe he'll sing it again for us. Oh, you can bet your ass I'm calling him back, Joe. He's about to get it. Whismur, whismur, Don't whismur. even, Joe. Why can't I be you, whismur? Jesus Christ, shut the hell up, Joe. I'm popping a Norvask. I can tell my BP is spiking. Okay, yeah. Guitarist fuckface. Delete this number before I come over there and bash your whismur's face in with your own guitar. Sincerely, your worst nightmare. A little bit much, Donald. He was just sharing his love for his cute Pokemon. For all I'm concerned, he can go share his love with a toaster in the bathtub. Can we just move on from that horrendous experience, please? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, continuing on what Donald was just saying, guys, if a content creator is literally plagiarizing parts of scripts or stealing jokes or something that's one thing, but I don't think that's really happening in this community to our knowledge. In fact, we are all really supportive of each other. In fact, Game Producer 6, who was making the Randomizer Sapphire series, shared this episode with his fans because of how much Dil Zan wanted to promote this special in particular. It's all really an incredible community. So don't start pointing fingers if you don't know what's really going on. Again, this doesn't even apply to like 99.9% .9 of you, but we feel it had to be said. Yeah, well said, Joe, thank you. This was something that got brought up in our Discord recently, so we wanted to say something. If you're not in the Discord yet, make sure to check it out. Link in the description. A lot of fun and interactive things going on in there, like Nuzlocke posts, tier lists, fan art, self-promotions, all that shit. It's a fun time. Bloody hell, Joe, what are you doing in here? It's the your hell? turn to pick a player. Get on with it, for oh, God's shit, sake. Man. Holy shit, Gordon Ramsay, you're in the draft, too? Then That seems kind of random to me. Why are you doing it? Donald, uh, I'm actually a big NFL fan. I've been closely following Kansas City for a few years. I managed to get Mahomes as my first pick. Um, um, anyway, Donald, look at that beautiful carp you have there. You know, many countries look down on the quality of carp for consumption. But I say we need to model after Asia in how okay, they prepare Okay, okay, Gordon, I literally fish. don't give a shit about that. Please leave your culinary erection in your pants, please. Whatever, fat boy. What in the fuck are you trying to accomplish here anyway? This looks like a massive waste of time. Oh, fat boy, huh? I'll have you know, Gordon. I am currently searching for a Phoebus, a very rare Pokemon that requires dedication and consistent effort. But I know you wouldn't know anything about consistency, considering that's how your restaurants lost most of their Michelin stars, huh? Oh, fuck off, you anato-faced wanker. Sorry, I couldn't personally manage all 60 of my restaurants on top of the dozens of fucking TV shows I run. Unfortunately, some of us actually strive for success instead of going to jail and catching imaginary creatures in a video game. All right, you prick, get off your high horse. You're literally about to commit three months 
to a fantasy football team, but whatever you say. Yeah, uh, sorry, Donald, that was a bit rash of me. I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings there, big guy. Oh, wow, uh, no, it's okay, Gordon, I forgive you, man. Jesus, Donald, I'm being sardonic, you blockhead. How about you take a bottle of olive oil and go fuck yourself with it? See ya, bitch. Uh, uh, okay, viewers, I'm not sure exactly what I did to deserve all this hate today. I'm just a man trying to find a fish. I kind of thought this was supposed to be a relaxing thing, but I guess I'm the idiot here. Anyway, I guess I'll just be back if something important happens. I don't know. Gotta learn to play it right. You got to know when to hold them. Know when to fold them. Know when to walk away. And know when to run. Jay, my name is Joey. Jesus Christ, Pokey MMD, is that you? You scared me, man. You know what, Donald, it's your boy. Are you sure about that? Because it doesn't look like it. Oh, God damn it. I think Envy was messing with my profile. One second. Okay, should be good now. All right, whatever, young, strong jaw, what are you even doing here? I didn't know you were in this server. Wow, I appreciate the, the warm welcome, Donald. Anyway, I've been subbed ever since... Dilzon's bitch ass started spamming his channel in the chat of my Iron Mon streams. Base. So I finally come to steal all of his viewers away from him like he's doing with mine. All right, Joey, it's not that serious. Don't you have like 400,000 subscribers or something? 388 and the counting Donald, but if everyone who's watching this video dislikes this video, the unsubscribes fuck? from Dilzan Wait, what? and comes over to mine and subscribes, then I can hit 400 by the end of the week or some shit like that. So come help me. How the hell out. did you add a customized subscriber message to this video. You literally aren't even involved in the editing of it in the first place. Don't worry about it, Lil Bro. Holy shit, Pokey Aim MD, is that actually you? Oh Jesus, here we go with the meat riding. Yes, it is, Obama Snow. Wow, ah, that's unbelievable. It was so cool to see you subscribe to the channel, but to see you actually coming through to the Discord, that's amazing. Keep it in your pants, Obama. Congratulations on winning the draft league. By the way, you killed it in there. Really a cool story to see after how was majorly you got boned early on in the season. Yeah, whatever, Obama. Stop acting like you're surprised that I won the whole thing. Um, I've literally been in the game since your first term. Hey, Joey, do you think maybe uh, we could join the draft league next season? We're pretty good at competitive. We've even been doing a showdown ladder climb on this channel when we're not playing Emerald. Jesus Christ, no, Donald, you're not joining the draft league. <laughs> is everyone here just a self-advertising shit? Now that you know the real me is probably watching this part of the video. The real you? What? Anyway, I'm out of here. Stop promoting your channel on my stream. What a douche. I thought he was cooler than that. Jesus Christ, way to go, Donald. You made him leave. Calm down, Obama. That's not a big deal. We don't need to join his draft league anyway. Let's just make our own with our own subscribers. Donald, that's, uh, that's, that's actually a good idea. Maybe we should mention that in the Discord to our admins um, as a possible series down the line. Thank you, Obama. Yeah, guys, yet another reason to join the Discord. Maybe you could be in a draft league or something, who knows? Just spitballing ideas here. That reminds me, I had another point on my notes here about a possible series down the line. Well, while you talk about a Pokemon draft, I got a football draft I gotta get back to. See ya, D. All right, later, bro, Obama. All right, anyway, so, Couple updates here. We've been slacking on the showdown series, but that's definitely still going. And we're gonna be back to the weekly uploads of that now. That will be the next video we put up after this one. But I wanna talk about what we'll be doing after this Emerald series. Obama, Biden, and I have all agreed on a platinum hardcore Nuzlocke. We think it'll be cool because it will be difficult yet beatable and we can have our own little twist on viewer involvement. We're gonna name the Pokemon after our subscribers and Discord members. And while you're a living member of the team, you will get special benefits based on your overall value to the team. However, if you die, you will be punished in some sort of way. Obviously, if you don't wanna take that risk, you don't have to be involved in the news lock, but we all think that could be cool. We're still trying to come up with ideas on the benefits and the punishments, but please voice your opinion on that in the comments, as well as the Discord suggestions channel. What's poppin' DT, what you doing? What's good, George? Nothing really. Good timing just finished, a little monologue. I'm trying to find a Phoebus. It's a super rare Pokemon that usually takes like an hour to find or so. Ooh, neat. What about you, my guy? A Phoebus, huh? Must be a pretty sick Pokemon. 
What the fuck, Donald? What the hell is that? Why in the world are you looking for that piece of garbage? Click on evolution, George. Holy titties. Told you. How in the world does that thing evolve from that ugly ass fish? Yeah, I don't know, George. I think it's modeled after the Magikarp line where a useless Pokemon evolves into something completely broken. But in this case, it's something so ugly that turns into something so majestic. Yeah, know? that is pretty sick. I'm already breezing through my Pokemon Fire Red playthrough, but I don't see all the hype around Gyarados. Sure, it's sick, but uh, it doesn't seem that broken to me. It doesn't really serve well as a water type in itself. Well, George, that's actually a pretty interesting take. It's still an S-tier encounter, but Gyarados isn't completely broken in that game. It really can't take advantage of either of its stabs with no flying moves and only special water moves but it still has great stats with a great ability, and it can still utilize some powerful moves in Earthquake, Return, and Dragon Dance. It's absolutely broken for a playthrough starting in Generation 4. Ooh, okay, Donald, sounds like you know your shit. I'm looking forward to joining you guys in this playthrough again when we get to find the legendaries. That's gonna be awesome. Anyway, I'll see you around. Gotta get back to the draft. All right, peace, George. Jesus, what is that magic carp number 600? I don't have anything to talk about right now, so editor, can you just cut to when something happens, please? So I don't look like an idiot. I know when to run, you never count your money. Yo. When you're sitting at the table, there'll be time enough for counting. What's up, host? When the dealing's done. Donald, that was dope as shit. I didn't know you had pipes like that. Yeah, probably not as surprising as Michelle's pipe, but thank Donald. you, Barry. <laughs> oh, thanks, Donald. Oh, I shit, actually uh, have been practicing my singing. I've been taking lessons. Yes, singing. That is what I was talking about. Good for you, Mikey. Uh, I mean, Michelle. Jesus Christ, Donald. Immaculate save, Donald. Anyway, Michelle, can you tell me why in the world your profile picture is of you and George like that? I don't like it. Oh, don't be such a child, sweetie. It's a cute picture. You know I love George. Yeah, come on, bro, Obama. Don't be such a buzzkill. It's just such a cute picture of Michelle's bush. I mean, uh, Michelle and Bush. Donald, I am going to rip that spray tan off your face until you look like a normal human being. Barry, uh -oh. there is no need to get hostile. He was just complimenting the picture. Thank you, Donald. You're being so sweet today. No problem, Shibama. Michelle, you are too innocent to realize the backhanded compliments he's saying to you. But whatever, it's not a big deal. As long as Bush doesn't notice it, otherwise he'll have a field day. As long as Bush doesn't notice what, dickhead? Jesus Christ, of course. Oh my goodness, hi George, so nice to hear your voice. Oh hey Michelle, what's cooking good looking? May I say that is a beautiful picture of you. Thank you, George. All right, this is just getting absolutely cringe at this point. Can we just change the subject before I leave the call? Thank you, Joe, I would love nothing more than to change the subject. Donald, have you asked a comment question of the day yet? Uh, not that I know of Barack, just some things for them to share their thoughts on. Perfect. Viewers, what is your favorite Pokemon movie and why? That's a lame-ass question, Obama. Hop off, George. You only think it's lame because you don't know shit about Pokemon. Yeah, Barry, I think that was a great question for the viewers to answer. Good job, sweetie. Yeah, Barack, that's a great question. I love it. Oh, quit your meat riding, George. Uh, interesting choice of words, Barack. Fuck off, Donald. Barack? Anyway, moving on here, guys. My favorite Pokemon movie has got to be the OG with Mewtwo. Nothing can quite compare to it. The story, the plot, and character development from Ash's heroics to Mewtwo's change of heart, even that quote from Meowth at the end. That shit was your Jesus Christ, movie. can you speak a little slower, Joe? We might not pass the two hour long video threshold at that speed. Chump. Anyway, ignoring that comment, that's a pretty basic answer, Joe. But I guess you can't hate on the OGs. That's why we are playing Emerald after all. My favorite movie has got to be Lucario and the Mystery of Mew. The action and pace of the movie is intense as hell. It's actually incredibly emotionally provoking with the sacrifices made and that relationship between Aaron and Lucario sparked the beginning of trainer and Pokemon relationships that would mold the series for the Nerd. next, like, 20 years. Wow, that was a great answer, Bear Bear. I agree, I might have to check it out now. Jesus Christ, George, you are such a simp. Anyway, idiots, you're both objectively wrong about the best Pokemon movie. The correct answer is easily the rise of Dark Rai. The soundtrack is mesmerizing, the animation was revolutionary for a 2007 release, 
And Darkrai has got to be the sickest Pokemon villain of all time. It truthfully doesn't even belong in the Pokemon series. It's too much of a badass. Wow, you guys seem really passionate about this. Although you are all wrong, Wait, the Entei movie is a cut above the rest. Based. No way. The quick little clip of Charizard at the beginning, sensing Ash may need his help, and then him coming back in the nick of time to save the day like an hour later is possibly the most memorable moment in all of Pokemon. Viewers, let us know what you think. Anyway, I gotta go by, guys. All right, that may have been the sexiest thing of all time. Agreed. Yeah, uh, in fact, I gotta go too, Donald. Let us know if you find it soon. Well, I'm sure as hell not sticking around with you horny shits. Peace out. Yeah, I gotta go watch the Pokemon Hentai movie now from George Michelle Sente, by Donald. George not Hentai. Oh, Jesus Christ. Well, he'll learn the hard way, I guess. Uh, ha ha, hard way. Get it. Anyway, yeah, viewers, let us know your favorite Pokemon movie and why. Editor, can you skip ahead again? I'm running out of shit to say. Know when to walk away and know when to run. <sighs> Honestly, viewers, this is getting exhausting. Maybe I need to learn when to walk away myself. It may only been like 25 minutes for you guys at this point, and it's been entertaining, I'm sure, but I've been here for like two hours. My patience is running thin. Also, no one has joined the call in like 20 minutes. I've literally just been re-watching that other presidents play Emerald with that Dragonite guy on my phone. Donald, I know you didn't just say what I think you said. Holy shit, David Goggins. Uh, wait, you mean the thing about the other presidents play Pokemon series? No, you fucking basketball face. All right. McDonald's VIP section. Not necessary. Orange is the new piece of shit. Excuse of a president. Okay, that's a good I'm one. I'm talking about how you just said you're going to walk away from the grind just because of two hours of work. David, no disrespect, but how the hell did you even get in this call in the first place? Are you doing the fantasy draft too? Donald, do I seem like the kind of guy that's going to waste his time on a fantasy draft? Whatever the hell that is. I heard you from a distance about how you're planning on giving up, so I ran home from the gym, downloaded Discord, and infiltrated the server to get on this call and tell you to get a fucking grip. All right, well, I don't necessarily believe any of that, Mr. Goggins, but I appreciate the sentiment, I guess. Look, I'm just saying, this might not be worth my time anymore. Worth your time? Donald, let me ask you something. I don't know what the hell you're doing, but do you have a dream to accomplish it? A dream to accomplish? Uh, yeah, I guess you could say that I really want the Phoebus. Well, then let me ask you one more thing, Donald. Are you the master of your dream, or is the dream the master of you? All right, David. So once again, I ask, what the fuck are you talking about? What I'm saying, Donald, is simple. Are you letting your dream dictate your life, or are you dictating your life so you can conquer the dreams of yours? Wow, that's actually, uh, actually quite the thought experiment there, David. I guess I've kind of lost sight of the end goal here. You know what? You're fucking right, Goggins. You're goddamn right. I'm right. I can't remember a time I was goddamn wrong. All right, calm down, little boat. It's not that serious. Did somebody say boats? Oh, Jesus Christ. Here we go. Who's going to carry the boats, Donald? Uh, me, I guess. Oh, come on, shithead. You can do better than that. Who's going to carry the boats? Me, David, I'm going to carry the boats. Say it with your chest, Donald. For God's sake. I'm gonna carry the boats. You're gonna carry the boats. Give me the fucking boats and the law. Stay hard! Jesus Christ, David, stay what? I said stay hard, Donald. Okay, that just seems a little sus, honestly. I'm not leaving until you say it with me. Stay hard. Jesus, fine. Okay, David, stay hard. Stay hard. Stay hard. Stay hard, God damn it. Stay hard. Stay hard, Donald. Stay <laughs> hard, God damn it, David. Oh, my God, there it fucking is. <laughs> It's here! Jesus, Donald, that thing is disgusting. That's what you're looking for? Suck my creamsicle-flavored ass, David. Gross, Donald. I gotta tell the squad to hop in here and look at this beautiful creature. First. Damn it, Joe. I wanted to be first. Holy shit, you're serious. Man, drop a Draco on her ass, get some What the bloody hell is that abomination of a creature? Damn, you actually found it. Congrats, Joe, took you long enough. Get your disgusting face off mine, you little Oh, prick. you mad, Gordon? What if I do this, huh? What you gonna do about oh, it now? Please bitch. stop this bullshit. I'm catching the Phoebus This now. is stupid as hell. I'm leaving. Wait, what in the world? Was that David Shh, Goggins? Everyone shut the fuck up, please. I only have one dive ball. Um, seems like a planning error to me, Don. Okay, band. 
Let's fucking hey, go. Nice. I got it. Oh, yes, Donald. Good now, box it forever. Screw you, Joe. This is my baby, and she will be important down the line. You lot are so sad. God, sometimes I wish Melodic would just come over to my place and- All right, also banned. Good call, Donald. Hey, what's up, guy? Holy shit. That thing is absolutely disgusting. Hey, Bill, yeah, that's kind of the point of it. Don't worry. Hi, Bill. Anyway, here's the cool part, guys. Everyone check this shit out. It's finally time we spin another nickname wheel. Oh, okay, now this actually looks interesting. A whole lot of people suggested Ivanka and Melania, understandably because they are beautiful. But let's see what the wheel decides on. I hope it's Wiggles. I think I saw Tofu on there. Katara would be cool. Weeb. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oof. Well, 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 Bill. Now, you all listen here, okay? Yes, we know, Bill. You didn't do it, whatever. That's cap. I did not have sexual relations with that fish. The fuck? All right, yeah, that's definitely my cue to get out of here. Sub to PokeAMMD. Buy my merch. Agency, agency. Yeah, bye, guys. See you in the fantasy chat. Bye, George. Um... Just leave, man. All right, Jesus Christ, that should just leave the three of us, right? Yep. Anyway, yeah, it looks like we got Monica the Phoebus. Maybe one day she will be a melodic. Yeah, shout outs to Dylan for the nickname suggestion. Hope you're watching this video and you get to see this, my guy. Anyway, yeah, that was fun having everyone, but I'm glad it's back to the OG gang now. Things were getting a little hectic near the end there. Yeah, Donald, how about we go check out Feebuzz in the PC and then talk about our upcoming video plans? Yeah, that's the plan, bro, Obama. Donald, you can just go up to the Weather Institute. There's a PC there. Oh shit, you're right. And it's probably where we should leave off for next time anyway. So Donald, the hunt is finally over. You have your Feebuzz. How do you feel? I feel like we still have a piece of shit bar boach on our team, but at least this is something, I guess. Well, as long as you acknowledge that, Donald. Screw you, Joe. I didn't just catch this Phoebus for nothing. Monica will become the most beautiful Pokemon of them all. Viewers, if you want to see Phoebus win a Master Rank Beauty Contest, let us know in the comments. I don't really know how that shit works, but she definitely deserves the screen time. Honestly, that could be fun. Just imagine we get there, and there's a Delcati, a Gardevoir, a Vaporeon, Jesus and Christ. then just a goddamn Phoebus center stage. Quite the interesting selection of what beautiful Pokemon look like to you, Obama. Yeah, viewers send your fan art of that scene to the Discord, please. What? No, no, Jesus. No, please do not do that. Anyway, here we are with Monica, our brave little fish. That is a horrendous nature for a melodic. It is plus attack and minus speed, I believe. Well, it still looks pretty goddamn fast to me, so who cares? Also, the stats literally don't matter. We aren't using it for battle unless we want to take it to the battle frontier, that is. Oh, shit, are we going to do the battle frontier? I'd be down, but that's a long ways away. Plus, we would have to plan out a team for that. Um, maybe we can ask the viewers help with that sometime. Maybe that can be the comment question for the next episode or something. Anyway, Donald, you want to go ahead and end things off for us? Yeah, I can do that. I'm just going to go ahead and give Monica a proper box background for her. She deserves to be swimming in the sea. All right, here. Uh, yeah, that looks phenomenal. That's beautiful. All right, anyway, viewers, thanks for making it this far into the video. The support is incredibly appreciated. We, we addressed it last time, but these videos take an exorbitant amount of time to make and probably more money than you'd expect. That being said, seeing all the positive comments and support from you guys, and obviously the incredibly generous super thanks from a select bunch of you as well, means a whole lot to all of us. If you enjoyed the content, the only thing we're really asking for is a like and a subscription. That goes a long way for the growth of the channel. The next video you see will either be a super video of all episodes one through 10 of this series, like five hours long, or it will be the next episode of the Showdown Ladder Climb series. We know it's been a while since that one, but don't worry, we're still on it. The editor just had a lot of IRL stuff recently, namely a combination of final papers his brother's wedding, and more recently, dealing with COVID. But don't worry, all is well. All right, I think that's everything. Make sure to join the Discord for updates on the channel or just to chill and socialize. Lots of fun things going on in there that I touched on earlier this episode. With that out of the way, thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day. Peace out.